Hello everyone, Kage Gari 2.0 is here with the part 2 of what if Naruto was an Uchiha. Happy watching. Like, share and subscribe. Let's begin. Something's wrong. Naruto reached and clutched his heart. It was 9.30pm and Shisui still hadn't returned. He left at 4 and said he'd be back in a few hours, 9 at the latest. For some reason he had a bad feeling since Shisui left. Now it felt like part of his heart died and he didn't know why there was a sinking feeling. He walked into the dojo and began training. That usually got his mind off of anything bothering. He had been so happy for mastering his genjutsu the night prior and was already trying to imagine ways to build from it. Sadly it was an already made jutsu so the only building was the fact he can do it without physical contact. Also the framework of the jutsu wasn't one he could manipulate. It was just an illusion of what someone feared. The more chakra then a situation appears where someone's deepest fear is realized, like watching someone they love die. That was as far as it went. He had been reading that true genjutsu masters however don't just use a genjutsu that anyone uses, in fact their imagination is what powers it. Naruto questioned if he could reach that level but honestly he wasn't sure. He would certainly try, if Shisui believed in him, he wouldn't let him down. The doorbell rang and it brought Naruto out of his thoughts and training. He left the dojo and went towards the front door with a towel and water. He was surprised to see who was at the door. Itachi ni san, Uncle Kakashi, Gigi. What's going on? Naruto asked puzzled. The faces they had, well the two he could see had a sadness, Itachi was filled with regret, Kakashi's lone eye showed that he was upset and hated that Naruto had to deal with this. Guys, is, is something wrong? I've had a bad feeling for the past 7 hours, Nisan said he'd be back 2 hours ago at the latest. Naruto now was feeling the sinking go down further and further. It was like someone was squeezing his heart and it was pulled down towards his stomach. Naruto-kun. Shisui, is dead. Itachi said with tears now coming out again. He couldn't contain it, he tried so hard but felt impossible. No, no no. No you're lying. He wouldn't leave no. Naruto screamed out crying his anger and pain, his sadness. He felt empty and crushed. The one who was always there, the one always by his side and supported him, believed in him. No way he was gone. Every single memory with him came crashing back. The times he chased Shisui around the house, their coloring, his teachings, cooking with him and playing with him, everything played back in front of him. No. It. It can't be. Suddenly they saw his eyes glow red. They were worried that this news made him snap and the QB was taking over but were surprised when his Sharingan was spinning wildly. It, can't be, Itachi said as he watched Naruto's eyes. Sure enough the Tomo started growing in size and changing shape. They formed triangles that connected at the bases with the tips reaching the sides of his eye, now there were six triangles within his eyes forming a hexagon in the centers with a black circle on the center of that and a thin black ring encircled the middles of the triangle. His Mangekio flared to life and when he closed his eyes to cry he grabbed his head and dropped to his knees. He looked back up one last time in hopes they were for some reason lying to him but only saw their sadness in the situation. His eyes had gone back to normal and the Mangekio wasn't there anymore. Finally he couldn't take it anymore and collapsed. Lord Third, what do we do? Asked Kakashi. I'm not sure. I'll stay with him. Shisui wanted me to give him something. I'll give it to him in the morning. You sure Itachi? Yes Lord Third, I also need to see about his eyes. If it was a true awakening or just a flare like how it was when I first unlocked the Sharingan. Understood Itachi. I am deeply sorry. If you need anything, let me know. Hiruzen said and disappeared in a puff of smoke. I know you're not one of many words Captain Kakashi but I'm going to be fine. We are shinobi, our lives are to endure. You need me, don't hesitate to call. Thank you, Captain. Itachi was now left alone with Naruto. He took him to his room and laid him on his bed. His tears were falling freely and wondered how he could follow Shisui's wishes. He was his strength and idol and best friend. Now he only had Sasuke and now Naruto. How would he go on? The next morning Naruto woke up a bit groggy. He looked around and saw Itachi beside him. Then the memories of last night came into mind and he started crying. The day before he thought today would be the happiest day he ever had. Hey there Naruto-kun. How are you? How are you? That's what you have to say. Do you know what it's like too? He looked down in shame. This was Itachi he and Shisui were the best of friends and of course he knew how it felt to lose someone close to you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. It's okay. 
I know how you're feeling. Does it ever go away? The pain. I don't know. Dot all I know is that every day it helps you get stronger so that you can honor their memory. He said putting his hand on Naruto's shoulder. I was finally making him proud. He looked to the picture on his dresser of him and Shisui. I was starting to really get to where he always believed. Naruto-kun, he was always proud of you. He always talked about you and how you lit up his world. Itachi said smiling with a tear. Look, he wanted me to give you some things. He took out a rectangular box and a scroll. In the box had Shisui's Tonto. Naruto had watched him clean and sharpen it all the time. He smiled at seeing it, and held its handle and rubbed the blade. Itachi could only smile, he knew that getting the sword meant a lot. The scroll had a couple fire jutsu and two more genjutsu along with a note. Naruto, now that you can leave the house, figured it's time to start your ninjutsu training. The first is the, great fireball jutsu, it's a clan jutsu and specialty. Practice these over a river until you master them. The next is the, phoenix flower jutsu. Now to increase your genjutsu arisenal, the first is a C rank called, demonic illusion, false surroundings, you can change the appearance of the objects around you, at its highest level you can make the surrounding area completely change in a sense. The second is an A rank called, bringer of darkness where the victim no longer can see and is in a world of darkness, there is no breaking it unless someone else breaks it for them, it will be harder to learn since it's the highest ranked jutsu you've ever learned but I know you can do it. If you need help you can always ask me or Itachi. Happy birthday Naruto. Naruto had tears streaming down his eyes. Shisui always gave the most useful gifts. Itachi said breaking the silence. I'm going to go train Itachi Nisan, I'll see you around. One more thing Naruto-kun, can you activate your Sharingan for me? Ah, uh, sure. Naruto did as he was told. Now try channeling more chakra into it. Naruto tried but there was no change. His Iyas remained the normal 3 Tomo Sharingan. Thank God, looks like you can't activate it yet, that buys more time. Why did you want me to put more chakra into my Sharingan? No reason. Just curious. Hey Naruto-kun, I know you train daily non-stop but now that you're allowed to see the village, would you like to? No. Why not? I don't really care anymore. I was excited before but now I just want to get stronger to make Nisan proud. Itachi nodded. He wasn't going to argue with him and if he didn't want to do it then he wouldn't force him. Naruto-kun. I have an idea. Want to learn something Shisui and I developed together. Naruto jumped and was ready to go. Where to? Itachi chuckled. He took him to a clearing in the forest of death and had him watch as he dispersed in a flock of crows and reform elsewhere. Whoa, so like a clone, except without just vanishing or smoke as indication of a shadow clone, it's crows. Fascinating. That's not all Naruto-kun, we came up with this out of trying to improve the substitution jutsu. This can also be applied to Tajenjutsu. Naruto got all giddy and started learning. The funny thing was, the crow clones worked just like shadow clones but at half the chakra cost and in reform wherever without the cost of chakra. The only chakra spent is the original creation of said clone. Four hours later, he really does learn remarkably fast. Itachi thought as B overlooked Naruto training with the crows. Already he was implementing them in various ways and figuring out how he could use them in Genjutsu. Alright Naruto-kun, let's get something to eat okay? Okay. Can we go see Gigi? Sure. Hokage Tower. Happy birthday Naruto-kun. Thanks, how's it going Gigi? Just a lot of work. What have you been doing today? Hiruzen was curious since Naruto had gotten terrible news just the night before and was worried for him. Aitachi Nisan taught me how to use crows for jutsu. Can you show me? Hi. Naruto brought his right hand up. Closes in a fist except his index and middle finger were pointing upwards and then crows flew together and formed a clone of himself. He then had it disperse and reform on the other side of Itachi. He formed another clone and had it stand beside him. They then all dispersed and Hiruzen watched slightly confused when he realized what Naruto did. He chuckled and turned around. Very good Naruto-kun. So you can make clones and use it in Genjutsu. Yes and in the substitution jutsu. You learned a lot today Naruto-kun I'm impressed. How about at 5, we go for ramen. Thank you very much. Can Itachi Nisan and Uncle Kakashi and Yugao Sensei come? Sure. More the merrier. See you later Gigi. Itachi Nisan said something about meeting somebody. Okay Naruto-kun, see you two later. 
the two walked out and started walking through the village heading south. So Itachi ni san, who am I meeting? My little sister. Itachi was smiling. In truth they would have met two years ago but then Naruto was attacked. After about 30 minutes of walking they came to the entrance of the Uchiha compound. There was a large gateway and an inside had like its own mini village. There were shops, restaurants and houses of course. In the center of the compound was the police headquarters and a few blocks from that was where Itachi's family lived. So what's she like? Itachi smiled thinking about her. Hmm, she's a little shorter than you, kind and caring, not quite as goofy as you. But she is really smart. Sounds interesting. They were walking through the compound and Naruto noticed some looks of malice. The clan didn't recognize him since it was his first time in, they obviously didn't seem to like outsiders in the compound. This puzzled Naruto. Kill them. Kill them all. Huh. Who said that? Itachi looked at Naruto curiously. He didn't hear anyone say anything. Kill them, it will end the pain. Kill them. Why? How will it end the pain? Now Itachi got worried. He had a few theories and none were good. The worst of them was that they QB is trying to take advantage of Naruto being in sadness. Naruto started clutching his head and was making it seem like he wanted whatever he was hearing to quiet down. Since it was in his head nothing fixed it. Itachi shook him out of it and looked at him. His eyes were still black, but the sadness reappeared I am them. Obviously he had been trying to bury it but it seems that whatever was going on brought it out once again. You okay, Naruto-kun? Yes. Let's just keep going. Okay well. If you. I know Nisan, I know you're always there. They continued on the path for a while longer when they came upon a large house, fitting for the clan head. There was large front yard and backyard. They also had a small dojo and an OJT door training ground for sparring or shuriken and kanai training. Nisan. Called out a running Sasuke. Hey there. I'd like you to meet somebody. Who? Last time you introduced me to someone was Shisui-san. Yes. Itachi was saddened hearing the name but didn't show it. Somehow Naruto didn't show it either. It's his little cousin. They saw each other as brothers as they are all they have. His name is Naruto. Naruto's heart cracked some more when he heard Itachi saying the relationship of him and Shisui. Especially when he mentioned that they were the only family each other had. Dot now he was alone. Naruto-kun this is my little sister Sasuke. Itachi stepped aside to let her see who the new kid was. She noticed that he had the jet black hair like all Uchiha, however he had fiery red highlights in it. On top of that some of the blackest eyes she ever seen, which she couldn't help but stare into. He now regularly wore the black sleeveless hoodie with orange t-shirt, and black wristbands and black shorts, with black sandals. She had jet black hair that reached the base of her neck and bangs that framed the side of her face that reached eye level. She wore a navy blue Uchiha crested quarter sleeve blouse, black pants and black sandals. Hello Sasuke-chan. Naruto said with a wave. She didn't respond, she just stood there. She didn't know why she didn't say anything but stood nonetheless. Something wrong. Naruto asked. Huh. No I'm sorry. I'm sass. I mean hi. Itachi's eyebrow shot up and he was confused on what was going on. He looked between the two then laughed a little to himself but left it at that. Sasasuki, it's Naruto-kun's birthday today. Do you want to come with us to get dinner with Lord Third? There will be a few other friends of mine. Happy birthday Naruto, sure. I'll come. Thank you Sasuke-chan. Naruto looked to Itachi and pretty much asked, what now? You two get to know each other a bit. I'm going to run inside real quick. Itachi left the two alone as he went into the house. Naruto and Sasuke just stood there for a bit in silence. Naruto looked into the sky and decided to say something, no matter how stupid it sounded. So, nice weather huh? Naruto said with a straight face. Sasuke laughed and that brought a smile to Naruto's face. Yeah sure. It's alright. You're a goof just like Shisui-san. I can see the similarities now. Naruto looked down. Yeah. Will you start the academy next year? Hmm. You. Yup. Have you been training? Little bit. Nisan trains me every now and then in shurikenjutsu and taijutsu. Oh okay. Huh. I never learned shurikenjutsu. We were going to start now that I mastered his kenjutsu. What did you learn? She asked curious of his skills. Hmm. I learned taijutsu, the interceptor fist, kenjutsu, genjutsu, working on ninjutsu. That's a lot, if you help me with kenjutsu, I'll help your shurikenjutsu. You got a deal. 
Naruto said with a smile although he was getting more and more sad as the day continued. Everything had to be a reminder of Shisui. You know. You've got some interesting hair. Hem. I don't know about that. And an interesting face, with those whisker-like marks. Uh-huh. Don't know about it either. You don't know your parents. Eh. No. Naruto said looking away. Oh. I'm sorry. She didn't realize that he never knew his parents, and she did start feeling that he seemed to hide something but she didn't know. It's okay. Hey you guys, you ready to go? Yes. What took you so long Nisan? Sasuke said. Oh nothing. Just had to put something away and prepare stuff for a mission tomorrow night. He was partly truthful. He was putting something away. He was Stoimji Shisui's eyes away since he still had them from the previous night. He had seen from the house that they had been talking, and was happy they would maybe form a bond. They were walking to Ichiraku's and Naruto was quietly dealing with the voice in his head. Itachi noticed that Naruto became increasingly more quiet and distant. This was worrying him but he couldn't do anything since his sister was present. Itachi didn't want Naruto to succumb to the feelings since they'd be manipulated by the QB. The Sharingan on its own heightened his emotions making his sadness and pain even worse. If the QB starts adding to that then there is no way he could expect Naruto to remain sane. Hey. Happy birthday Naruto. Said Yugao, Kakashi, Hiruzen. Naruto nodded and smiled in appreciation. He sat in the center with Sasuke beside him with everyone else around them. They all talked and he updated them on his progress within his training. Everyone was impressed and surprised at how he seemed to bounce back like nothing from last night. So far only Itachi knew that it wasn't so. He hadn't been given a chance to inform the others as he was with Naruto the whole time. He planned to inform them after this. They ate then started giving gifts to Naruto. Yugao gave Naruto a shoulder sheath similar to Shisui's except it was black. Hiruzen gave 50 shuriken and 25 kanai. Kakashi gave him books on ninjutsu, and fuenjutsu as well as a scroll on some ninjutsu he could learn over time. Kakashi knew he would dive head on into training. It was what he did when his father committed suicide. He figured he might as well help keep him occupied with the books and knew he'd spend a lot of time working on complete mastery over jutsu. He was similar to Minato in that sense, always working a jutsu until it was fully mastered until the point it couldn't be pushed any further. Hiruzen knew Naruto was to start his shuriken training and Yugao knew about Shisui gifting his tanto. Her gift was mainly out of the sentiment of him. Itachi then presented his, without presenting it. He told him, he would teach him a genjutsu for the sharingan that Shisui taught him and developed on his own. Saying that it's only right Naruto learns as well, it can be a family thing. And he knew Shisui was going to teach him it eventually. Thank you all. I really appreciate this. You guys mean a lot to me. Now the sadness in his voice started coming out but he was masking it well. They all wondered how he could gold it all in so well. Everyone but Sasuke noticed, she only just met him after all and doesn't know how he was. Naruto then got up, I'm going to go get training done. See you guys around. He then shunshined away. It was time he mastered it since he started practicing that is his first chakra requiring technique. Man, does he like always train? Sasuke asked. Everyone more or less nodded. Shisui trained him every day from morning till evening when he'd collapse. Itachi said. Hmm, that reminds me. Where was he? You said they are like brothers. Everyone froze. They didn't know what to say since only they knew. It hadn't been publicly known yet. He's on a mission for a few weeks, said Kakashi. Oh. Okay I guess. She shrugged it off and everyone sighed in relief. One year later. A lot had happened in the year. Naruto's friendship with Sasuke grew however he became really reserved as well. It was made out that Shisui committed suicide rather than killed. The tensions in the village in Uchiha grew exponentially. Kakashi now no longer was a full-time Anbu. He does Anbu missions every now and then but mainly serves as a Jonin leader. However he hasn't passed a single Genin team yet. Itachi had become the youngest Anbu captain ever since Kakashi, and was developing a fearsome reputation. Yugao continued her Anbu duties, being a Hokage guard. Sasuke and Naruto were going to begin the academy in a couple months and she looked forward to it. Naruto seemed to be impassive about it but he did look forward to being a ninja. Somehow Naruto's status as Jinchuriki got out and all the adults despised Naruto. This caused Naruto's thoughts to constantly agitate him in trying to get him to kill everyone around him. 
he kept it under control but it did force him to want to seclude himself more. Hardly leaving his house and if he did it was mainly to the forest of death. Naruto finally mastered the body flicker technique and can jump repeatedly in a fight without losing control. When he uses his Sharingan then he has no issues using it. He made a decision early on that he didn't want to always rely on the Sharingan. He mastered the fire jutsus that Shisui gave him and does them with a single sign. It really didn't take long but he did start the jutsu that Kakashi gave but was still trying to master them. They were fire since he never got checked for other affinities yet. They were the, dragon flame bomb, fire breath, and, great dragon flame. They were all B rank and as such was taking him a little while to master them. Itachi had taught him Shisui's, Mirror Heaven and Earth Change, Genjutsu and Naruto mastered that. His arsenal was growing ever so slowly. His Shurikenjutsu became extremely great as Sasuke helped him and he helped her Kenjutsu. Over the year he spent a lot of time in the Forest of Death, as such he met Shikamaru Nara, heir to the Nara clan. The clan had ownership of the forest as it was their sacred land. Naruto learned pretty quick how smart Shikamaru was even though he was quite lazy. He really liked him and they began forming a friendship. Itachi after teaching Naruto the genjutsu had started distancing himself from everybody. It confused everyone aside from Naruto since he was always training. Sasuke was sad about it as such she spent time training in what Naruto would tell her to strengthen her kenjutsu. Hokage Office. Lord Third. Yes Itachi-kun. The clan plans to make its move in a week. We need to make a plan. If we wait the results will be devastating for everyone. I understand. What do you propose? I'm not sure, but as things play out we may have to strike. Are you sure about this? Yes, in fact, it will be me to do it. I'll wipe out the clan, pin it on me, never mention the plans they had for a coup and take care of Sasuke and Naruto-kun. Itachi. I don't know if I could ever ask such a thing. You aren't, I'm volunteering. You must promise to take care of those two. Naruto-kun needs some light in his life, right now he is fighting the darkness within him and at this rate he will lose. How do you know? In order to quiet his inner demons, he's forced himself into seclusion. Only talking to people if they come to him. He needs love Lord Third. Here is a nodded and understood. The curse of the Uchiha and their hatred grow from loss and pain. Every day that grows within Naruto, and with the Kyuubi's manipulation added on top, it's a recipe for disaster. Is there anything else you ask of me? Yes, one last thing. Naruto is the youngest Uchiha to awaken the Mangekyo now. As such when he gains the ability to activate it, he'll begin to lose his vision. When that happens, implant these eyes into him. They're Shisui's, and when you do it, he will gain his Mangekyo ability as well as fix his eyesight for good. Hiruzen looked at Itachi shocked, however that's not all, the Sharingan will no longer increase his pain and sadness once he has the eternal Mangekyo, it no longer will affect him negatively. You must wait till his vision begins depleting though. Okay Itachi-kun, I will do as you've instructed and I'll watch over the two of them. Thank you, I need to prepare for tonight's mission then. You'll do it tonight. Yes, if we wait longer it gets harder. I'm going to have Sasuke head to Naruto-kun's for some training while I carry out the mission. Okay. Report to me when you've finished your mission. Hi. Hiruzen felt terrible that things came to this. If Danzo never interfered then maybe things would never have come to this. Naruto wouldn't be sinking into darkness and would still have Shisui with him. Danzo always ruined everything, maybe it was time to stop overlooking him and to finally get rid of him. This situation was the final straw. Hey Sasuke. Itachi said looking at his sister performing sword strikes. Ni-san. She gave him a tight hug. He reciprocated and hugged her as tight as possible. He looked at her smile and her eyes and memorized every bit since this would be his last time with her. Go over to Naruto-kun's, okay? Why? We hadn't planned anything. I know, but he could really use a friend. Plus I know you'd love some more training and maybe a spar for Kenjutsu. She couldn't deny that. She was at a point where she felt like she was playtoing in her growth so maybe some work with him would get her back on the rise. She did also realize how he was seen less and less these days. Okay. I'll go over there. He's currently in the forest of death. You can stay a few days if it is what it takes. Alright. See you later Nisan. She gave one last hug before getting a bag of clothes and taking her katana. She even grabbed a tub of sweet dumplings to eat with him. I'm sorry Sasuke, it's for the best. Take care of each other.
Sasuke ran through the village and was trying to quickly get to the training area that Naruto used all the time. She was excited because he was very helpful in improving her skills and even though he got more distant, he was always warm around her. She didn't know what entirely was going on but she could tell he was hurting. She had found out about Shisui's suicide, and figured that could be the cause. Maybe if she spent more time with him, he could be happier. When Itachi said he needed a friend, she figured now would be her best chance to make an impact. Maybe I should ask him about that technique he uses that lets him teleport. She continued running for 30 more minutes. She came to the entrance and could smell smoke. She got really curious now and ran at top speed to the clearing he usually was always at. She noticed that the closer she got the more charred the trees and ground were. This was extremely interesting and she continued going. When she came to the clearing she saw Naruto, Sharingan activated and panting heavily. All around him was ash and fire ambers were everywhere. It was obvious that there were some serious fire jutsu being thrown around. She noticed an anger that he carried and he released another fire jutsu. With one sign he made the, great dragon flame, and she watched in awe as he made a dragon made of fire. He started making it move to his will as it danced around in the air before he lost control and the jutsu blew up. Now it made sense why the area was reduced to ash and char. He was angry but it wasn't for messing up. He seemed to expect it almost as he continued practicing, she never seen him truly trained before and she was seeing how he got so strong. He just kept going non-stop until he could no longer. If he did this every day then it made sense. But. Dot how would he be able to recover for the next day's training? Surely he'd be so exhausted that he couldn't train for a few days. It made no sense. So many questions loomed over Naruto. She noticed that Naruto stopped and took a few breaths, then based on how his cheeks moved, he was smiling. Sasuke-chan, come over here, Naruto said turning around with a smile. The anger she had seen him with seemed to be gone all of a sudden. She ran over to him and they hugged with a greeting. She said she planned to remain with him to train for a few days, if he was okay with it, to which he agreed to. Hey, now I can show you a Mu Kenjutsu. Yes. When do we start? She was excited to learn a new skill and she liked that Naruto always got straight to work when helping her. No matter what he was doing, he would always stop and help her out in whatever she needed. Right now, you will learn something Nisan taught me a few years ago. The thought of Shisui always hurt but he was trying to learn to not be crippled by it. It's called the, Uchiha style, dance of the sun halo, with this kenjutsu, he started going through the motions by unsheathing his tanto and brow his left hand to the hilt. You coat the blade in fire chakra and with each slash a wave of fire will be unleashed. HN, you make it look so easy. I know you'll get it in no time. You use a katana, the wave of fire will be larger than my own since I use a tanto. There are methods to make it stronger or bigger or whatever, but that is solely on the user's mastery. Hey Naruto. Yes. When did you awaken your Sharingan? I was four. Her eyes went wide as she realized that he's had it for as long as he could mold chakra. Is that how you learn so fast? No Sasuke-chan. The Sharingan is an amazing tool but I don't use it to learn jutsu. I just work it non-stop until I have true mastery. You see, it is true that with the Sharingan you can copy and memorize jutsu, but that doesn't equal mastery. She could only nod as every jutsu or technique that Naruto uses, he activates with either only one hand sign or none at all. I do like using the Sharingan, I just want to make sure that I myself am strong so that if I'm too tired for the Sharingan or whatever, I won't be helpless. You're right, so what's the first step? They trained together for a few hours and the sun had started going down. They sat under a nonburnt tree together and she shared the sweet dumplings with him. He looked to her, you know. Something I've realized about using this technique is that we mold fire chakra in our hand. He formed flames within his hands, what do you think we could do with it aside from just putting it to a blade? I, I'm not sure. I only just learned that was possible. I'm still annoyed, I can only do one slash and then the blade loses the fire. She said with her arms crossed. Haha you'll get it soon. Took me a few days. Just, what if every jutsu could be done like this? Like it's just gathering chakra, molding it, then giving it form from imagination. He stood up and proceeded to try a, great fireball, with no sign at all. I should be able to just will the fireball right. He tried to do it and it actually worked. Just was a super weak version. Huh. I guess you're right Naruto. 
more practice and you'll never have to waste time making hand signs for that jutsu again. She said with extreme adoration for the fact that here was someone, her age doing something no one does. Itachi vs Uchiha. As night was coming, Itachi geared up. He put on his anbu gear, sheathed his sword and put his mask on. He looked into the mirror for a bit with his Sharingan activated and watched as he activated his Mangekyo. With these eyes, I will walk the path of darkness. To keep them safe I will endure. Itachi shunshined out of the house and was on top of an electrical pole. He was crouched down and watched as the streets had gotten pretty clear since people were turning in for the night. He jumped down and brought his sword out. Running through the streets he quickly killed the unsuspecting clan members that had been walking. Jumping through each building, he killed everyone. For a little while it was easy since no one knew of what was going on. After the first block he knew there was only five more to go. The police force started becoming aware and now he had to fight. He knew that there was no Uchiha alive that could defeat him currently, but he wouldn't get arrogant. A group of five charged at him, he engaged in a sword fight and started taking them out one by one with acrobatic movements. He continued going through the buildings killing more. He came to house that he was dreading. It was Azumi's. He started going towards the door when her voice called him from behind. Itachi-kun, what's happening right now? She was scared, he gripped his sword tightly then turned around. She saw the blood on him and his blade. She couldn't believe it. No, you couldn't have. Tsukuyomi. Itachi said when he made eye contact with her. In the illusion of his that is granted by the Mangekyo, he had her live out her entire life. She would go on to be married to him and they'd be happy with a family until she reached old age and passed away. When the illusion was released, her death within that world transferred to the real world. If the mind dies, the person goes. He held her in his arms. Thank you for loving me. He said with a tear falling. He closed her eyes and laid her down gently. He had to keep going. The interesting thing was that despite all the time that went on within the illusion, it seemed that no time passed at all in the real world. He continued on the massacre. In the matter of two hours Eveon but two were dead. The ones that would be the hardest for him to kill. His parents. He came to the house and began to quietly walk through. He was wondering where in the house they may be. Suddenly he was brought out of his thoughts. We're in here Itachi, we aren't going to fight. Fugaku said. He looked to the great room, he opened the door and he saw Fugaku and Makoto resting on their knees facing away from him. I don't wish to enter a fight to the death my son. Unlike you, our pain will end in an instant. Fugaku said. Itachi approached them and prepared to deliver the last two strikes of the night. He was shaking and he began to cry. He never hesitated like this before and wasn't able to bring himself to finish the job. You truly are a kind boy Itachi. Although we may mo have had the same vision, I am proud of you my son. You must see your path through. I just ask that you take care of Sasuke. I will, father. Itachi cried and screamed as he swung his sword killing both his parents instantly. He dropped to his knees and cried his eyes out. He just slaughtered his clan, killed his lover and parents. Dot all for the village and the safety of Sasuke and Naruto. He got back up and shunshined to Hiruzen's office. It is done. Itachi-kun. How long do I have? You'll have three days to get as far as you can, what will you do? I've learned of an organization that will take me in. I'll be constantly sending you intel through my journeys. I hate that you had to do this. Dot but I am thankful to you for protecting the village. Itachi just nodded. Please, watch over Naruto and Sasuke. I will Itachi-kun. Thank you Lord Third. No need to thank me. It's the least I can do for you. If anything happens to them, I will come back and I'll kill everyone involved. With that he dispersed in a flock of crows and was gone. Itachi in three days would be marked as a traitor for killing his clan. Naruto walked through his house and came across a room that pained him every time he passed it. He hadn't entered the room since the night he learned of Shisui's death. He just couldn't bring himself to enter it. His hand shook as he reached for the no but suddenly dropped it as he couldn't bring himself to go in. A few tears began to drop and his eyes were knitted tightly shut. Suddenly someone grabbed his hand gently and placed the other hand just above his elbow as a small hug. He thought he was the only one awake. It was 2 a.m. after all. He never got much sleep these days and as such would normally go train in either the field outback or the dojo or in the forest of death. But since Sasuke had been sleeping in the guest room, he didn't want to wake her nor just leave her alone in the house. It was his room, wasn't it? She said somberly. 
Yeah, she then rested her head on his shoulder. Without speaking a word he understood that she was assuring him that she would support him no matter his choice. He opened the door and he slowly walked in. She kept his pace and never left his side. The room was made up with not a single thing out of place. Had it not been for the dust that gathered up over the year and a half, it would have been perfectly clean as it was obvious that it was always well kept. Naruto walked throughout the room and noticed pictures of him and Shisui together. On the same photo he had, he placed his index and middle fingers over Shisui in the photo. Hey Naruto. There looks to be notes of some kind on his desk. Hmm. Naruto gasped in shock. He was working on a new genjutsu, he never got to finish it. What is it? From the looks, it seems that he was trying to create a genjutsu that was motivated from something he calls Koto Amatsukami. Apparently that genjutsu allows him control of someone through making someone completely believe his will. Well this was apparently going to be able to create a hell-like world that would crush the victim's mind and they'd believe it though his will which would kill the victim. At least that was the aim. He never was able to perfect it as said in his notes and seemed to be trying to find a way to complete it. Dot but I guess now. You should try to finish it. I'm sure he'd be proud if you could find the answer that he couldn't. Besides you're probably the only one who would be able to. Your ability to learn techniques is something I've never seen. Maybe you're right. I know I am. She said smiling and he just wrapped an arm around her, rubbing her right arm while pulling her tightly. Thank you, Sasuke-chan. The next two days they spent training rigorously, she managed to master the Uchiha style, Dance of the Sun Halo. Naruto finally fully mastered the Shunshin and can have no difficulty making repeated jumps in close succession within close range for battle. The next step was the version of the teleportation jutsu where Shisui could create his afterimage clones. They were special and required immense speed. Where Shisui could make 16, Naruto could only make 2. He wasn't fast enough nor mastered the version of the technique fully just yet. It also took him a few hand signs to perform this level of the teleportation jutsu when Shisui didn't. Naruto's speed was greatly increasing and this was including his normal speed, not just when using the shunshin. It was nowhere near the level of his shunshin and didn't succeed that of a jonin but he was definitely as fast if not faster than most chunin. Just a benefit when you are trained and raised by the second fastest shinobi in the world and son of the fastest in the world. Sasuke was amazed by his speed and use of the shunshin and finally asked to learn it. He of course did but it seemed that she'd never reach his level of mastery as she could only use it for the purpose that every shinobi did, and that was mere transportation. Maybe in a few years she could use it similar to Naruto but currently she couldn't. However she was just glad to be able to use it since all she wanted to get to point it to be quicker. Sasuke had said bye to Naruto and had left to go back home. They had been happy and she made him feel better than he had been before. He was thankful that about her surprise visit and glad that she was his friend. Soon though she would need him more than ever as she was in for a shock to her world. Oi, Naruto. Hem. Hello Uncle Kakashi. What can I do for you? Naruto said standing from a seated position. What have you been doing? Oh nothing. Sasuke-chan was here, you just missed. She really helped me out these past few days that she stayed. You guys were together for a few days alone. Kakashi said with a perverted smile and a chuckle. Yeah. Why? Oh nothing Naruto. Gonna be a few years before you understand, Kakashi thought with a laugh. Okay, anyways, I mastered the shunshin and started to work on Shisui's last step of it being his most advanced teleportation jutsu. My my, how far along are you? I can form two clones and I still have to make a few hand signs. Naruto said annoyed. You'll get there Naruto. I'm proud of your development but don't make the same mistakes as me when I was your age. I dove all in on my training after my father's suicide and closed myself off from everyone. Then during and after the war, I really closed everybody out. Remember you are only going to be turning 7 Naruto. Dot try to enjoy your childhood as well. Kakashi said kneeling before Naruto so they could be eye level. I understand uncle. Dot but, if I'm not training my feelings start to linger and it's too painful. It scares me. Naruto said looking down. Why does it scare you, Naruto? I hear a voice all the time and get feelings to do horrible things, training seems to quiet it all and I can be relaxed. Naruto said with a few tears forming in his eyes. Naruto. Kakashi said in a saddened tone. Is it the QB? The Sharingan? I do remember seeing the Mangekio awaken. Shisui had Minato-sensei, I also had him. 
Naruto doesn't. I understand now why Lord Third told me to watch over him now. Thought Kakashi. What do I do? The academy begins soon and I'll be forced to stay away from training. I'm scared. Please I don't know what to do. Naruto now was crying. He feared this dark feeling he had all the time and could only hide from it while he trained. If that was not an option, what would he do? I'll be there for you Naruto. I'll help you, whenever you need to talk, you can talk to me. How can you understand? Ever since my Sharingan awakened I've felt more and more pain and sadness. It's like it multiplies my emotions. Kakashi lifted his headband and Naruto was completely surprised. He always thought that maybe he just didn't have an eye or something given the scar, never did he expect a Sharingan. I do understand Naruto. That is why I can help you. Naruto embraced Kakashi in a hug and cried in his arms for a few minutes. For the first time since Shisui's death he felt like he truly had someone who understood. Itachi did as well but it wasn't the same after Shisui died. After he'd learned Shisui's genjutsu counter from him, they hadn't really been together much and Naruto mainly was always with Sasuke. They still were close but Naruto always bottled up how he felt, so he thought Itachi never knew. Kakashi hadn't spent a lot of time with Naruto, not since he was still a baby, he always visited but didn't get to see him as much as he'd like. Mainly because of his Anbu duties then when he was no longer Anbu and became a Jonin leader, he was forced to take on teams, which he quickly dropped and just got sent on high-level missions. Here, let's have a spar Naruto. I'll even have my Sharingan out, I want to see how you've developed. Kakashi said standing up. Naruto smiled and they began their fight. Hiruzen had been watching from his crystal ball and smiled when he saw how much Kakashi was able to alleviate some of Naruto turmoil. However he knew all too well that it would take a lot more and even more time to truly rid the darkness. He learned a lot about the Uchiha from his senseis, Hashirama Senju the Shodai Hokage and Toborama Senju the Nadaim Hokage. Plus his friend and teammate Kagami Uchiha. He knew that the capacity of love for an Uchiha was unmatched, but so was their capacity to hatred. You can't have one without the other and it would always be there, for an Uchiha, they had to have someone or something to love that was far greater than their hatred. However if they lost that which they loved, it is what led to many Uchiha losing it. The most notorious being Madara Uchiha. After losing his brother, who he loved dearly, Madara went mad and was consumed in hatred. It's possible to overcome but it took a strong will and for there to be love in the life of the Uchiha that could be unbreakable. Right now Naruto needed as much as possible since he also had the Kyubi enhancing his negative emotions and was now the youngest to ever awaken the Mangekyo, even if he couldn't activate it on command yet. He figured that when Naruto learned of the massacre and the rumors of the fact that Itachi killed Shisui then he'd be able to activate it once more. Dot dot. Hiruzen didn't think anyone could guide him since the awakening of the Mangekyo was entirely different than just the base Sharingan. Without the guidance of someone with the Mangekyo it would be hard since he had to overcome it all on his own. With the Uchiha clan wiped out and the only other Mangekyo user being the one to do it and be forced to become a missing nin, Hiruzen was worried. How would Naruto turn out? If only there was some way but he knew Itachi couldn't. He had a new duty and had to walk that path. Hiruzen really wished he knew what to do in this situation but didn't. Soon Sasuke would learn of her clan's fate and then she'd end up going to Naruto, at least they had a strong bond so that eased Hiruzen. It still saddened him how everything was but he would do his best to make things better. I wonder if I should tell Naruto of my own Mangekyo. No. I'll wait until he activates it again thought Kakashi. There was no point in trying to teach Naruto of it, if he couldn't even use it nor knew of its existence. It would probably be for the best that he doesn't know of it for as long as possible. Later that night, Naruto had said his byes to Kakashi and had gone back home. It was already dark and he was tired. He learned really fast that Kakashi was an extremely formidable opponent. He wasn't arrogant to think he could win but, he at least thought that maybe he could do well from the fact that Kakashi wasn't as fast as Shisui so maybe he'd be able to keep up. Yeah. No, that was not the case. He could only perceive his movements with his Sharingan but even then, he still wasn't fast enough to do anything about it. The Sharingan didn't grant speed, the perception yes, you could see a move before it happens, but if you yourself wasn't fast enough then it wouldn't matter. You'd just watch yourself get beat up in slow motion. That annoyed Naruto but he knew that being in fights like that would be extremely beneficial to him. Always sparring against the best meant that if anyone was around his level, 
he'd in theory easily go through them since the opponent wouldn't be at that level of opponent he'd trained against. Kakashi was probably the strongest jonin of the village so that meant an absolute ton of bruises all over his body. He didn't feel a beating like that since he angered Shisui and learned firsthand why he was named, Shisui the teleporter. Naruto was brought from his thoughts when he noticed Sasuke in his porch. That was odd since she had left earlier, had she forgotten something. Then he noticed how pained she seemed to be in and he immediately ran to her. Hey Sasuke-chan, what's wrong? He put his hand on her shoulder and when she looked up at him, his heart began to sink as he could saw her crying. He always wanted her happy and seeing her this way hurt. She didn't speak anything as it was hard for her to talk. Immediately Naruto embraced her in a tight hug and was gently rubbing her back and stroking her hair gently. She returned the hug and they stood there for 10 minutes while she cried into his shoulder while he just tried to comfort her. When she started to settle down, he took her inside and sat her on the couch while he got some peach tea from the kitchen for them. He sat beside her and didn't say anything, rather just held her hand and waited until she was ready. He was worried and feared that maybe something happened to her parents, or worse her brother. He really liked and looked up to Itachi and if something happened it would really hurt. But he didn't want to think like that, then again, what else would cause her to be this way? After a while, she gripped his hand tighter and looked up at him. She just looked into his dark black eyes that felt like she was looking into a void and finally mustered up her voice. The clan. They're all dead. Naruto was about to say something when she continued. Apparently Itachi slaughtered them all. My parents, cousins, the whole clan, everyone. She began crying again. Naruto didn't speak, only hugged her and let her cry in his chest. It took everything within him to hold his emotions in, he wanted, no he had to he strong for her. He wouldn't let her see him sad when she needed him. He would stay strong for her and never cry in front of her again so that he could always make her feel better. Right then he decided that his pain and sadness, he'll try to hide and bury around her so that way, she could always see him as a light and ray of happiness for her. Naru. I'm so sorry. They think that, that my brother may have, she paused. How do I tell him, he deserves to know, she thought. I am so sorry. And Anbu said that they think, he faked Shisui-san's suicide and that it, it was him that killed him for power. She felt as Naruto froze and got stiff. He didn't say anything though and it was scaring her. Was he mad and began hating her for what her brother did. She really didn't want to lose him but knew that Naruto was in so much pain to begin with, even if he didn't show it. Now learning her brother may have been the reason. Dot how would he see her now? She knew she lost her family and clan thanks to him. She didn't want to lose Naruto too due to him. Naruto. D. Do you hate me? Naruto hugged her tighter as he finally snapped out of it, no. I'll never hate you Sasuke-chan, he said softly to her. She cried more as she was so saddened but also happy to know he wouldn't leave her. She needed him to be by her side and couldn't imagine what would happen if he wasn't there. They were the last Uchiha and her only friend left. Sasuke began to fall asleep in Naruto's arms so he picked her up bridal style and carried her to the guest room. He laid her down gently and pulled the covers over her. He cleaned her cheeks from the dry tears and brushed her hair out her face. He smiled sadly looking at her as she laid sleeping peacefully. He began to turn around and walk away when he felt her grab his wrist. Please don't go. Will you stay with me? Sure. Naruto sat in the chair by the bed while she held his left hand with both of hers tightly and close to her heart. After a while she finally completely fell asleep and he finally let the tears he'd held the whole time out and cried silently beside her. His eyes tight, he felt so betrayed, he'd looked up to Itachi, and he had taught him so much. Dot was it all a lie. How could he kill Shisui? How could he kill the clan? Naruto asked that so many times, he didn't understand. Just how? Why would he? All this was driving him mad, his eyes shot open and his mangekyo was activated once again. This time he felt the change, his eyes burned and he brought his fingers to his eye. He looked in the mirror and say his Sharingan was different and saw the six black triangles with the bases connected to form a hexagon in the center, the black ring that was centered through the triangles and the black circle in the center of the hexagon and the glowing blood red of the background to them. He felt different with these eyes. He felt the power they held and his vision felt so much clearer, so much stronger. He felt as his visual prowess was ten times stronger with these eyes and could feel there were more hidden powers within. With these eyes, I'll find the answers. I'll create a world of peace. 
Naruto thought looking into his reflection. He looked to the sleeping Sasuke. Sasuke-chan, with these eyes I will always protect you. Nothing, no one will take you away from me and nobody will hurt you. I promise. Hiruzen had watched everything with his crystal ball. He was glad to see that they supported each other. Happy to see that she didn't become lost to hatred thanks to Naruto being by her side. However he couldn't help but worry about Naruto when he saw that now Naruto fully activated the Mangekyo. The promise he made was both good and bad. He was glad that maybe Sasuke was the key to keeping him out of the darkness. However, if something ever happened, should she be in danger, what would he do? How will he react? He thought it was the same with Itachi. He'd practically promised to slaughter anyone if something happened to Naruto and Sasuke. If Naruto was feeling the same way then, it was a terrifying thought. At least he knew with Itachi that he was focused and would direct it. But Naruto housed the Kyubi, and if something happened, Naruto would destroy everything around him, no matter who it was. What do I do? Thought Hiruzen. He would need to go to Kakashi and see what he thought. Right then he decided for sure that when Naruto become a shinobi, his sensei would be Kakashi, with the Sharingan he could potentially suppress the Kyubi and with his knowledge in some seals he could suppress it that way as well. Before he was only somewhat considering it since Naruto already had training in the Sharingan and should be fine, however as things were now it was no longer an option. Sasuke would be on the team naturally as well since she needed someone to train her in the Sharingan when she awakened it and she could maybe be the key in taming Naruto whenever he started to slip into anger. Now he'd have to wait until their graduation to choose a third member. Two months later. The first day of the academy arrived. A lot happened in these two months. Sasuke now lived in Naruto's home since she could no longer bring herself to be in her own house. She was thankful that Naruto invited her to stay with him when he'd walked her home the morning after she gave him the news. He had seen her face and that was all he needed in order to know she no longer wanted to be there. She got the room right beside Naruto's and had trained with him every day leading up to the academy. He really helped her in feeling better as now she no longer felt completely pained, it was still there but she could feel happy again. It took a month but she was getting better. For a long time she couldn't believe how Naruto seemed to find. Never did he show any sadness or pain around her. The thoughts of him being strangely fine ended a couple weeks ago when she awoke in the middle of the night one night. She had gone to the kitchen and got some water. She was in a blue t-shirt and black shorts so she started to feel a little chilly. It was cold this night and she was about to go back into her warm covers when she stopped in the hall. There were sounds coming from the dojo. It was on the other side of the house so the sounds were faint. When she came to the door it wasn't fully slid shut and as such she could see into it. She saw Naruto punching the hell out of a punching bag and then she noticed he was crying and could see how much sadness he truly had and was hiding from her. As his crying seemed to escalate, so did his punches, until he seemed to let put a small quiet scream which he seemed to be trying hard to contain and he had punched into the bag making his fist go through all the was to his wrist. She wanted to over there and comfort him but decided against it, it was obvious he was trying to hide this from her. She figured that when he was ready, he'll express it and would let him keep it to himself for now. Kakashi would come by regularly and always helped in training or talking to Naruto. She didn't ever try to listen in as it seemed to be something personal between the two, but she did hear one word time, Mangekyo. What was it? She still hadn't awakened her own Sharingan but was learning a lot about how it would be. Naruto helped in training her body to be able to keep up with the visual prowess of the Sharingan and that was the majority of her training for the two months. Neither one learned new jutsu, just perfecting what they already had, and training each other in kenjutsu and shurikenjutsu respectively as they had promised each other. They were both becoming masters of both arts. Naruto already mastered kenjutsu and figured that in another year, so would Sasuke. Naruto's shurikenjutsu would probably be mastered in another month based on the fact that he trains day and night. Naruto woke up and began to cook some breakfast. He was in sweats and his sleeveless hoodie. It was quite early but he couldn't sleep anyways. The surrounding area of his eyes was slightly darkened over the lack of sleep over time but it wasn't too prominent and could be missed, if you didn't pay attention. He had just finished making the eggs, bacon, and toast, poured some orange juice and set the table when Sasuke had came into the kitchen. He smiled and wished her a good morning. Afterwards he left to go shower. That puzzled her, she noticed now that it was always like that, he would make breakfast but she never saw him eat. No dish was in the sink and he never actually ate with her. 
Rather he trained. It was the same even this morning, however he showered and wore his usual outfit to then head to the academy. He waited for her and they left together. Along the walk, she decided to finally ask. Hey Naru. Naruto rose an eyebrow. Yes Sasuke-chan. Why do you make breakfast, only to not eat? Because it makes you happy. And I'm just not all that hungry you know. You hardly eat. Like I said Sasuke-chan, not all that hungry. Don't worry about it, today we start the academy so focus on that. Naruto. She knew that him not eating as much was probably due to his inner turmoil but she couldn't bring herself to confront him about it. She didn't know how he'd react and as such let it go. Soon though, she'll get him to open up. After some time, they came to the academy gate. It was a large building, there was a large library just beside it, the Konoha library in fact. And there was a large training ground in front. There were log posts with targets, obviously for shuriken and kanai training and even a circular ring made in the ground, most likely for spars. The two stood there as they watched a large group of kids all conversing and boasting of their clans and who'll be the strongest of the class. Naruto didn't want to get into the mix of them and stood by a tree with a swing. Sasuke naturally followed him. Sasuke-chan, you should make some friends. Why aren't you? Sasuke-chan, I'll tell you later, okay. She didn't completely get it but trusted that he'd follow through on what he said. He wasn't one to just say something just for saying it's sake. He'd mean whatever he say truthfully and as such she left him alone there to meet some people before the teacher would come for them. Naruto smiled slightly as he watched her go, he truly wanted her to make some friends. He knew though that he wouldn't be able, however he wouldn't let it get in her way. Sasuke was heading towards the crowd and wondered who to go towards. She was pretty nervous but wouldn't let it show. Suddenly a couple people came towards her, there was a blonde girl, a pink-haired shy girl that came towards her. Hello there, I'm Ino Yamanaka, this here is my friend Sakura Haruno. She's pretty shy but nice when you get to know her. Hi. Said Sakura shyly. Hello, I'm Sasuke. The Uchiha. Ino said slightly loud, thankfully no one heard. Yes. Ino realized that she probably shouldn't talk about that but rather just tried to talk of other things. Mainly how she had met Sakura and flowers. Sasuke wasn't sure she enjoyed talking about flowers but could tell that the blonde was trying to be friendly. She was taken out of her thoughts when Ino had asked her something. Hmm. Sorry I didn't get that. It's okay. I asked who that boy is by the tree, he seems to be watching you. She glanced over and smiled. That's Naruto. For as long as I've known him, he's always been there for me. He's just making sure I'm okay. Don't worry. Is he your boyfriend? What? Haha <laughs> I'm joking. He's got some interesting hair. You're jet black, but those red highlights are interesting. He dye it. Nope. That's his natural hair. Pretty odd as every Uchiha only had black, so I'm not sure why his is different. She said chuckling. Oh okay. Well why is he off on his own? I'm not sure, he said he'd tell me later so. They all talked for a while longer and awaited the sensei's arrival. Naruto was off alone still and smiled that Sasuke made a couple friends. He happened to look over and saw someone laying in the grass. Hmm, so the Nara heir is in the class as well. Yo Naruto. Antisocial now. Said Shikamaru in the grass. You could say that. What are you doing? Watching the clouds man. Watching the clouds. HN. Naruto chuckled and walked towards the entrance with Shikamaru as they could tell it was going to be time. Surprisingly Hiruzen came out with some chunin but everyone was happy to see their Hokage. He was giving a speech, something about, will of fire, but Naruto and Shikamaru took the time to take a nap. They woke up when it was done, they had some skill to time it so perfectly it was insane. Sasuke went over to Naruto. Didn't you think that was a nice speech? Yeah yeah, Gigi has such a way with words. Naruto said however she poked in between his ribs showing that she knew he hadn't paid attention. Ah come on Sasuke-chan. It's okay. You need to rest Naru. Just try not to make this a reoccurring theme and sleep at home, okay? Sure. He walked beside her and little did she know how much he was trying to maintain his calm, however with her at his side it was far easier. He never understood why she could make it all quiet down and nothing else mattered, however he would protect her forever since she could. One thing was for sure, the academy was boring. Naruto hated every second of it. For the entire first year it was only lecture and he wouldn't learn a single new thing. 
Shisui taught him all the theory of jutsu and chakra and genjutsu. This year would be a total waste. Want it to end. Kill them all. Not again. Naruto accidentally said out loud. Sadly the room had been silent as they were all reading and everyone turned to him. The sensei, Baruka Yumino, glared an all to familiar glare to Naruto. So he's like the others, guess the years got even longer. That talk is more important than ever now. She must not be involved. Together we can end this. No more of those glares and no more being subjugated to this pain. Naruto winced as he tried hard to repress the urges. He's squeezing the pencil in his hand so tight that it snapped in half. You will remain silent, Naruto. Now read before you are punished. Uruka said as he looked at him in disgust. Great, worse than I thought. Man, should I aim to show out to graduate early then? But if I do then, I don't know. Just kill him. You know you hate him for looking at you that way. What will you do when he gives her that same look? That seemed to get a reaction out of his container as he tensed. His eyes became a crimson red but rather than the Sharingan a black slit was visible. Naruto's whisker marks began darkening and becoming more apparent, but just as quickly as it all appeared, it receded and was gone. It was only visible for a few seconds and as such no one noticed, except for one pineapple-shaped haired boy, Shikamaru Nara. Troublesome. What are you hiding Naruto? Whatever the case, I know it isn't the real you so when will you let anyone in? We could help you know. Troublesome. Shikamaru thought as he looked at Naruto. He glanced at Sasuke and saw she hadn't noticed the subtle change. I wonder. Naruto slowly opened his eyes that were now normal and all he did was nod towards his teacher. If Aruka could be called that at this point. That night, Naruto and Sasuke returned home. He prepared dinner and this time he would eat with her. He needed to talk to her and she was expecting some answers. So, do I need to ask questions or will you just speak? Sasuke said. Naruto sighed. Sasuke-chan, first off, while we are at the academy or public, it will be best if you don't associate with me. What? Are you insane? What are you ashamed of me? Sasuke began to feel hurt as she felt she was the problem. Maybe he wasn't so fine with her as he made it out to be. That's not it. You're very dear to me. As such I will not let you be hurt for being near me in public. What do you mean then Naruto? Once more he sighed. I'm not sure why but the villagers have been sending me hateful glares and disgust. Our teacher gave me the same look today. I will not allow their views of me for whatever reason they have be placed on you. You still can make friends and have fun. Kids stay away from me as their parents tell them to. The more you are near me, they'll start to avoid you too. Naruto I won't turn my back on you. You're the one who's always been there for me. And I still will, albeit from a distance in my own way. Listen, so long as you're happy, I am happy. When we return to the house, I'll be with you. This way you're never alone and have many friends and many to rely on. Who will be your friend? Who will you rely on? Sasuke wasn't pleased at hearing any of this. Sasuke-chan, you're the only one in the world that I need, as such no one else matters. Not Gigi, not Uncle Kakashi, not anybody. You are the calm to my storm. So just be happy. Dot for both of us. She couldn't believe what he said. Did he really value her more than Kakashi and Lord Third? What did that mean? Why was he so sure that he couldn't have anybody? Could he truly be happy so long as she was? Or was it just him trying to make her feel better about the fact that as she would have friends, he'd be alone? While she was having fun or gathered with others, he'd stay in seclusion. The path that seemed to lay ahead of Naruto sounded lonely to Sasuke. She didn't want to have him feel such a way. She didn't understand what she felt towards him but knew that she'd rather anyone but him feel such a way. Why is it that every time things could go well for her, he always had to suffer in silence while always showing her a brave face? That thought made her wonder, just how sad did he feel when he said that? If he truly valued her as he said, then no doubt it must really hurt his heart to have her stay away from him outside the house. Naru. A tear slipped out of her eye while she clenched his hand tightly. What does he mean by him being a storm that I can calm? Naruto just smiled at her trying to help her feel better about it all and then stood up. I'm going to go train. There's something I want to work on. Get some rest, okay? Okay. Thank you. Dot for everything. You don't ever need to thank me Sasuke-chan. You may not realize it but you are far more helpful than I am. He then disappeared from sight as she was left to process the entire talk and didn't know what to feel.
She was sad, her friend always seemed to get the short end of the stick. Happy that despite everything, he valued her before himself. It made no sense, just why. It would be a long time before either one truly understood what they felt or why but one thing for certain was that they had each other's back. The academy was interesting to Sasuke but she could tell that Naruto could care less, then again, he was rather knowledgeable so it only made sense. Hokage office. Naruto-kun. What are you doing here at this time? I wanted to ask you, would it be beneficial to strive to graduate early? I won't get to learn much from the courses and sensei doesn't like me. I'm just trying to figure out what would be best. Well, we are not currently at war so generally we don't allow early graduations. Dot but why are you wanting to leave, truthfully? Gigi. I don't know how to explain it, but I just don't trust myself. Hmm. Try to stick it through. I'm sure Sasuke-san wouldn't want this and I think if you give it some time, you'll find a circle for yourself. Okay. I will try. Dot but. Well you've got the Nara as a friend don't you? That's a start Naruto-kun. I guess you're right. Naruto gave Hiruzen a small and weak smile but it was a genuine smile nonetheless. When will Uncle Kakashi be back? Tomorrow night. I'll let him know. Naruto nodded and vanished as if he was never there. His biggest question but never asked was, why they saw him as they did. He didn't do anything, not that he knew of at least. Hiruzen was greatly disappointed in Aruka. The Chunin had professed how much he wished to be an instructor of the academy so that he could help mold the future. Where had that drive gone? He knew Uruka lost his parents during the QB attack, but to blame the child was disappointing. How can I make things better? At this rate Naruto-kun will never care for his life and will rush to death. He has nothing to drive on in his life. Said Hiruzen to nobody. Hopefully through time, Naruto's life could change and he could return to happiness. Shikamaru's house. Father, I have a question but I feel it's quite troublesome. Hem. What is it? Shikaku asked rather interested. Shikamaru never really ever showed interest in anything much. Naruto. Shikaku glanced over to his son as he started piecing together where it was heading. He knew his son would notice things that no one else would. When I'm around him he was always so kind and even funny. A rather troublesome kid. Yet today I saw him with a look I've never seen before, it was like hatred embodied. The looks he always gets and the treatment he receives. Dot it's like he's the plague. What's up with that? Well, what's your own personal opinion of him? I think he's a friend. Then do what you wish, Shikamaru. The thoughts of others are arrogant. In time they should go away. Just do what you feel is right. Shikaku was one of the only people to know the full truth of Naruto. He was one of Minato's trusted advisors and was a genius like no other. He never saw Naruto the way others do but he wouldn't pity the boy, knowing that pity never got anywhere and generally no one liked being pitied. Okay. Then I'll just be his friend. Also he seems to push himself farther and farther into seclusion. So he's really having issues with the QB. The look of hatred embodied, plus this. He's most likely trying to ensure no one is hurt by him accidentally. Do what you think is right. If he wishes to be alone, oblige. I'm sure he'll explain if you ask. Shikamaru nodded and left his father. Thinking on what he was told. He was only able to conclude that there were definitely many secrets about his friend, secrets that he would probably never be told, at least not for a long time. What could they be? How much would it change everything about Naruto if learned? One thing was for sure. Naruto was a mystery. Weeks would go by and every day, more and more people started to come around to Sasuke. She was loved by practically everybody. On the other side of the coin, Naruto was on his own. He had told Shikamaru the same thing he told Sasuke and he understood why Naruto would request this. He told Naruto that he viewed him as a friend no matter what, and should he ever need it, he's there, no matter how troublesome it might be. That had made Naruto laugh a bit and they shook hands. Naruto did make a request that he'd help make sure Sasuke be okay, he had training he wanted to do, and with her having more and more friends now, she may want to go hang out with them. He wouldn't be able to watch over her all the time. Naruto did something that puzzled Shikamaru, he lifted up his hand and waited patiently. Suddenly a crow flew onto it and stayed there perched on his hand. If something ever happens or you need me, leave a message on the crow. It will come to me and I'll come help you. So you can control crows. More like work with them. But in a sense I guess you could say that. Troublesome. All right Naruto. I'll help you in this. Thank you. 
Naruto then disappeared from sight and all Shikamaru saw was a blur. That greatly shocked him and made him wonder even more about Naruto. Just what more are you hiding Naruto? If only he knew the extent of his secrets and ability. A couple months would go by and Naruto's birthday came. He had a bad feeling about the day but decided to just go about it as normal as possible. Happy birthday Naru. Sasuke said jumping onto Naruto the moment he had exited his room. Haha thank you Sasuke-chan. I'm surprised you woke up before me, it is really early you know. Yeah, she said with a fake pout. You'll have to make it up to me for doing this. Isn't it my birthday though? Naruto said every amused. Yes yes, but that doesn't give an excuse for my having to get out of bed this early. What did you have in mind well? Naruto knew he wouldn't outwit her in this situation and just gave in. She smiled and giggled hugging him from being on his back. She rested her head down on his shoulder and spoke, you'll allow me to help you celebrate it today. Oh. Is that all? You're particularly lenient today. Don't tempt me Naru. Okay okay. What did you want to do? Naruto said laughing. He had carried her to the couch and they sat down. He went into the kitchen and grabbed some juice for her. Well, maybe we could go eat somewhere, wherever you'd like, I know you're friends with Shikamaru so I'm sure he'd come. Is there anyone else you'd like? I don't really care. You could bring some of your friends if you like. It's not my birthday, it's yours. Not my place to bring friends. She said. Fine fine. I'll send a message to Gigi. He'll handle the plan. Just gonna push the preparations onto the poor old Hokage eh? She laughed. Yep. She stopped laughing and looked at him before laughing more. Only Naruto could so casually increase the Hokage's load without a sense of worry. Naruto began making breakfast and was teaching her on how to cook some things since she hadn't really learned to cook. Since she was up, might as well learn something, at least that was her thought process. It made her smile since Naruto seemed happier than he had been for a while. She really missed this side of him and couldn't help but get teary-eyed due to this. The last time he seemed as happy was before the massacre and before the death of Shisui. Ever since then he hadn't been the same. She was still really sad about the massacre but having her friends and having Naruto really helped her alleviate the pain. That is also what worried her about Naruto, he always just bottled his emotions and buried it, never dealt with it. She wondered how much he could take and when his breaking point would be reached. It scared her thinking about it, with what she knew of his abilities, he'd be a force not to be trifled with. Not even she knew the full extent of his abilities since she no longer trained as hard as him and he didn't always train in her presence. She was still training and keeping her skills sharp, but due to the academy and her friends, she only trained a few days of the weekend for a few hours. Naruto still trained daily since he hardly slept still and she just had to accept that. He still always helped her in her techniques when asked. She began wondering when she'd awaken her own Sharingan. That was something the clan held in high regard and the clan didn't consider an Uchiha and Uchiha until they awakened their beloved Keke Jenke. The fireball jutsu was just the first step, the true defining decision was based on the Sharingan. It disappointed her to still not awaken it. Don't worry about it Sasuke-chan. It'll come soon. Just be patient. How did you? We've known each other a while now. I can tell that it bothers you not to have it yet. But remember I'm an exception with the Sharingan, nobody awakens it when I did. Normally they're genin when they awaken it, so just be patient. I know you'll awaken it one day soon. She smiled to hear him believing in her and not look down on her for her lack of the Sharingan. Normally one would be disappointed in her, but Naruto had a point. To awaken the Sharingan, one usually was already genin and had to have developed a decent sized reserve of chakra. They were heading to the academy when Naruto was noticing the even more intense glares. They looked ready to kill him right then and there. Just what the hell was their problem? You demon, better not be trying to corrupt Sasuki Uchiha. What? Demon. I am no such thing. Uchiha go before he kills you. This man was really confusing her. Why did he call Naruto a demon? Why would he think that he'd corrupt her, let alone kill her? A woman pulled her from her thoughts when she grabbed her and started pulling her away. She noticed that more people gathered in the street and blocked where Naruto was headed. They were in a semi-circle around him and looked as though they were a predator ready to pounce on their prey. Naruto saw her be grabbed and pulled, S-A-S-U-K-I. He tried to reach and grab her hand but missed. He was scared they may try to hurt her. He couldn't take the thought. 
he couldn't take the potential chance of her being hurt. His eyes became red with a black slit, his whisker marks blackened and became more pronounced. His hair became more feral and messier. You will let her go. Or you'll die. Naruto's voice was dark and demonic sounding. The aura he gave off was terrifying and felt powerful beyond measure. Sasuke never seen him like this, never heard his voice like that. She was scared. Dot not for herself as she knew he'd never hurt her but for everyone around her. She didn't know what to do. She froze. The woman began to try to back away still holding onto Sasuke, the men that had gathered around Naruto lunged at him. In the same instant they dropped to the ground. Blood gushed from their throats and Naruto wasn't in sight. Then Sasuke turned around when she heard the sound of someone falling behind her. She saw the woman on her knees with a fist through her back and through her heart exiting her chest. Naruto pulled his arm back and suddenly they were surrounded by Anbu. Naruto had blood all on his arm and held a bloody kanai. He looked at Sasuke who had tears in her eyes at seeing what Naruto just do. He just killed 11 people and didn't seem anything like himself. The Anbu were nervous, they were worried that the Kyuubi finally gained control. They didn't know what to do, should they kill him, if the Kyuubi gained control then what could it do through Naruto's body? Was Naruto still alive within his mind? They knew that the Hokage really cared for the boy, they did as well, the Anbu are loyal to the Hokage and as such they knew of Naruto and his heritage. They served under Minato and now were hesitating. Something that Anbu don't do. Naruto. Sasuke asked wondering if he was in there. Naruto's eyes looked all around, they were surrounded, but he felt no ill will. As such his eyes and features reverted back to normal. Finally everything came back to him and he looked at his hands shaking. He dropped to his knees crying. He just killed these people. Dot the first time he killed a person and they were civilians, he was a monster. Dot the demon they called him. All he had known was that his anger had peaked far higher than ever before when he saw someone taking Sasuke away. He couldn't control himself. He lashed out and killed everyone that had tried to do something. Eleven people, dead in an instant by his own doing. No matter how much he trained and knew that one day in the line of duty he'd have to take a life, that didn't ever make one truly prepared for when it comes. Naruto had just killed eleven non-shinobi people and was in shock and saddened at what he'd done. Sasuke tried to go to him but was stopped by none other than the Hokage. Sandame sama the Anbu all said in unison. Everyone could tell that Naruto was now back to normal and pained by what he'd just done. I'll take him to my office. Cat, go get Kakashi. Hi. They all bowed and left. The cat-masked Anbu with purple hair remained for a second looking at Naruto before leaving. It was Yugao and she couldn't help but feel bad for him. She wasn't around much anymore as she dove head on into her work after the news of Shisui. She really had strong feelings for him that were never displayed. Same was said for him. She cared about Naruto and felt bad that she had sort of left him alone, she'd have to change that now more than ever. She then left to retrieve Kakashi. What do I do? Sasuke was crying. Her best friend was in pain and she saw just how much he bottled up as he now he had been pushed to the edge. She knew he didn't mean for it to happen but seeing her getting taken away must have been too much for him. Go to the academy and act as nothing happened. You won't speak of this event to anyone. You can come by the office after you finish the day at the academy. He placed a hand on her shoulder and she nodded. He knew that the two care deeply for each other. Don't worry about him, I'll take care of him today. She then turned to walk away but gave one more look to Naruto. Why couldn't he ever just stay happy? It seemed that every time he ever showed happiness, tragedy always struck and took it away from him. Today had started so good and she felt that maybe things would be looking up, yet again it seemed that it wouldn't be. A tear escaped her eyes as she slumped her shoulders and looked down. She hated the thought that Naruto may never get to truly be happy again. Why him? He didn't deserve the seemingly never-ending suffering he had. Hokage office. How is he? Kakashi had came quickly. The only time he was never late was when it involved Naruto. He's sleeping now but the first kill is always the hardest. Given the circumstances that led to it, he'll be shaken up. Especially when he thinks about the fact that they weren't shinobi. What are we supposed to Sandame sama At every turn he is met with more and more tragedy. All we can do is hope he can stay strong. I feel that so long as Sasuke is okay, he can. I only fear for if she isn't. Kakashi nodded. He knew Naruto cared for her even deeper than he or himself even. Naruto would rather die than her be harmed. 
Naruto didn't understand his feelings but Kakashi knew that it was that of love. Love intensified by the Sharingan, multiplied by the Mangekyo. She was his light in his darkness. The two have endured so much as it is. They're lucky to have each other. Kakashi said as he overlooked the sleeping Naruto. That they are. Here is an agreed and that may be the only thing that Naruto had going for him. Naruto would always have Kakashi, here is an and Yugao but it was nothing compared to having Sasuke with him. Academy. Uruka was taking the attendance and so far everyone had been present as usual. At the very bottom was Naruto. He called out his name, no answer. A second then subsequent third time with no answer. Looking up he saw that he wasn't there. Where's Naruto? Anyone know? Sasuke got saddened but tried not to show it. Hokage-sama is with him, sensei. Shikamaru raised an eyebrow and noticed that was hiding more and that there was more to it than just that. The other students didn't believe it. They all saw Naruto as useless and stupid since he never paid attention. They figured that was because he couldn't understand and since he didn't pay attention he'd have no intellect. At least that's what they thought. Other than that, their parents told them to stay away from him, with exception to Shikamaru, Ino and a few others. Man I bet that moron is just ditching. No way Hokage-sama would waste his time with that fool. Kiba shouted arrogantly. He didn't hate Naruto but always wanted to feel like he was the best, the alpha. He was friends with Sasuke and half the time he was just saying stuff just for saying it sake. Exactly, loser like that would never have the attention of our beloved Hokage. A random student said. You guys are morons. Shikamaru said under his breath. What was that, lazy ass? Kiba shouted. Troublesome. Enough. It doesn't matter that he's not here. Don't think much of it. We'll go on regardless, with or without him. Uruka said the last word with so much disgust that it showed how much he seemed to hate the kid. Some students smiled at their sensei's disgust as it was funny to them. To Sasuke it hurt her, Shikamaru was angered a bit as his friend was being treated that way but there was nothing he could do. Ino rubbed Sasuke's shoulder. She didn't have a bad nor good opinion of Naruto, she didn't know him personally. Only that he always looked after Sasuke, she actually found it cute. She knew that the two were close though and having the sensei and class openly display their disgust of him must hurt quite a bit. The day was boring and long but she was glad it was over. She went over to Shikamaru. Hey, I know you're like Naruto's only friend. He holds you in high regard. Yes he's a good friend and I'm flattered that he thinks such a way. I wish he'd be more open however. I feel that the reasons are troublesome though. Shikamaru said sighing. Well I'm headed to the Hokage office since Naruto has been there, want to come. It is his birthday after all. This morning he agreed that he'd like to have you. Sure. It'll get me away from my mom for a while. Shikamaru said glad to be able to be away for a bit. His mom could be scary and he didn't want to have to deal with anything. Hokage office. Naruto awoke and was groggy a bit. He noticed he where he was and saw Hiruzen, Kakashi and Yugao in the room. He smiled at seeing their faces but then remembered what he'd done. Tears formed his eyes. I'm a monster. I'm the demon they said I was. No Naruto-kun, you defended yourself and protected Sasuke. Hiruzen was trying to reassure the boy he saw as a grandson. You'll always be Naruto Uchiha, nothing else. You are family and we will always look at you the same. Kakashi said resting a hand on Naruto's shoulder. You're still always going to be that little goofy brat I had to look after. Yugao said with a smile. I know I hadn't been around much, I'm sorry about that. I have just been grieving. Naruto didn't speak, instead hugged them all while crying. It is your birthday, how about we go get something to eat? Sasuke and Shikamaru should be here soon. Hiruzen said. Naruto smiled on hearing that, especially Sasuke's name. Today Naruto turned 7 and it was his second third birthday where something bad happened. First when he turned 4 he was attacked and awakened the Sharingan, then at 6 learned that his only family died, now at 7 killed 11 people. The thing he didn't tell anyone was that some part of him, actually felt good to kill them, that voice was right, with them dead, they'll never look at him that way, they'll never try to attack him, they'll never try to take Sasuke away from him again. They're dead and the problem gone. He wasn't sure how he felt about that thought. On one hand he felt good for the fact that it would be over, on the other he just killed them and they probably had their own families, their own friends and he just took them away from them forever. Was it wrong to feel good about what he did? He didn't know. 
all he could say is that they'll never get to Sasuke again. The sad thing is, that woman didn't take her in trying to hurt her or Naruto. In truth she saw what was happening and was just trying to get Sasuke away from the crowd in danger. Naruto didn't know that, Sasuke didn't either. Naruto just feared the worst when he heard the men and his anger took control of him. They all talked and caught up. They were curious on how much Naruto developed his skills since last but he wanted to keep some things secret. Such as how he can now perform the last genjutsu that Shisui gave him being the, bringer of darkness, and also now almost mastered the three fire jutsus that Kakashi gave him being the, dragon flame bomb, great dragon flame, and the, fire breath. His ability to make afterimage clones is also not known yet but they did learn that he can now use it in fights like Shisui. They were surprised when he said he could do the, great fireball, phoenix flower, jutsus without signs. Naruto didn't say it but Kakashi knew Naruto could do the, demonic illusion, hell viewing technique, without contact. That was a very rare feat to have a jutsu be done signless. Naruto was a truly talented prospect. Having such an arsenal at only age 7. Based on skills he'd easily be chunin but lack the experience. He hasn't shown leadership, however he has done great at training Sasuke and Kenjutsu. Naruto was developing into a fine shinobi. If they can help control his anger then he'd be unstoppable. The door suddenly shot opened and before anything Naruto was engulfed in a bone-crushing hug from Sasuke. The three just smiled and knew things would be okay as long as she was around for him. They were surprised when Shikamaru lazily walked in a little after her. Are you okay? Sasuke whispered. Naruto just held her and nodded but she knew otherwise. She'd talk to him later on at home. For now they were going to try to celebrate. So what kept you busy today Naruto? Shikamaru said which brought the two out of the hug. We were discussing some leaking pipes in his house. Hiruzen quickly said. Shikamaru laughed because it sounded like such a dumb excuse but he found it too troublesome to inquire more on what really happened. For the most part everything went on fine. They had a good dinner at Ichiraku's and they all talked as though everything was perfectly fine. Kakashi was studying Naruto discreetly the whole time and was trying to see how he was truly feeling. He was troubled when he felt like a part of Naruto enjoyed what he'd done but he thought he was just imagining things and left that thought behind. Naruto and Sasuke finally returned but stopped for some dango on the way back for a nice treat. Naruto looked at her eyeing the sweets and, and he couldn't help but laugh. It was times like that, that he wished would be forever. None of the big things, nothing special, just her little quirks made him brighten up. You know you can get some right, dot and eat it, dot not just look at right. Naruto said chuckling although he would have liked to keep watching the sight, her little pouts were just too funny. Oh shut up. They got home and when he shut the door, the mood changed and he knew why. He didn't turn around just looked at the door. He sighed and decided to speak first. You're scared of me, aren't you? Naruto's voice was shaky. She was his light but today he displayed a side that he didn't even know he had. Thoughts yes but to be able to do that was something he didn't expect. I understand if you wish to leave. Naru, you're such a lovable dummy. You know that. She hugged him from behind him which made him start to cry. No. I swore to never cry in front of you again, to never show sadness. I won't cry now. Naruto. I know you train all night. I know you still cry. I saw two weeks before we started the academy. I didn't say anything hoping that you would just talk to me sometime. She was pressing her cheek to his back and when she said that, he held her hands that were at his stomach. I just wanted to be strong for you. His voice breaking as it was getting harder and harder to contain his emotions. It is not weakness to show how you feel, silly. One would even say it takes courage to express your feelings since it makes one vulnerable to another. He slowly turned around and embraced her in a hug. I don't know exactly how to express my feelings but I know for certain that I care about you more than anything. If you want me to talk to you about what has been bothering me, then I'll need some time. I'm just not ready yet. She smiled in his chest, the dark feeling he gave off earlier that day was gone and was instead giving off such a warm and safe feeling. I care about you too Naru. No I am always here for you, always by your side. Just like you are for me. So when you're ready, you can tell me at any time. Four years later. This was the year leading up to the final year in the academy. The class was mostly 11 while Naruto was 10 since his birthday was later on in the year. This year they spent drilling hard on Shurikenjutsu. No longer were they spending every single day just reading and learning history. 
now was the practical training and developing of their shinobi skills. Naruto and Sasuke were at the top of the class and dominated everybody in everything. Well, aside from one. Naruto learned that for some odd reason, he could not perform the most basic of clones. Sasuke teased him a lot on it but regretted it when they sparred that night. The rest of the class clowned him on it as now they had something over him. It was weird how that worked out, he could decimate them in any field yet because on little issue, they view him weak. How does that work? Naruto's secluded ways remained, he and Shikamaru got closer, they even befriended another person who secluded themselves, that being Shino Abarame. Shino's bugs reacted odd to Naruto, it seemed he had something different about him but never questioned him. Choji was friends with Shikamaru for a long time so he had finally chosen to introduce him to Naruto. They all were friends in private but in public you'd never know that they had been friends with Naruto. Sasuke and Naruto were closer than ever as she slowly started learning of Naruto's darkness but was never deterred from him. He honestly felt better by releasing his pain slightly but it wasn't easy for him to do. He still hesitated when doing so even though her support was unwavering. Naruto mastered all his jutsu and now could do them all without issue. He was always trying to improve his teleportation jutsu so he can manifest more clones out of it. It was becoming his favorite technique as it was effective and didn't cost much chakra compared to his other techniques. He only showed Sasuke the full extent of his abilities. The Hokage, Kakashi, and Yugao knew he was skilled but didn't know just how mastered he was of all the techniques. Only that he is always working. Haruka actually laxed a lot more towards Naruto a couple years ago and that was surprising to everyone. No longer would he openly hate him. Flashback. Haruka, said Hiruzen. Yes Lord Third. Why do you display so much hatred towards Naruto-kun? Lord Third. He's the. QB. No. He is not. He and the QB are not one in the same. They are two different beings. One a human boy, the other a tailed beast. They are brought together through a seal but that is all. They aren't the same. I know that you lost your parents to the QB, what if I told you, so did he. What do you mean? He once had a family. But they died to the QB. In a way he's very much like you, except he's never known the love of a mother, of a father. You think him a problem but have you ever thought about how he may feel? He puts on a strong face and pretends everything is fine, do you think he really actually would feel fine based on how you and everyone else treats him? No. He wouldn't. That kind of loneliness and sadness. Dot you know something. He has to sacrifice being with his friends and the one person left that he cares about just so that they don't have to suffer how he suffers. So they won't be hated or seen as he is, he chooses to seclude himself and not build bonds in fear that those bonds would be attacked as he's been attacked. Hated as he's been hated. You know how much sacrifice that poor little kid has had to do at such a young age where he should be playing and having fun. Yet all he gets is hate, being attacked and forced to be in seclusion for the sake of others. Haruka looked down ashamed of his actions. Where did he go wrong? All he ever wanted was to be a teacher to help mold the future of Konoha and here he was, destroying a potential flame that would help protect the village he loves. I can't believe what I've done. Sandame Sama I'm so sorry. I failed as a teacher and went back on what I truly wanted to do, lost sight of the goal I always had to mold the future for Konoha. You still can. You just need to keep an open mind. You said there was only one he cared for. Yes. Sasuke Uchiha. They don't even talk to each other what do, right? I forgot what you had said. I promise, from here on out, I will be better and will lead these children into becoming great shinobi for the village. Hiruzen smiled seeing that his talk helped and that Aruka would believe in his old belief once more and no longer blindly hate Naruto. Flashback end. Sasuke's popularity was immense and many of the boys tried asking her out. All of which got denied. Shikamaru laughed internally as he knew who would be the one to win her over although it was already won, even if the two didn't exactly know it yet. He wondered when the hell they'd realize it themselves and admit it. Sakura's confidence grew and she no longer was a shy girl who relied heavily on Ino. They were still best friends and really smart, only surpassed by Sasuke as far as the girls went. Shikamaru was the smartest with Naruto behind him for the boys, then in total it was Shikamaru then Naruto then Sasuke as far as test scores went. Since they just started in the physical training they had yet to spar against each other and was still practicing form in taijutsu. They would begin spars the following year where they'd spar three times a week. Kiba boasted constantly, 
both on how he'd win over Sasuke, and that he'd be the best fighter. Sakura was nervous for when the sparring would begin. Ino was semi-confident. Shikamaru found it troublesome. Shino was impassive on the prospect. Choji just wondered if he'll have to start taking more snacks since he'd expend more energy now. Hanada also got nervous. Sasuke was excited to finally start the sparring but really hated how Kiba acted and wished he'd stop. She wanted to prove Naruto's belief in her right and not let him down. She also felt some sort of way towards Naruto lately that she didn't know why but there was something. Naruto was worried that he might go too far if provoked. Nonetheless he knew that none of them could beat him. Maybe if Hanada wasn't so timid and had been like any other Hayuga, she'd be a harder fight since the clan was fast and experts in Taijutsu. His only rival in Taijutsu amongst the class is Sasuke and he began to feel something weird towards her, something he didn't quite know how to explain or what it really meant but he knew there was something there towards her as well but didn't know she felt the same. One thing was for certain, Naruto and Shikamaru both knew how the rankings would go. Naruto at the top with Sasuke following. Shikamaru would beast just because he wouldn't try. He had the smarts to figure out a way to beat just about anybody except Naruto since there just wouldn't be a chance in straight up taijutsu. He could find a strategy against Sasuke but it wouldn't be guaranteed that he'd be able to pull out a win still so he would most likely be third if he truly tried. The other's position didn't really matter since it didn't bother them nor would it really be surprising. Since Sakura would also be at the bottom with Ino on top of her then Hinata above her but then again, everything could be wrong. Shikamaru doubted that though. Based on what he's seen and what he knows, nothing would drastically change the rankings he had in mind. Unless Hinata got over her timidity, then things would change. That was a long shot however. Naruto woke up to a commotion in the kitchen and grabbed his tanto and quietly walked the halls to find the perpetrator. He saw the light on in the kitchen and living room but as far as he could tell, nothing looked out of place. What kind of burglars were they? Huh. Sasuke-chan. Naruto said as he saw who was in the kitchen. Whoops. You hear me drop the pan. She then turned to see him. He hadn't put on a shirt and was only wearing his sweats. For the first time she saw him that way and was shocked. He had some abs and was slightly toned. When he got older the and his body developed then so would his muscle. Then she noticed he was holding the tanto. Oh. Dot you thought I was. Ha ha. Well um. Dot you. Uh. What is it? He wondered what was bothering her aside the tanto since she was just staring at him. Then he noticed he wasn't in a shirt. Oh. Ah. Uh. He just shined to his room to throw on his sleeveless black sweater. Sasuke giggled with a blush as she just stood there. It was amusing to see his reaction to her in the kitchen then the view she got. She didn't know what it was about seeing him shirtless that made her all giggly and blush a lot. Naruto came back into the kitchen a bit embarrassed and settled with just asking what she was doing. Well, I had a plan. Kind of ruined it since I'm not as well versed in the kitchen as you. She pouted playfully. Oh. My Sasuke-chan, try to do some cooking. He said teasing and hugging her from behind her. She knew he was teasing her since she got playful first but something about being called his, and having seen him shirtless on top of this hug. Dot she was blushing redder than a tomato. Never has he hugged her this way and she actually really liked it. Seemed that today was a day of firsts for real. So, what was this plan of yours? Hmm. Naruto placed his chin down onto her shoulder which she responded by leaning her head against his so their cheeks connected and raised her right hand to the right side of his head rubbing her fingers through his hair and had her left hand on his arms around her stomach. She sighed in bliss of the warmth he gave off and being held by him. I wanted to make you breakfast for the first time, especially since it's your birthday, Naru. He didn't say it but he really liked her fingers running and playing with his hair as well as just holding her in his arms. For both of them, something just felt right but they didn't know what they something was. Oh I see. I really appreciate it, Sasuke-chan. He hugged tighter and rocked her side to side slowly. They stood there together for 10 minutes and didn't even realize it. They'd just been lost in each other that the passing of time hadn't clicked. He slowly let her go but the both at the same time sighed in disappointment that their embrace had ended. They simultaneously blushed as they realized that the other noticed their disappointment in it ending and then blushed even more on realizing that the other had been disappointed and it wasn't only one way. Um. Naru. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't either. They just stood there a bit in silence thinking about what happened what it could mean but were drawing blanks. You know. Hey never mind. No wait. What is it? 
Sasuke said desperately hoping it was something but didn't know quite what. Well, it's just that, well him. Dot how do I say this? You're my best friend Sasuke-chan. And you're mine too. Yeah and like, well, what if? What if what? Sasuke and Naruto subconsciously stepped closer together. They looked each other in the eye. What if we were, more? Yes. Absolutely yes. A thousand times yes. She jumped up into his arms and they enveloped each other in a hug again. They were smiling so wide and were both so happy. They were both lost in each other and nothing else mattered to them. Today really would be a day of firsts. Their first breakfast is a couple, his first birthday is a couple, and so on. So where did you get the idea of cooking for me? Naruto said laughing as they were still hugging. Because you always cook eggs and bacon for breakfast and made me pancakes with a side of dango for my birthday. Naruto laughed but she backed off then lunged him in the chest only to then get back in the hug. Naruto got confused by here changes in action but didn't mind much as he was happy at the moment. Don't make fun of me, she pouted after hitting him. Hey I found it cute okay. But as much as I like this right now, if we just stay here, we're going to be late. Academy. So students, we've had you guys practice form for a while now, now we're going to start the spars. Everyone got excited and prepared themselves for the matchups on who'd get who. Whenever Naruto or Sasuke's eyes met, they'd have blush lightly. Shikamaru noticed. So, some things happened between them. Did they finally admit it? About damn time, troublesome. First matchup is will be Shikamaru and Choji. Troublesome. Shikamaru muttered before going to the ring. Shikamaru versus Choji. The two stood apart from each other and got in a stance to fight. Choji was bigger and had the strength while Shikamaru was smaller and more nimble. It would be an interesting pairing. If Shikamaru wasn't so lazy. Upon the announcement of the match's start, he simply walked out of the ring which was an automatic loss since the goal was either knockout, or force the other out the ring, well he left the ring. Naruto laughed internally at that and gave Shikamaru a look that expressed what he thought. Shikamaru gave a knowing look back which told Naruto that it was just too troublesome. Ino vs Sakura. Ino and Sakura both got ready for the match to begin. Neither one were great fighters but were going to try their best. The match was signaled to begin and they both ran to each other. Damn they're slow. Naruto thought as he watched. Sakura was winding up a wide punch and it would be so easy to block or even counter and force her to the ground but Ino didn't seem to react quick enough and took it to the face. Ino winded up the same punch and hit her the same way. Both jumped away. Damn, you're fast. Sakura said. Crowd. H-U-H. Naruto said. Everyone around him laughed as they also agreed with his stupor. In no means was it a high-level fight but everybody knew they were the weakest of the class in taijutsu. Sasuke giggled the most as she was glad to see Naruto's spirits being better and that he seemed to get a laugh out of the whole class. Even if it was intentional. Ino vs Sakura. Yeah, you're strong. Ino said in response to Sakura. Naruto couldn't take it. That was it, he walked around mumbling something and the class again laughed. The two girls charged each other again this time both a had a punch wound up and they hit each other at the same time. They started trying to hit each other but neither one blocked or dodged. They just stood there playing a game of punchies practically. They backed off panting heavily, eyeing the other. They saw the other as a formidable foe and were trying to figure out what to do. Finally a plan was formed. They ran to each other and dove to each other's right side hoping to tackle the other but since they aimed for the right side of the other, they both missed and both landed outside the ring. The match ended in a draw. Alright, it's a draw. Next is Kiba vs Naruto. Please enter the ring, Uruka said. Naruto vs Kiba. Man when I beat your ass, two things will happen. 1. Everyone will know that I am the best. 2. Sasuke will go on a date with me. Kiba boasted out loud. Man. Just shut up already. Naruto said. What are you so mad about huh? What you think you've actually got a chance against me? If only you knew the truth of my strength. Naruto thought. You think she'll ever see you, fool. I am the alpha here. She'll be with me. I am the strongest and you will never beat me. Naruto started to really, really get annoyed. On and on he went about being the strongest. How he'd win Sasuke over. It began to piss him off the more he went on. Crowd. Kiba might want to mind his tongue. Shikamaru said. What do you mean? Naru-kun looks calm. Sasuke said as she was next to Shikamaru. Naru-kun, huh? 
he said with a smile. I mean Naruto. It's okay. I've been wondering how long it'd take the two of you, however now Kiba might want to mind his tongue even more then. Why so? Because, say anything about Naruto, he's okay. But he's always been protective of you. He starts blabbering about you then Naruto might get angered. And since you guys are a thing now. Oh, this might not end well for Kiba. Nope, troublesome. Naruto versus Kiba. So the sooner you lose, the sooner I can take Sasuke. Kiba said charging at Naruto. He swung but Naruto had been looking down so he figured it would be easy. Naruto dodged with extreme ease. When he passed Naruto, the air felt so cold. He felt something dark emanating from him. He turned around and Naruto slowly looked up at him. His eyes red with a black slit, his whisker marks more pronounced. You look surprised. I thought you were gonna kick my ass. Naruto said in a dark voice. Kiba tried again but missed. He used his momentum to try a spinning kick but missed again. Come on now. I thought you were the best. What happened? Kiba tried more and more. He couldn't land a single strike. Crowd. Naru, no. Sasuke said. What's happened to him? Shikamaru asked. I don't know what it is exactly but he's told me that there's something inside him that feeds off his negative emotions like anger and sadness and tries manipulating him through it. This is the result. His demeanor changes and he'll get aggressive and ruthless. You've seen it before. Once. Point one one people ended up dead when it happened. What? He was attacked and one person grabbed me. When he saw that, he lost it and killed them. Please don't think him in a different way now. He suffers all the time and never can be happy. I hate it. Every time he starts to be happy, something always gets in the way. She said with tears forming in her eyes. I won't. He's my friend and I will support him any way I can. He's always supported me and he's a good guy. No matter how troublesome he is. Sasuke giggled. Yeah, he is. Wait. Kiba's gonna die. No I trust Naru-kun. Naruto versus Kiba. Naruto looked onto Kiba who was on the ground after falling with disgust and disappointment. This was the performance he put up after boasting for so long. You aren't strong Kiba. You're weak. Pathetic. Shut up. Kiba growled. He got up to try to punch Naruto, but didn't get the chance he was hit real hard in the gut. He recoiled and clutched his stomach to then be kicked in the face. Kiba got spun around due to that and Naruto kicked the inside of his knee and making him fall to his knees. Look at that, that wannabe bowing before me. You're nothing but a pup. Naruto gave a hard right punch and knocked Kiba out cold. Everyone looked on in shock. What just happened? This was the kid that always kept to himself, the one that was always clowned on, then again they were always warned of him. They looked at him in fear at his new appearance, the eyes petrified most, and his voice caused many to cower in fear. Naruto you better calm down. Or what? You'll send your hateful glares at me again. You'll despise my existence again. What the hell are you going to do, No, what? I know what I'm going to do. Naruto clenched his fists and red chakra started to bubble of his hand, then took shape of a kanai. He began taking steps towards Aruka who was in so much fear at the killing intent being released from Naruto. Suddenly a hand was placed on Naruto's shoulder and he snapped around quickly to see who dared stop him, it was Sasuke. Naru-kun. That's enough. This isn't you. Sasuke said calmly in a soothing voice. She placed her right hand on his cheek and he closes his eyes as she rubbed the whisker marks with her thumb. He leaned into her hand and placed his own hand over hers. The kanai made of chakra slowly disappeared, the air no longer felt cold and his whisker marks became less pronounced until they went back to normal. He opened his eyes again to show that they were normal. There you are. She said smiling at him. Lord Third was right, he can tame him. Kakashi said as he was watching from the distance. He had been tasked to watch over Naruto especially now since the academy would start the fighting and that could lead to exactly what just happened. Kakashi shunshined to the ring and before anyone could say or do anything, grabbed Naruto and Sasuke and shunshined away. Sensei, what do we do now? Asked a student. Hokage office. Kakashi told Hiruzen of what happened and Naruto and Sasuke just stood behind Kakashi. Sasuke was holding onto Naruto's right arm while they waited. Kakashi then stepped aside presenting the two. Well Naruto, you've done well not to cause an incident in a few years. Dot you also seem to have a more control this time as you didn't kill the Inazuka. Until you were met with Aruka. I understand the anger you had for him and I see why you steered out of control. I'm proud that you've shown growth Naruto-kun. 
I feel that if Aruka not said anything then you would have calmed and went to normal. You just heard the wrong voice at the wrong time. Naruto nodded and was glad that he wasn't in some kind of trouble. Sasuke seemed to be relieved as well as she seemed to relax more and not hold him so vigorously. Sasuke, I'm proud that you stepped forward and managed to help calm Naruto-kun before he did anything he would regret. Hiruzen said with a smile. Thank you. Dot but it's nothing. I know he didn't mean to have that happen, he just needs to be reminded of who he is sometimes. She said with a light chuckle. Well, after today you two will no longer be in the academy. Huh. Naruto said. What? Sasuke said. Hiruzen laughed. Let me finish. You two are here by Genin. You've got the skills and knowledge for it. But you won't be doing any missions until the rest of the class graduates so you can get one more to have a team of three. Both of them sighed in relief which made both Kakashi and Hiruzen laugh. Kakashi will be your Jonin sensei. With that they were now Genin and given their leaf village headbands and made shinobi of Konoha. A figure could be seen kneeling before a grave in the Konoha cemetery. He was Naruto and was wearing his usual clothing, although now he wore black pants rather than having shorts on. In front of him was a headstone that had Shisui's name on it. Nisan, I'm a shinobi now. Naruto held the headband in his hand as if to present it to someone. I know I haven't visited but, it's been hard without you. But now I have Sasuke-chan and things always feel better when she's around. Kakashi Ojisan is to be our sensei. In a year we'll officially form Team 7 once the others graduate. I just wanted to update you. I miss you, Nisan. Naruto looked on solemnly for a little bit before taking a deep breath. He clenched his black headband tightly then put it on his forehead and tightened, proudly displaying the leaf symbol that was emblazoned on the silver plate. His eyes activated the Sharingan with the three Tomo spinning. I will make you proud, Nisan. He stood up bowed before Shisui's headstone and then turned away to leave. He was made Genin just a couple days ago and felt that it was finally time he came to visit. It was really early in the morning and barely anyone was up at this time. Naruto exited the cemetery calmly and respectfully but when he exited the gate, he began running. Every morning he'd run and train a bit before preparing breakfast. Now that he was no longer at the academy, there was more time to train or study whatever he'd like now. Maybe I could look into that book on Fuenjutsu theory that Ojisan gave me a few years ago. Naruto really loved learning new things and especially new techniques. It made him happy to master more and more things, no matter what it was. He still was shaken up about the outburst at the academy, but part of him felt so good about putting that dude in his place. He always found Kiba's antics annoying and even more so, his liking to Sasuke. It aggravated that he would constantly bug her even though she said many times that she wasn't interested. No matter, he and her no longer were in the academy so there was no point to linger on those thoughts. It was time to move forward and continue pushing himself further. Naturally, Sasuke also had more time to train and she would begin learning some more ninjutsu with Naruto, namely the, Phoenix Flower Jutsu. There had to be more though, maybe he'd go to Kakashi about seeing if there is any other affinities he could train with. To only specialize in one field could actually become a handicap. To specialize in something is good, but there is downsides to over-specialization. Hokage office. So you're interested in putting him into your Anbu ranks. Hi, Sandame sama not many posse such talent at such young age. We will wait until he begins missions and becomes Chunin, but I have interest in bringing him in. Commander Wolf, is it wise? The wolf-masked Anbu commander looked up at Hiruzen. Hi, he has talent and the skills. Only lacks the experience. I know the issue, but we can take care of that. As you know a large number of us know Fuenjutsu. Hiruzen nodded. Very well, once he becomes Chunin, you can give him your proposal. However it'll be a year before he embarks on missions. I have a request about that, Sandame sama What is it? Could you skip the D ranks? Give C rank at a minimum. I know Captain Hitaki will be the Jonin leader of the squad. He alone is capable, I know the risk but it is necessary. We must test his abilities. On paper there should be no issue. We want to see it in action. Hiruzen contemplated this. Kakashi was indeed an extremely capable shinobi and the strongest of the Jonin. He could handle S ranks alone if need be. Plus two of his squad members are already Chunin level based on skills just not experience. Very well. I'll oblige to this, commander. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Neither do I. Do me a favor, summon Kakashi. 
I'd like to let him know and I'm sure he'll help in grooming your new prospect in preparation for Anbu. Hi. Three hours later. Kakashi was walking down the street trying to think about the news he'd gotten. A new Anbu prospect. Naruto already had a darkness in him. Then again, that would help him during his duties. He had a responsibility now and he'd have to prepare him for if he chose to join the Anbu. A part of him would be proud, but at the same time, it was a hard and dangerous job. One that changes you forever. Would Minato be okay with this? Would Shisui approve? Or would they be against the move to Anbu? It might do good for him though, being under Hiruzen's direct command and also being around others that contain a darkness can let him have people to relate to. They could help guide him. Then again, his darkness can and very well may get stronger and he'll lose himself. It's a risk and there's no guarantee of where his life will go. All he can do is support Naruto as much as possible. With his resolve made up, he was going to go tell Naruto of the news. He has to know that the Anbu commander is interested in him as a prospect and that from here on, Kakashi would train him in preparation. It truly is an honor to be considered and even higher to be a member. Being an Anbu has a level of respect, second only to the Hokage. Kakashi rang the doorbell and waited. He knew Naruto would be up so it was odd when there was no answer. He rang it again, then again. Not in a third time until he heard an annoyed Sasuke coming to the door. Naru-kun, why the hell are you waking me this way? Sasuke froze when she saw it wasn't Naruto and instead was Kakashi. She smiled nervously, rubbing the back of her head in embarrassment. So, Naru-kun is it. She blushed, when that happened. His, birthday. Adorable. Well I was wondering if he was here, seems not. Know when he'll be back. Well he normally begins breakfast soon, so any minute. Is something wrong Kakashi-sensei? No. He's been given an extreme honor actually. But, it's also really important and will change things. What do you mean? I'll explain when he gets here. Okay, well can I get you some peach tea, or juice? Hmm. Tea sounds good. She nodded and went to go get the peach tea. She hoped that whatever this is, it won't be too bad. If it really was an honor then what could it be? Why would it change things? What is changing to be exact, they only just started to really become closer and having him open up more. Kakashi looked at the photos around the living room and couldn't help but smile. Naruto really has grown up a lot. Looking at the picture of Shisui and himself with a baby Naruto made him feel happy. When Sasuke came back in, Naruto also arrived at the same time and everything seemed to stop. He looked worn out and seeing the two of them made him simultaneously worry that something's happened, but these were also two of the most important people in his life so after a while, he smiled. What's going on here? Naruto said hugging Sasuke and nodding to Kakashi. Kakashi sensei has some news apparently. Oh. We going on a mission today. Naruto said in an excited tone. Haha no, not today. But there is something you must know Naruto. It is a great honor that I tell you that you've gained the interest of the Anbu commander. Sasuke's eyes widened and she looked upwards to see how Naruto would react, she herself didn't know much about the Anbu aside from Itachi's involvement. All he did was look and raise an eyebrow, then what made her worry was his smile that appeared. You can't actually be happy about this, dot are you? It changed my, Naru, don't go. Are you serious Ojasan? Yes. Sandame Sama told me a few hours ago. I am to prepare you and train you for when you can be recruited into the force, should you be interested in joining that is. Right and since you were an Anbu captain, as well as my new Jonin sensei, you are the prime candidate to handle the transition in my development. Exactly. You don't need to give an answer now. Dot you aren't eligible for Anbu until you reach Chunin, but if you are even the slightest interested, I will begin training you in a week. No I'm all in Ojasan. To follow yours and Nisan's footsteps, to become a captain and serve under the direct command of the Hokage would be a tremendous honor and dream, so I'm all in. I wanted to make Nisan proud and I know this would do it. Naru. Are you serious? Just like that. You'll join without a second thought. Yes. Why wouldn't I? It's an important role to the village and. But it's not safe. Nothing about being a shinobi is truly safe, Sasuke-chan. Don't worry, I promise to always come back to you. Okay. She didn't say anything. Only nodded. Kakashi didn't know what to say, he was shocked. That was a far faster answer than he'd expected. 
Maybe Naruto always thought about trying to become an Anbu operative, it would make sense for why he maintained his strict training regimen even after being allowed to leave the house, and after Shisui's death. In a way it sort of made sense but still. Anbu was no joke and he in a matter of seconds made a decision. He was expecting at least some hesitation but no, he just straight up gave an answer. Decision making was an extremely important thing as a leader and shinobi in general, even just in life and if he could find a response this fast in every facet of his duty then he'd be far more effective as an operative, ninja, and leader. Well Naruto. In a week, we begin your new regiment. Good thing for you is that you've got an extremely solid foundation as you've already got quite the arsenal of skills and techniques, now it's time for implementation and honing of them all. If you ever feel that this isn't the path you wish to take, you just gotta tell me. Thank you, Ojasan. Is there anything else? It's not relevant but is there a reason you've got your Sharingan activated? Just trying to get used to having it activated for prolonged periods and want to be able to use it a full day before deactivating, just in case I'm ever in such a situation. I see. Well you two have a good one. See you in a week. Oh, and Sasuke, if you wish to train with us, I'm fine with it, I can teach you some ninjutsu. Hi. Thank you sensei. Sasuke said speaking a little down. Kakashi left and Naruto waved his goodbye. He looked down to see a saddened Sasuke. He hated that she was sad and didn't know what to do. Why are you so sad Sasuke-chan? You don't care about how dangerous this is. I don't want anything to happen to you, I don't want what you may experience to change who you are. It's not like that Sasuke-chan. Look, I don't know if you're going to understand but this is how I see it okay. Naruto lifted her chin up so she would be looking at him. She knew he wasn't good at expressing his thoughts all the time but he was really trying so hard to try to express himself this time and part of her was really happy that he was trying, but the circumstances just sucked. By being in the Anbu, I can undergo missions that can eliminate our enemies and lead to us no longer fighting. I can help pave a way to peace so that you are safe. Maybe even through this, we can accomplish true peace and we can just be happy. Naru. I want that that too. Dot but what of your safety? I don't anything to happen. You're not going to like to hear this but this is the truth. If it meant that you'd be happy and safe, I would gladly die. Naru no. You are under no circumstances allowed to sacrifice yourself in such a way. Why the hell can't you care about Y-O-U-S-E-L-F more? Sasuke began crying and slammed her fist into Naruto's chest as she spoke. Because you are my world. He hugged her, trying to make her feel better but knew that she may never truly accept it. Just hopefully she could become less worried, if that was possible. I sure hope you can understand this one day. Then again, there isn't a guarantee that I get recruited. Dot who knows. The rest of the day, she didn't speak to him. That saddened him but he knew she was just trying to deal with things in her own way. It would be a long week but he was pumped to have a new regiment since it was always the same lately. Unless he was training with Sasuke, everything tended to be the same as far as training went. Given that it is all he really spent his time doing, you could see how after a while there was no longer challenge, so how do you improve? Well for his body, he began training with weight and stuff like that to increase his strength as well as make tasks more challenging. Other than that all he could really do is increase the intensity at which he trained. Chakra control was something he trained daily since his reserves were always growing and he had to stay on top of that. Hokage Office Sandame Sama, I've told Naruto of the potential recruitment to Anbu. At that moment Hiruzen made a signal and Commander Wolf appeared. He was eager to see how his new prospect would respond to the news. You may continue Kakashi. Hiruzen said and Wolf nodded. He is ecstatic of the opportunity and wants to train as soon as possible. Wolf smiled under his mask, he knew talent when he saw it and Naruto had some of the greatest potential he'd ever seen. He wants to follow in mine, and Shisui's footsteps, if only he knew that he'd also be following in his father's. Kakashi said every word in pride. He wasn't an active Anbu but still was a captain within the Anbu Reserve Corps. All Anbu once they enter are Anbu even through death. When you're recruited, graduate training and have the induction ceremony, you're forever an Anbu and a part of that family. Hiruzen despite everything still was worried for Naruto but at the same time, it was his path to choose. If he wanted it, he would only support him. Sandame Sama, if I may, personally I think maybe we should bypass the usual way of having an Anbu prospect. Perhaps we should ship him to training in a month. Whoa. 
Kakashi you can't be serious. He's only 11. Never been in the field. Hiruzen said. Oddly Wolf was silent. It would help in really making Naruto a truly formidable Anbu and with all the training he could get before ever touching the field could be beneficial. An interesting proposition. I am serious. Shisui did tremendous in training him and when I get to train him, he's a sponge. In a month he'll be ready to graduate top of the class in basic training. Are you willing to put that to a wager? Wolf asked finally breaking the silence. Yes. Should Naruto graduate top of the class, I want to be paid the compensation of 3S rank missions. If I fail, I'll take the pay of D ranks for a year. Hem interesting. Sandame Sama what do you think? Well I am in charge yes. Dot but you handle the recruiting and the process of each recruit. You can grant a waiver to let him ship in one month. But if you two sign off on this then there is no going back until he's served the time that he enlists for. At which point he can leave the corps and join the standard ranks and be given the respective rank of his ability. Or he can re-enlist and continue in the corps. The two looked at each other and nodded in agreement. Both wanted to see Naruto enter the Anbu and would help get him to reach his potential. Commander Wolf, have you considered what team you'd place him? Hiruzen asked. R.O. Led now by Tenzo, offers a way to suppress the QB chakra and the team knows enough on Fuenjutsu to assist in it if anything were to happen. Very well. Three and a half weeks later. Naruto stood outside Sasuke's door. She got distant the closer it came to him leaving. They'd thought there'd be more time but apparently due to his complete interest in joining, they granted him early in statement to head for training. He really wanted to talk to her, see her smile again, but he couldn't bring himself to knock. Instead he just shunshined away to clear his mind. Sadness began to become overwhelming because in a way he began to feel alone again. Just what would he have to do to stop the loneliness from creeping back into his life all the time? He was also angry that right now, he was the source of her sadness. Seemed like nothing could ever be simple for the two of them. Anbu duties would only make things harder but he believed that everything would work out. On his last day before leaving for training, Kakashi had came by and told him how proud he was and that he would go far. That if he ever needed to talk or anything, he was there. Especially since he could relate and understood what Naruto would have to deal with. With only three hours before he left, he again was outside Sasuke's door. Not being able to muster up the courage to knock he just turned away. He hadn't known that Sasuke was actually standing against the door, waiting for him to knock. She really wanted him to knock but he didn't and she heard him begin to walk down the hallway. She had to make a choice now, before it was too late. It would be a few months before he graduated and she wouldn't see him at all until the graduation ceremony, then that night he'd leave again for the special induction ceremony held only for the Anbu. After that they could see each other but all that would be far away. No being able to take it she flung her door open, surprised to see Naruto looking into her eyes as he too was surprised that she did that. Apparently he also must have thought the same as her and forced himself to return. Immediately she got teary-eyed and jumped into his arms as they hugged each other tightly. She was giving everything she had into it as she had wrapped her legs around his waist and was holding onto him as if her life depended on it. He held her and his hands were roaming all over her back and hair. They took everything in since it would be a long time before seeing the other. Their hearts pounded and due to the fast heart rates, their breathing was shaky. Naruto pulled his head back slightly to place his forehead against hers. Their noses touching, he seemed to get even more nervous before he started drawing his lips closer to hers. They both got more nervous, but at the same time they were excited to try something new out. The moment just before their first kiss, they heard the click of a camera and some giggling. Turning to the end of the hall where the entrance to the living room is, they saw Kakashi holding a camera, Yugao and Hiruzen all standing there grinning widely. Sasuke blushed heavily and Naruto growled at them. Kakashi had to get another picture so he did. Naruto just quickly carried Sasuke into her room and slammed the door shut. He pressed her against the door as she was still latched onto him and they finished what they had been trying to do. He kissed her and they remained kissing for about a minute before he slowly pulled back and they were both smiling. I think I like this. Sasuke whispered nervously. Naruto gave her another quick kiss, I think I do too. He whispered into her ear which sent shivers down her spine. Well you better keep kissing me Naru-kun. We've got a couple more hours. Sasuke said giggling. As you wish Sasuke-chan. 
Naruto started kissing her again and after a while he brought his right hand down to her hip which made her legs tense up slightly as she wasn't expecting the change and he pulled her away and onto her bed. Gently laying her down and sliding her up the bed to be on it properly, he continued to plant kisses on her neck and shoulder before going back to her lips. So did they plan on remaining in there for the next couple hours? Yugao asked to no one in particular. Not sure, maybe one of us should go and like. I don't know maybe stop them before things escalate. Kakashi suggested slightly nervously. A. Dot not like they really know much. They're still young you too. Hiruzen said scolding the two. They both sputtered and nervously tried to deny what they just had been speculating. Although. Dot the makeout session did begin to get heated as the two had been getting more and more curious as they had been just trying new things. Their hands were roaming all over the other and Naruto felt more and more of an urge build up and a tightening tension of wanting more. Dot but what was more? What else could he do to fill the urges? That was a question he'd have to answer at a later time since he had to begin to leave. Much to her protest of just a little more, but he had to stop now otherwise they may end up kissing all day. However he promised to do it again with her when he can come home to her. He was smiling and she agreed saying that it was a deal. However before he got up she pulled him back down and got on top of him stealing another minute of kisses from him before finally giving in and getting up off of him. They stood up and his right arm wrapped around her holding her hip as they exited the room. They forgot that there was company as they had been so focused on the other. Oh, right. Dot you guys were here. Naruto said sheepishly while rubbing the back of his head with his left hand. So, what happened in there? Kakashi said with amusement. Oh, we talked. Naruto responded not even believing a shred of his lie while Sasuke was a blushing mess and couldn't make eye contact with anyone. Uh-huh. Talked. Yugao said making air quotes. Your lips were moving but I doubt to make conversation. She was grinning so wide and couldn't wait to tease of her soon to he squadmate. Can it, you too. Naruto-kun were happy you two have finally gotten back to each other and reconciled before you left. I know the road ahead will be tough but you two could accomplish anything together. That I believe, but it is time now. Yugao will lead you to a place where you'll meet the commander before he finishes taking you to a discreet location. Okay. Hiruzen said. Hi. I'm ready Gigi. He looked down to Sasuke and gave her a quick peck before shunshining to Yugao's side outside, before waving by and they both disappeared from sight. A tear dropped from her eye as she looked at where her boyfriend just was. Then she got happy as the past couple hours came back to the front of her mind and she smiled while becoming super happy and giddy. Feeling like a little girl being offered sweets again. There was also an interesting warm and tingling sensation she felt but shrugged it off. Kakashi put a hand on her shoulder. I'm going to miss him too. Dot but you're still my student so if you'd like, I would like to train you while he's gone. Maybe you can beat him in a spar and I'd be able to force him into some more of that. Wait. She paled as she realized that she accidentally spoke out her thoughts. Kakashi laughed. Don't worry about it Sasuke. You guys are experimenting and that's part of life. It's normal and all of us have been there before. That's why it's amusing to us because now we get to tease you too like we've been teased and still get teased. Kakashi said trying to ease her embarrassment. Maybe I should show Naruto some of, Aika Aika. Nah I'll hold off on that. Yugao and Naruto. So my little Kahai, how was it? Yugao said looking to Naruto as they walked down a path outside the village. What? You know. Oh, it was nice. He smiled, something I never expected. Her lips. Dot the taste. Wait. Naruto realized what he'd said out loud and paled. Yugao rested wrapped her arm around Naruto's neck in a headlock fashion and gave a light nuggie. Haha it's adorable. But try to focus on what you're about to do. It won't be easy and you can't be too distracted. I understand. Do you like being in the Anbu? Yes. I wouldn't ever change my mind about my decision to accept the opportunity. It's going to be a long three months. It'll be over before you know it. Don't worry, it's mainly building up the skills required for your service. Most of the true challenges come once you're placed in a squad. The training you go through while a true member of the force is far harder than anything you'll do in training. Also. I'm expecting you to graduate at the, top okay. I won't let you down. You gal. Yay, Naruto. Thank you. Dot for everything. I'm really happy that you and Nisan had met and that you got to take care of me. Me too. They finally met up with Commander Wolf who dismissed Yugao and took his newest recruit to the secret Anbu training location. 
When he arrived he got issued two pairs of white combat pants, two pairs of black boots, and two white sleeveless compression shirts. After getting that taken care of and he changed, they went to do all his medical work and paperwork required to know make sure he was taken care of on that end. Alright, now you're the last of all the recruits to show up. Your training starts at 0400. Hi. Naruto walked through the double doors and instantly was in a new place. Puzzled, he looked around. Rather than being in a room he was in some field. The door behind him was gone and in front of him stood nine other recruits. They were all much taller than Naruto and the youngest seemed to be 19. Naruto only being 11 threw them all off. They stared at him as he walked up to them. Suddenly there was a slight gust and behind Naruto stood a man about 21, with a kanai to his throat. So brat. What brings a little kid here? Same as everyone else. Rather calm for someone mere inches from death. The man said and nudged the kanai closer to Naruto's throat but oddly enough it phased through, and the Naruto remained there unaffected. That's because that isn't me. Naruto's eyes were cold and bored into the man, he held his own kanai to his throat and the man was crouched so that he could even be near Naruto's neck. In this position, there wasn't much moves. Naruto flicked the kanai and the man turned into Earth. Earth clone A. I guess it could be useful. Could say the same to you. The man brought his sword down from Naruto's right and sliced through. Only for Naruto to now turn to Earth. What the? You really don't know much about the Uchiha do you? A shame really. Ninjutsu performed that lazily won't work on me. Naruto said sounding bored. He was actually disappointed, he knew Anbu were of the best, well that's what training was for. Your eyes are powerful, at such young age, a female onlooker said breaking the tension that was building. I awakened them at 4, mastered at 5. I don't like relying on them, so I hardly used them. That will change. Impossible. The attacker said. No. I'm not the only to have done this. Shisui Uchiha, former Anbu captain did as well, even awakened this level. Naruto's eyes changed and glowed a brighter red just emanating power that was rarely ever seen within the ocular Keke Jenke. However I am now the youngest to ever have full access to my visual prowess, do not underestimate me or any opponent based on appearances, dot you just might die next time. Naruto said the last bit in such a cold tone that the appearance of just some kid left their minds and was replaced with the look of a killer. You're nothing without those eyes, Uchiha. The attacker charged at Naruto. However what surprised everyone was that his eyes went back to being black again and he began fighting without the use of his Sharingan. You see, everyone thinks an Uchiha loses most of their power when not using the Sharingan, it's true in a sense, dot not for me though. Naruto nearly dealt a killing blow which was barely escaped via substitution however it was barely in time and the attacker had a new cut on his chest. Damn brat, the attacker threw kunai only for the Naruto in front of him to turn into a tree. What? What's going on? Asterisk tisk tisk you fell for such a simple genjutsu. False surroundings what level are you by the way? Naruto said still showing no emotion in his voice or face. It was obvious though that he was toying with his opponent. I'll kill you. If you can find me. Naruto brought his hands together. Teleportation jutsu. Audience. Damn that kid can fight. Yeah. And this is without the Sharingan. Imagine his prowess in a few years, said the woman that complimented his eyes earlier. She had brown hair and looked to be 19. Did he just say, teleportation jutsu? What is he playing at? Said another male with black hair and was 20. I don't know. Dot but if it's what I think, you're about to witness a jutsu that helped make Shisui Uchiha famous, the woman responded. Naruto. Naruto then started running to his right. Suddenly two more Naruto's appeared to his sides then again on the complete other side of him about 10 feet away. There were now a total of 7 Naruto's facing the attacker. What is this? Genjutsu. They all surrounded the man and started inching closer. Earth spikes. Spikes came from the ground piercing each of the Naruto's only for nothing to happen. They kept coming slowly. What the hell? My clones are special. One said and punched the man, then another kicked him. They all started to beat the crap out of the guy until he managed to get away. WHO the hell are you? Naruto Uchiha, cousin of Shisui Uchiha, student of Kakashi Hitaki, Yugao Uziki, and Itachi Uchiha. Do well to never try attacking me again when you wake up. Huh. Suddenly Naruto appeared in front of him and knocked him out with a hard hit to his head with the hilt of his tanto. Damn kid. What a powerful list, sorry about his actions. He's a pretty hot-headed guy. 
said a man that seemed to be friends with this attacker. My name is Theo. Nice to meet you. Keep him in check, or else he'll die next time. Naruto turned and walked away from everyone. When he was finally out of sight he brought his right hand over his eyes. He hid it before but couldn't hide it anymore. His eyes were burning from having activated the Mangekio. He never used it so the sensation was still extremely unfamiliar to him. Suddenly someone touched his shoulder and quickly turning around pointing a kanai at the person's throat, he glared. He was ready to fight again if he had to. Take it easy kid. I'm Rhea. I know of you and your clan. You're struggling with some turmoil inside aren't you? The woman from before said. How would you know? I had a few Uchiha friends, they had told me of how at first when they awakened their eyes, they felt a change and were colder to others. However you should be fine given that you've had it for seven years. It's complicated. I'm not sure, regardless I don't know you and I'm not looking for a therapist. I wasn't trying to be. I was just impressed with your showing. For someone so young, you've got serious skill. Are you done? I want to be on my own. Not like you'd ever know anyways. What's that supposed to mean? You beat one guy and think you can take everyone on. You know, I can't believe I thought you'd be different than these fools. You're just as arrogant. That's not what I was implying. I was merely saying that you wouldn't understand why I got this way. Even I don't. As for my skill I was forced to train every single day from sunup to sundown because people were after me. Oh. I didn't mean. It's fine. Just go please. Nobody is safe around me. What do you mean? You really don't know me do you? Naruto was genuinely surprised since practically everybody he's ever met had some sort of opinion of him, generally negative. I mean, I know you're an Uchiha, and heard lots of your cousin, other than that I don't know who you are. Naruto analyzed her pondering if it was the truth. He couldn't outright know if she was lying but he didn't feel like she had a reason to. You haven't heard a thing. Naruto still didn't believe her. If you're wondering if I hate you like anyone else you've met then no. I don't hate you. I've heard about your title of being a demon, I don't think you are one and as of right now I have no issues with you. Then you should at least know that anyone associated with me also gets targeted by their hate and attacks. Her eyes widened as now she started piecing things together and figured out why he'd been alone anytime she saw him in the village. It wasn't often that she did but she could tell he always kept to himself. It's why I stick to being alone. Well no more need for that. I'll be your friend, if you allow it. We're going to be Anbu in a few months, that means I can take care of myself and you won't need to worry about that. Sure. I guess. Now why were you in pain? I may be the youngest to unlock the Mangekyo. Dot but I never used it. So when I activate them, my eyes feel like they're on fire. Makes sense. Why don't you use it? Do you know how they're activated? You said you had a few Uchiha friends. They never had it, or even knew of it, that's why I was curious. Right. They did say it was extremely rare, anyways, pretty much it's through the loss of the one you love, these eyes I know hold great power but it also holds my sadness. The Sharingan is described as the eyes that show emotion. That of the love in Uchiha holds, their pain, it is all mirrored and shown in the eyes. I see. Dot red being the love, black the pain, that's why your eyes turn mostly red with the Sharingan while the Mangekyo it's mostly black. Naruto nodded his head as she spoke. It wasn't entirely wrong but at the same time that wasn't entirely what he meant. However he wasn't going to correct her because it was a complicated discussion and if she understood it that way then it was fine. Hokage office. Damn look at that. Already a fight. Dot and he won. Commander Wold said as they had watched the entire thing from Hiruzen's crystal ball. He could have ended it a lot sooner, however I feel that in the heat of fights he may turn towards his darkness more and more. Hiruzen said. He did hold himself back quite well. If he'd kept his Sharingan activated, he may have ended up killing that guy. Kakashi said as he watched. He knew Naruto didn't deactivate his eyes just to solely prove a point. He didn't care what others said about him so the only reason he deactivated them was to keep himself more tame. Was it wise to do this? What if the other Anbu attack him when he is officially among your ranks? Hiruzen was worried for Naruto and couldn't help but show it. Sandame sama you know the Anbu are loyal to you and to the Yandaimi before. They all like Naruto and care about him in one way or another. They won't be easy on the kid but none hold any ill will towards him. Commander Wolf tried easing the Hokage's worries. Then what was that? A recruit's arrogance. He's a chunin and has his own opinions. 
as for the others they didn't do anything to help nor provoke Naruto. After his display and also showing his capability even without the Sharingan, they won't try to blindly attack again. Wolf said easing the Hokage now. On top of that, he's got himself a new female friend it appears. Wonder how Sasuke will react. Kakashi commented as he had continued watching through the ball. He was chuckling and managed to even make Hiruzen and Wolf chuckle a bit. I'm sorry to have doubted your force Wolf, he's just. I know Sandame Sama, I may not show it but I care about him too. Yandaimi Sama was a good friend. Hiruzen and Kakashi agreed as it was indeed true. Minato was a deadly shinobi, great leader, but an even better friend. Yugao smiled as she had heard Naruto name her among his list of teachers and was happy that he would add her to that impressive list. Not many knew her publicly due to her Anbu status but those that did knew that she was of the best swordsman in the village. Three months later, Naruto stood in formation at the front of the line. He was ranked number one in his class and outdid the entire class in practically every aspect. They were preparing for the graduation ceremony and everybody but him seemed happy that the training was finally over. It wasn't that he was upset, more that he just hardly showed his emotions now. They sparred daily and each day competed in everything. Naruto being number one had him be placed as captain of the platoon, and made him a target to the others. No one could accept that this 11-year-old could outdo them in just about everything. Naruto was faster, quicker, and altogether seemed deadlier. He was physically weaker than them as he was still just a kid but it really didn't seem to matter at times since he outsped them and would land his blows before they could. Since he was four, he was training with the best the village had to offer. So all that time fighting them made it easier to fight Chunin level shinobi, even if they were talented. They just didn't measure up. Now if they were going all out to the death, things maybe would have been different as they have experience over him, but since they weren't Naruto could speed through everything. All the obstacle courses were made to be some of the most challenging you can face, Naruto beat every record time on them. In any competition, he set records that cut the times in half. No one would probably ever break them at this point. The names of the top five of the records were Naruto Uchiha at number one, Minato Uchiha at number two, Shisui Uchiha at number three, Itachi Uchiha at number four, and Kakashi Hitaki at number five. Naruto also ranked number one in the class for Kenjutsu, Genjutsu and Taijutsu however just barely as Rhea almost pulled out a win against him. She had just gotten tired and ended up slowing down which let him get through her defenses. In Ninjutsu, he was number two. Rhea took top spot as she had more jutsu, however it was obvious that although Naruto has less jutsu, he was a true master of the ones he possessed. It was a trade-off but the thing was that it was smarter to do it that way. Kakashi for instance has copied over 1000 jutsu, an arsenal like no other. However he's only a true master of a few. Most wonder what would be best, a big arsenal or complete mastery of one. Well Naruto's jutsu took far less chakra than normal due to his mastery as well as the fact that he can do them with just a single sign if any. Rhea had more ninjutsu but had to do the full set of signs and it took the normal chakra toll. Now Naruto didn't need to worry about his chakra as much as anyone else since his was so vast, but that never stopped him from being as perfect as he could make it. Theo was ranked third and he was a very good taijutsu and ninjutsu fighter. His Kenjutsu was average among the Anbu expectations and his Genjutsu was adequate as well. His friend that attacked Naruto had been dropped from the force as he had suffered an injury and couldn't continue. Funny how that works out. Naruto was the smallest, the youngest, but he was the best of the platoon. He had quickly earned his comrades' respect and proved their doubts wrong. They had yet to receive the tattoo but that was done at the ceremony in front of their loved ones. They'd receive their mask and anbu gear and uniforms once they report to their squads. This was going to be a special ceremony, the entire anbu force would be present. They all wanted to see if the Yandaimi's son had made it. There was no contact to anyone outside the training, so the only way to know was to be present. Norma they wouldn't all gather until the anbu personal induction ceremony which had a bonfire, cookouts, and whatnot where they could meet their newest members of the squads. This was a special case after all. Since the entire Anbu force would be present, they had to be entirely perfect. They had to put up a good show so as to make sure that their presence wasn't disrespected. Naruto still didn't utilize his Mangekio abilities, but he did start to slowly use its visual prowess so that he was accustomed to the feeling. He could only have it activated for two minutes before it was unbearable. 
the thoughts of Sasuke were on his mind constantly as he was away and he really missed her. He could not wait to be able to see and hold her again in just a few days. As he stood impassive, that thought broke the mask he put up and a smile slowly appeared. What is making the ever impassive Uchiha smile? Theo said jokingly. What a smile. No way. Rhea added on as she jumped in front of Naruto to see for herself. Suddenly his platoon all stared in shock at their captain's smile as he never showed any emotion. Always remained passive and serious. This was different. Ey I bet he's got a lady waiting for him. Namura said as he was 20 and was always hitting on Rhea. She found him annoying but she'd be lying if she said she didn't like the attention he have her. Shut up Namura. Whatever Rhea. So kid, am I right or am I right? Got yourself a little vixen waiting around for you. Naruto just stood there without a care in the world. His silence with just a smile was an answer all in itself. They didn't need for him to voice his confirmation and all just stood shocked. You don't even express yourself and hardly talk. How the hell do you got a girlfriend? Theo said slightly annoyed. He was single and didn't ever get much luck. That's not important. Just gotta understand each other. With that reply Naruto walked away to his room to finalize his packing and looked in the mirror as soon he would be Anbu. Man. Even when we learn something new about him, he always remains quiet and withdrawn. Namura said. Well, what should we expect? He hasn't shown that he is different from that. Theo said. I don't know. Maybe he isn't really like this but to anyone that isn't close to him he is. Rhea, you ain't the Naruto whisperer. However now that we are about to graduate, how about me and you go celebrate a? Eh? Namura winked and bounced his eyebrows. For a slight second he felt hopeful as she turned to him and came closer. Not a chance. She hit I am in the head and he went flying 10 feet away. Training ground 7 Sasuke was panting as she had just finished a spar against Kakashi. She grew stronger and got pretty good as she could put up a good fight for 5 minutes against Kakashi now. She still had yet to awaken the Sharingan but when she did, her body would be ready for the one Tomo. So, Naruto's graduation is in a couple days. You excited? Kakashi said as he tossed her some water. I can't wait. It has been so long and sucked without him in the house. Yeah. Well at least we get to see him and he'll be back in our lives again. She thought about what she should do. Surely she should bring him a gift. Dot but what? Also what would they do when he came home? He wouldn't be with her until the day after since he had to be with the Anbu that night. Sensei. Hmm. We should bring Naru a gift. But I don't know what to bring. I thought the same thing. I know he'll be ridiculously happy just seeing you there with a smile and happy in general to see us all again but, you're right. This is a special day. What will happen in the ceremony? Well they'll announce the top graduate and rankings of the class, there will be a small speech, and lastly they'll place the Anbu tattoo on them signifying their place as an Anbu. Wow. So how do you think he placed? I bet he's number one. She smiled. She knew he was good and far better than her but to be number one amongst the class would be crazy. She figured that they'd all be as talented as him since they were entering Anbu. Also. Dot she couldn't help but think about kissing him again after so long. Hokage office, Sandame Sama, the preparations for the ceremony is ready, in just a couple days the recruits will be inducted. Is there anything you need prior for your comfort? No wolf, I will be fine. Thank you. How was Naruto-kun? I am not sure. I'm not the instructor and we don't communicate during the cycles. I have no doubts that he's done well. You might be right. Oh. And the entire Anbu force will be present this time. What? They want to see if he did it and how he ranked. Hiruzen nodded as he understood. They made final preparations and just awaited the next couple days. Two days later Sasuke was seated next to Kakashi and Yugao. The stands had been filled with all the Anbu and the loved ones of the recruits. She thought there'd be more Anbu but there looked to be only around 250. I can't believe the entire Anbu force is here. Sasuke said after looking all around. Well we're excited to see how our little Kahai did. We don't get to hear anything during the training cycles and we couldn't wait till tonight so we came now. Yugao said with excitement awaiting the results. I sure hope he won me my bet. Kakashi said nervously but was obviously proud of Naruto regardless of anything. It is an honor to be among the few that serve in the shadows. The crowd began to quiet down as they felt the presence of the Hokage arriving along with Commander Wolf. Welcome everyone, thank you for coming. Before we commence the ceremony, 
I'd like to tell you what an honor and privilege it is for your loved ones to join the ANBU ranks. Commander Wolf here selects each candidate by hand before they are sent to training. Of the 50 that got chosen, only 15 are graduating. Their training was rigorous and forced them to push themselves farther than they ever have before. Every single one has reached the rank of Chunin prior to this so they know what it's like in the ninja world, however only one in the history of the Anbu is graduating before ever reaching their genin team. Before I continue on about the class, I am glad that I have these shinobi within my personal command and Wolf's Anbu instructors have done marvelously, this is probably the best class I have seen to date. Now I will let Wolf take over. Thank you. Everyone applauded and was getting more excited as Hirazan stepped back. Hearing such praise was surprising to everyone and the guests that weren't Anbu wondered who could possibly be Anbu without being on a genin team. When Wolf stepped up they quieted down. Sasuke was shaking in her seat with excitement. She was about to find out how Naruto did and get to see him really soon. Yugao was holding her hand as she was also excited but was also so that Sasuke couldn't run off. Kakashi smiled at this as he too was anxious to find out. Hello, for the families of the 15, I am Anbu Commander Wolf of 3rd Anbu Battalion. I got to see flashes of potential out of the 50 I had originally chose. To expect them all to become Anbu was never a thought since we are of a few for a reason. I've seen the list, the numbers they put up, the praise Sandame Sama gave definitely fits the bill. Cheers erupted from the families of the 15. The Anbu all remained calm but they began to get excited about how the Yandaimi's legacy did. Before I say who the number one ranked recruit is, let me be honest with you. This will only get harder from here. This is nothing compared to the trials and challenges they will face upon hitting the field. We do what we can to prepare them, but that isn't the same as true missions. In Anbu, we do the most dangerous of missions, some may die, or become no longer fit to be shinobi. They each accepted this fact and as such will stand before you today. You will see them each get their tattoo placed in them and then you'll get to see them. Well without further delay, the number one recruit of the class, is Uchiha Naruto. Age 11, the second to ever do it. The Anbu clapped as they were proud of Naruto. They were surprised, they figured he'd make it but to be the top recruit. If he was only 11 and he's the top recruit, the sky was the limit. Not even Itachi had been the top recruit at 11, he was number 2. Sasuke was about to start jumping with cheers but Yugao and Kakashi held her back while also being beyond happy. Kakashi won a lot of money and his student nephew figure Naruto was the number one recruit. He couldn't be more proud. Yugao couldn't believe it as she was so proud and couldn't wait to have him in her squad. The rest of squad RO was also surprised and the anticipation for their new squad mate increased exponentially. Naruto Uchiha, has broken nearly every record that had been set. He has the fastest times in every obstacle course, run, swim, and physical test there is. He outlasted any recruit in the endurance tests, outclassed every recruit in Genjutsu, Kenjutsu, and was number one in Taijutsu. He came second only in Ninjutsu to Ria Maino, she was second in everything else but was only a close second in Taijutsu. Naruto is by far the best the regiment has produced and his potential is limitless. Congratulations to Naruto Uchiha. There was absolute silence. The families were confused on who Naruto was for a second until they realized who he was. Their feelings were mixed. If he was this skilled, he could have killed them all for how they treated him, by that fact they realized that he really wasn't a demon that they called him. They were filled with shame. The Anbu all were shocked. Such a feat, no one ever came near Minato's records. Shisui was second but still was outclassed by the Yandaimi. Sasuke, Yugao, and Kakashi's jaws dropped. How could that be? Kakashi began wondering just how much Naruto held back during training. In regards to his speed at least. By how much did he break them by? Tenzo captain of squad RO codenamed Tiger spoke up to break the silence. He cut the Yandaimi's time in half at every event. He did them all without use of his Sharingan, and no Shunshin, Wolf replied with pleasure. Again everyone got really silent again. If that was him at his base, just what the hell could he be with use of his eyes and Shunshin? They couldn't ever hope to outspeed him and the only thing they had over him was combat experience, that went a real long way but at the same time, once Naruto gains the experience then there was potentially no one who could take him one on one and hope to win. Now as I'm sure that you're all shocked, I was too, let us commence and bring the recruits forward. Fading into existence was two lines of seven recruits. 
all stood shoulder to shoulder and Naruto was standing alone in the front centered off of them. His Sharingan eyes glowed and spun. A genjutsu. This whole time. And Anbu said out loud. Yes, didn't I mention he outclassed everybody in that field? Yes but 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 that's impossible. How did he? Tiger Tenzo couldn't get it out. He is an Uchiha, and his genjutsu prowess is second to only Shisui Uchiha. However in a few years I believe he will surpass him. Everyone could only nod. Only Shisui ever managed to place a crowd under Genjutsu so effectively but it took a lot out of him. Naruto being a Jinchuriki to the Kyubi made such a feat possible without passing out. The commander and Hokage stepped to Naruto. He responded by saluting the two superiors and everyone watched as Hiruzen placed the Anbu tattoo on Naruto's left shoulder. Uchiha Naruto, you now are an Anbu under my command. Serve the village and commander Wolf proudly. Naruto saluted and turned to face Wolf. Tiger. Come forth. Tenzo shunshined and stood beside Wolf. This is your captain, he will hand you your orders. Follow them after visitation. Tenzo handed the packet in a folder to Naruto before the saluted one another for the first time. Tenzo could see Naruto's excitement through his eyes even though his face didn't show it. He was proud of the boy as he knew how much Kakashi was fond of Naruto. They continued in the same fashion for all the other recruits, each received a folder from their respective new captains and receiving their tattoo. The mark that made them Anbu for life. You all are no longer recruits. You are Anbu. I cannot wait to see the great work you do amongst your squads. Visitation is now allowed. There are facilities for you guys to enjoy with your loved ones upon being dismissed. Thank you. Wolf and the Hokage shunshined out of sight as they watched from afar. There was silence for a while before Naruto made the first move. He turned around from the crowd and faced his class. He nodded and every single one of them shot a fireball into the sky. Dismissed. Naruto said. They all ran past him and he just stood there. Everybody went sprinting to their families that were walking down the stands, yet Naruto remained. He just accomplished what he wanted. Ranked number one, why wasn't he happy? He should be excited yet he wasn't. The Anbu noticed this and they understood. They couldn't wait to have a talk with him but now wasn't the time. For now only Yugao and Kakashi would get to be with him since they were close and the only ones left that Naruto had. Sasuke was obviously allowed to go since she wasn't Anbu. Finally after a little while he turned around to face the three. He put on a smile and hugged Kakashi and Yugao. He broke the hug quickly as he rushed to Sasuke and they engulfed each other in a hug. He had lifted her off the ground and spun around with her. She had tears in her eyes from pure joy of having him hugging her. He looked to her and gave her a kiss. She was visibly upset when he had ended it. He laughed, there's people around, Sasuke-chan. So. She pouted making him smile, they don't matter. All I see is you. She kissed him again and he let it last for a minute but backed off. I promise we will continue tomorrow at the house and make it up to you. Okay. You better. It's been three months. You have a large bill to fill. Naruto smiled hugging her before turning back to Kakashi and Yugao while having an arm wrapped around Sasuke. They all were smiling. Congratulations Naruto. I have something for you. Kakashi pulled out a small box. Naruto opened it and saw a three-pronged kunai. It was the most unique one he ever saw. It seemed familiar but from where? Naruto held it and twirled it in his hand and then dangled it on his finger through the loop when he noticed the kanji on the handle. Wait. This is. Naruto's eyes widened. It belonged to my sensei. He gave it to me when I became Jonin. Your sensei was the Yandaimi. Why did you never say anything? He's like my hero. Naruto was ecstatic. To be holding a kunai that the Yandaimi once had and used in combat in conjunction with a jutsu that made him famous and feared to all enemies. That's right Naruto. There's something we need to discuss with Sandame sama but that can wait a few days. Also, remember that book I gave you on Fuenjutsu. Yeah, why? Have you studied it? Yes, I am level 3 but need a tutor for the higher levels since it is dangerous. Why? Oh no reason. Kakashi said, I wonder if he could learn the Horishin in a few years. Naruto knew there was an ulterior motive but let it rest. He was just too happy at the moment. Thanks a lot Kakashi. How the hell do we match that huh? Yugao couldn't believe that Kakashi gave him the kanai. Then again he was an Anbu now and practically outranked Jonin. He was going to be told of his heritage at Chunin but now he might just get to know now. Makes sense but still, to top this. When he found out then the kanai would be held with the even higher pride. 
no gift could ever hope to match it. Yugao gave a box and when Naruto opened it he saw a professional cleaning and sharpening kit for a sword as well as two chakra conductive kanai. Thank you, I really needed a new kit. Are these? Yes they are chakra conductive kanai. Yugao said smiling. She knew it wouldn't match up to Kakashi's gift but was happy to see Naruto appreciated and liked her gift. Sasuke nervously handed Naruto a really small box. Naruto smiled at her which made her feel better but in comparison she felt that it wouldn't measure up. In the box was a handmade necklace, the main part was made of a black lace-like material, there were six platinum tomos tied in place so they didn't move from position. Naruto immediately put it on and hugged her. It's made to represent that you are an Uchiha via the tomos of the Sharingan. I hope you like it. Sasuke-chan, I love it. Thank you so much. He hugged her. Naru-kun. Naru-kun. What an adorable name. Rhea surprised Naruto as he turned around to see her, Theo, and Namura along with their families. So this is the lady that plagued your mind a couple days ago. Namura shut up. Rhea smacked him in the back of the head. Well guys. These are the friends that I made. Theo, Namura, Rhea. This is Kakashi, Yugao, and Sasuke-chan. So the last two Uchiha together, makes sense. Everyone rolled their eyes at Namura's comment. Wait. You were serious about who trained you? Theo said speaking for the first time. Yeah. What do I gain from lying? No wonder you were so untouchable. Theo couldn't believe it. Kakashi-sama, it's an honor. Please, just call me Kakashi. Kakashi waved his hand, he never really liked the honorifics when someone spoke to him. They all talked and got to be able to see a side of Naruto that they hadn't during the training. Around Kakashi and Yugao, he was goofier and relaxed but the biggest change was around Sasuke. He was loving, caring, and protective of her. Always stayed aware of who was around so that no one could harm her. They found it interesting to see this side of Naruto rather than just the serious and passive version. I can't believe the age differences between you and everyone else Naru-kun. Haha <laughs> yeah. Rhea here is the second youngest but she's 19. Everyone else is 20 to 22. Yeah we all were planning on clowning the brat until he whooped Theo's friend's ass. Namura said. What did you do? Yugao said sweetly which made Naruto shiver. Hey I was attacked first. Later that night Naruto went to where he was supposed to. It was the Anbu HQ and he went to the armory. He was met by an Anbu with a pig mask and Commander Wolf. Pig gave Naruto his four sets of uniforms which consisted of black combat pants, black sleeveless compression shirts, two gray Anbu chest plates, four pairs of black three-quarters compression arm sleeves, with two pairs of gray armor that attached from the wrist to the elbow on the outer side of his forearm and had straps to keep it in place. There was also black gloves with a metal plate to protect the back of his hand, and two pairs of black boots. He was also given two black cloaks for if it was raining or the assignment required it. He would have been given a sword but Naruto already had his tanto and shoulder sheets so there was no reason. Commander Wolf presented Naruto his mask, it was a fox. When on duty, your name is now Fox. You refer to other Anbu by their animal code name which is of their mask when on duty. Got that. Hi. Good. Now go report to your squad. Naruto walked throughout the base until he arrived to a locker room that had RO on the door. He took a breath and walked in. Everyone was in uniform and masks on, they had been waiting and stood at their locker silently. The door shut behind Naruto and Tiger was there. Naruto activated his Sharingan as he felt threatened and was getting ready to fight. Slowly he reached for his Tonto and before grabbing it spoke. So this is how it's gonna go. Not even an introduction, you just plan to attack. Naruto said mainly speaking to Tiger who stood behind him. Interesting, what makes you feel threatened right now? Tiger asked, he was holding a kanai to be fair. For one, you remain behind me, two, I can see that kanai in your hand from that katana's reflection. A few feet away, a katana was standing against a locker and although there was a reflection, it normally shouldn't have been visible. Dot but to the Sharingan. Hem interesting. Not bad, you are rather adept in your surroundings. I am Tiger your captain as you may recall. Yes. Dot now do I need to prepare for a fight or are you going to stop being directly behind me with Kanai in hand? Naruto was getting annoyed. If he had to fight he just wanted to get it over with. Impatient are we? No matter. Tiger moved to the center of the room. This is my squad, Hawk, Boar, and Cat. They all nodded as each name was said. 
However when Naruto's gaze met Cat he tilted his head slightly and furrowed his eyebrows as he seemed to recognize something distinct. She had purple hair. Dot the only other person he's ever seen with hair like that was. Hello Naruto. Welcome to Squad RO. Cat said. You gao. She laughed at his reaction and so did the others. It was funny to see how he was the entire time until seeing Yugao. Yes. You need to ease up. No need to be so tense. We're your squad mates. Well Captain Tiger here decided to start the problem. I just wanted to end it. What makes you think you can take me? Tiger was interested. It wasn't a question of if I could, more of I wouldn't let you walk all over me. Naruto replied calmly. Since it appeared that everything was a joke, he didn't want to come off as aggressive. Well my name is Tenzo. You ready know Yugao. Bor removed his mask, I am Zoro. Hawk removed his mask, I am Hinto. You're a Hayuga, with blue hair. Yep, hence my name. Plus you're one to talk, you're an Uchiha who has red highlights, Hinto said. Fair enough. Dot you don't seem much older than me. I'm 16, became an Anbu when I was 14. Oh okay. Hey aren't you supposed to have some symbol on you or something? No, I was a main branch member. Dot but ever since I entered Anbu and showed my talent as well as utilizing ninjutsu, the clan looks down on me. Screw them. Never thought I'd see the day an Uchiha defends a Hayuga. Zoro said chuckling. So what animal you get stuck with Naruto? Hinto said. I am Fox. Naruto said showing his mask. They all smiled at the irony in it. They didn't say anything though. Yugao told them that Kakashi planned on taking Naruto to see the Hokage about his heritage and tenant, also that he received the special kanai. Well get changed, we have an induction ceremony to get to. Tenzo said with a smile. That night was one of the most fun nights Naruto ever had. He wasn't hated blindly and actually had a good time getting to know his squad. Throughout the night he got greeted by every Anbu and there was so much good food. It was called a ceremony but Naruto felt that it was an excuse just for them all to get together and party. He and Hinto quickly became friends and both really wanted to spar. Hinto was the fastest of the squad but now that Naruto arrived he was number two, but still wanted to see how the newbies fighting skills were. You have to try this. Hinto said giving Naruto a glass. What is it? Some top quality sake. I don't know Hinto, this I'm only 11. Shut up man, we are Anbu, that doesn't apply to us. Now drink. If you say so. 30 shots later and Naruto had yet to feel any effects of the alcoholic beverage. Hinto on the other hand was wasted. How see can why you be wasted not? Hinto was hiccuping and slurring his words as he spoke. I am not too sure, well I think I'm done. Naruto got up and walked to the fire. He watched the flames dancing and wished that Sasuke was there. He would love to be holding her beside the fire. Oh well. Naruto now was officially an Anbu, ahead of him now was challenges that he can't ever be truly prepared for but that wouldn't stop him from trying to reach as high as possible. Next day Naruto walked home in the morning. He was tired as he didn't sleep much and partied all night but it was a lot of fun. Now he was going to see his joy. Naruto walked in the door and saw Sasuke on the couch passed out. From the looks of it she fell asleep only recently. Naruto went over and picked her up bridal style and took her to her room, he gently laid her down and put the covers over her. He began to turn away when she grabbed his hand. Good morning Sasuke-chan. Naruto smiled and pushed her hair out her face. Morning Naru-kun. They kissed quickly before she yawned and clearly wanted to sleep. So did he say he was leaving. Don't go. She was holding his hand still. Sasuke-chan I'm sorry but I don't think I can stay up, I'm tired. Then don't. She said simply which made Naruto raise an eyebrow until she pulled him into the bed and wrapped her arms around him. Just go to sleep. Haha <laughs> sure thing. Naruto and Sasuke fell asleep quickly. Five days later. Naruto-kun good to see you. How you liking Anbu? Gigi, it's pretty cool. The induction ceremony was nice and my squad seem like cool people. Hinto is wild but he's a good guy. Naruto spoke with laughter but didn't know his squad was present in the roof and that Hinto was about to show him just how wild he was until Tenzo glared at him. Damn you Naruto, calling me wild to the Hokage. That's good. Listen, it's time me and Kakashi told you something. What is it? The plan was to wait until you reached Chunin but now you're Anbu so. You're telling me now. Is it bad? Eh. It doesn't change who you are Naruto. You'll always be Naruto to us. Kakashi said. 
Naruto-kun, there's two things. One is your heritage and the other is sort of the result. What do you mean? Your mother was Kashina Uzumaki, your father was Minato Uchiha. Hiruzen said seriously not knowing how Naruto would react. My father. Dot was the Yandaimi. So the reason he and mother was never around was because the Kyubi killed them. Wait. Dot you can't kill a being of chakra. He had to seal it. No 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 don't tell me. Yes Naruto, he was your father. Dot and to save the village, he sealed the Kyubi into you. No no. Dot why? What happened? Naruto stood in front of Hiruzen. He hadn't spoken since Hiruzen confirmed him of his parents. Everyone in the room, even the Anbu started to get worried when Naruto remained silent, staring into space. The room began to feel colder when Naruto closed his eyes. Take revenge, they lied to you. Dot hid your lineage from you. You thought they loved you, cared for you. Now you learn they'd hidden all this from you since the beginning. Naruto-kun, please understand, we did this to protect you. Hiruzen said trying to reach Naruto but silence remained. It's all lies. How can hiding a father's identity to a son be protection? How does hiding the existence of a demon within you, protection? How do lies and secrets and the thought of, protection, make anything valid? Who are you? Why are you in my head at times like this? Naruto said within his mind, he hadn't entered the mindscape but he was focused on his thoughts. I am the one that was sealed within you. I am the KYUBI no Yoko. So you're a being. Dot not some mindless beast. What are you getting at human? To have thoughts as yours, you must have feelings, must have been betrayed. I can tell you have hatred but there must be a source. What makes you think I have such trivial things? The fact you come out in my times of anger and sadness, betrayal. I seek to break this seal and kill everyone in this damned village. Maybe, maybe not, listen. No you listen to me. I will break this seal and will assume control. It's only a matter af time. You being an Uchiha only makes it easier. Naruto was brought out of his thoughts when Kakashi touched his shoulder. It was interesting to have that talk with the Kyubi but at the same time, there was no sign of friendship being there. The Kyubi made it clear of its intentions but then again, Naruto wasn't truly sure. The Kyubi, most powerful entity on the planet, shown as ruthless and mindless. Only out for blood and chaos. But what Naruto has heard and over the years, vengeance drives it, there had to be a time before that but he wouldn't know. He d decided to do some research later on. Naruto opened his eyes, Mangekio glowing in all its power. Storm clouds managed to form and outside the office rain came down heavy and thunders amassed in the sky. Lightning enveloped the skies and struck some places in the village. Naruto what is this? What are you doing? Kakashi said noticing what had been going on. It was a clear day, until Naruto opened his eyes. Coming from Naruto's eyes were bolts of lightning which then began to spread throughout his body. He was pissed and it was clear. Is this from his Mangekio? Everyone had the same thought and was wondering what he could do. Naruto moved faster than ever and grabbed Hiruzen forcing him out of the chair and against the wall. Normally Hiruzen would not have allowed it, he could easily kill Naruto it was what he wished. The Anbu and Kakashi readied to make a move but Hiruzen waved them off. He knew Naruto would not harm him and was just hurting. How could you? Naruto had tears in his eyes, lightning flashed all around him and the storm outside intensified. Naruto-kun you need to calm down. Hiruzen spoke softly trying to get him to relax. I am calm. How could you all lie to me all this time? I had the right to know. You had no right to hide this from me. Naruto released Hiruzen and took a few steps back. The storm subsided and the lightning around Naruto faded away. His Mangekyo deactivated and in place was his three Tomo Sharingan. I trusted you all, loved you all. Dot and you hid the two most important pieces of information from me. Dot how could you just do that to me? Do you not know how much it hurt to think my parents just abandoned me? That my family cast me out? Is that what angers you? You don't care that Minato sealed the Kyubi into you? Hiruzen said shocked. No. I understand, it's brought me loneliness yes, but it was to protect the village. I hate that you've lied to me on why I was hated, why my parents weren't around. We wanted to protect you. How does me knowing my parents change anything about my safety? Hiruzen actually was shocked for a second. Naruto had a point. They could have told him, and still kept it secret to the public. It was intended to keep Minato's enemies from finding out and trying to kill you. The secret of your Jinchuriki status was to hope you can be a normal kid. 
Oh yeah because normal kids are locked up in their house until 6. Was that for my protection or the villages? Did you ever trust me? Was it all fake to keep your weapon in line? Naruto-kun you aren't viewed as a stop lying to me. I've read a lot. All Jinchuriki are nothing more than military assets to a village. No one sees them as people. Even I was treated as such. As for my father's enemies, you yourself no longer believe your lie. I could have known and the secret remain. Knowing my father's and mother's sacrifice could have helped me. Naruto-kun please forgive me and trust. Sorry Hokage-sama, but I can't. Dot not right now at least. Everyone flinched at Naruto no longer using the affectionate title. It showed how much Naruto was pained. He had always referred to Hiruzen and those close to him with a title. For him to no longer use said title and use the honorific was him practically spitting on Hiruzen. Oh, and don't worry, your weapon will remain loyal to Konoha. It would dishonor my parents' sacrifice to go against the village. Naruto shunshined away but in his voice was nothing but sadness. Hiruzen's head sunk as he looked at the floor. Kakashi had no idea how Naruto would see him as well but he knew that things would be different now. Could they ever win Naruto back? Or would he resent them for their lies? Kakashi, watch over him, will you? Hi. Sandame Sama. Kakashi walked out of the room and all he could think about was if his decision to follow the orders of not telling Naruto. He and Shisui never agreed but they followed orders. Hiruzen had a heavy heart. He never expected that Naruto could make him doubt his decision so much. For 11 years he had the resolve and belief that he made the right decision, however today that was flipped upside down. How could the kid so easily change his mind? Hiruzen was a strong-willed man and nothing would stop him once his mind was set. Dot yet here goes Naruto changing everything. What an odd situation. He would need to find a way to make it up to Naruto. Naruto's house. Kakashi knocked on the door and Sasuke opened it. Either Naruto was there and didn't want to be seen or Naruto was somewhere else and would probably not be found. So either way it would be best to try get Sasuke to help him. He didn't plan to tell her about what Naruto learned but was going to let her know that Naruto will be dealing with something. Is Naruto here? No. He has not come back since you and him left this morning, what's wrong? Sasuke got serious since she realized that something was up. Oh man, well it kind of works out. He's going to need you. What did you guys do? Hey who said it was? Sasuke just looked at him and the look alone told him that she wasn't going to buy anything. And if it involved Naruto, well she was never one to mess around if it was something that involved Naruto. Even before they were dating, she didn't take any BS involving him, even if she didn't openly show it at the time. Okay okay. He learned some pretty big news today, he's pretty hurt at the moment. He already refers to Sandame Sama with the honorific rather than the affectionate title. Damn, y'all really messed up. Kakashi chuckled lightly and could only agree. They did mess up pretty bad and it would be a while before Naruto forgave them. However at least on a professional level, he still would comply. Anbu HQ. A perk of the Anbu was they had state of the art training grounds. Naruto was using that to his advantage. He was in pain and felt betrayed after all. He was unleashing torrents of fire everywhere and destroyed everything in sight. He didn't know that there were Anbu watching, and his new friend Hinto, they didn't know if they should do something. They were notified that Naruto would learn of his heritage and his tenant. They figured he didn't take it well. Was he mad at the Yandaimi or was it something else? They wouldn't know until the Anbu that guard Hiruzen tell them or for Naruto to tell them. Naruto wasn't exactly someone to express his thoughts so most likely they'd be waiting till the squad came. This was the most emotion they had seen from him and it was interesting to see his anger and even sadness. Also his control of the fire jutsus were astounding. When he did the fire breath, it was massive and you could tell the heat that emanated from the fire. You can come out now. Naruto said seemingly to himself until six Anbu appeared. You know, maybe you shouldn't destroy the training ground, other people to use it you know. Hinto tried but failed to make some SLRTPF laughter come from Naruto. HN. Well I'm sure this could be repaired. It's only a little fire. Damn. Dot who pissed you off. Kao said. Hokage. Their suspicions were right and they were surprised to actually have him say that. It was obvious that he wasn't planning to defect or revolt in any way. This anger would have to be fixed somehow though. What happened Naruto? Hinto was curious, he was still really young like Naruto and he wasn't told of the secret of his heritage. 
only that he was the Jinchuriki, but based on how Naruto was, finding out about Jinchuriki's status wouldn't anger him this much. They lied to me my whole life. WHO are they to deem that I should not get to know my parents? Hinto now understood and felt bad for the kid. To not be able to know whom your parents were would be on so many levels. You must understand it's for. Kao never got to finish, Naruto's tanto was at his throat. My protection. It's a lie. I could know and no one else would. If you guys weren't notified I'd be told some news. You guys would have no clue that I knew my mother was Kashina Uzumaki and father Minato Uchiha, Yandaimi Hokage and that he sealed the Kyubi no Yoko within me. Hinto's eyes widened. His father was the Yandaimi. Naruto did have point though. If they weren't notified that he'd receive some news, they'd never know. Your father was the Yandaimi. You didn't know Hinto. Figured all the Anbu knew. The younger ones only know of your Jinchuriki status. Dotan could you move your sword away? Kao said nervously as he was in a bad position. Even if he made a move, Naruto was the fastest shinobi in the world. AMD the blade was already at his throat. Right. I'm sorry. Listen I'm not mad at my father. I'm mad that they lied to me about everything. They never cared for me truly. They just wanted their weapon to be loyal. Naruto. Hinto really felt bad and wanted to help but didn't know what to say. Naruto that's no. Don't even try snake. It's how all Jinchuriki are treated. We're just military assets to a village. Don't try to sway me. Even the villagers only see me as a demon. Naruto turned around and walked away. Hinto outstretched a hand but stopped. The usual playful and goofy Hayuga just stood and didn't know what to do. He was mad at the Hokage for causing this but at the same time he didn't have all the parts to the story so who knows. Maybe it was the right decision, maybe it wasn't. Whatever it was, the Hokage made the choice. Guys, what are we supposed to do? Hawk, I'm not sure, but we have to hope he doesn't fall to angry otherwise the Kyubi may take advantage. If that happens it will be extremely difficult to stop him. Kao said and everyone nodded and agreed that it would be a big problem if Naruto ever acted on his anger. Naruto went to a public training ground and wanted to try out his Mangekio. He noticed what he'd been able to do when he was in the Hokage office. Plus, he needed to get more accustomed to having the eyes activated. He had put it off constantly because of its discomfort and now he was pretty mad at his decision. He didn't feel much control with his eyes and didn't fully understand his abilities. All he knew was that he caused a storm and had lightning on him. Naruto activated his Mangekio and felt the usual burning. It wasn't as much as before, but he started training with his perception first. Doing many shunshins in a circuit and being accustomed to how everything looks. He felt that he could move significantly faster with confidence now since he can see better. I wish there was a jutsu to make training faster in a sense. To gain the experience multiple times over. The clones I can make out of crows or earth don't transfer it. We can communicate but it isn't the same. He thought maybe Kakashi knew something. Hiruzen definitely would know but he wasn't interested in seeing him at the moment. He was still hurt from Kakashi but reasoned that he may have been following orders. He'd asked to be sure but it was his thought process. After a while, Naruto noticed that he didn't actually know how activate that ability. He had just done it. He charged more chakra to his eyes and a black aura surrounded him, putting more in, a skeletal rib cage surrounded him. Holy mother of. Naruto. What is that? Shikamaru. What are you doing here? Nara-sama. Naruto bowed and forgot he was still encased in the ribcage. Naruto, you're okay right? That technique. Shikaku said watching Naruto. Shikamaru stood in awe at it. He didn't know why but he felt it was strong. Yeah, somehow I now its name instinctively being Suzano. And I'm okay I guess. Dot but my body feels like it's on fire. It's excruciating but, I can take it. Naruto's voice was strained and he was squeezing his fists as it was activated. Naruto, what can it do? I'm not sure Shikamaru. But I think at this stage, it's only a defensive jutsu. There's more stages. Yes Shikamaru. There is more levels and the farther they progress, the stronger it gets. It becomes both M offense and impenetrable defense. The Uchiha clan's ultimate defense J, Suzano. Shikaku noticed the awe that the two had and couldn't help but feel the same. It was a formidable technique to the very few that utilized it. Extremely rare was the Mangekio so seeing the technique was even rarer. Naruto deactivated the Suzano and really wanted to harness his other ability. 
the frustration was present. Shikaku being as smart as he was noticed and wanted to know what it was. What's the problem Naruto? Nara-sama, I don't know much of my visual prowess. I hardly use these eyes, today. I used one on accident and don't know how I did it. Hmm. What did it do? I felt like I created a storm, and the more I got angry, dot the stronger it got. There was also lightning that shot around my body. Hmm. What chakra natures do you possess? I know I have fire, it's what I've trained in all my life. Nisan never got around to telling and teaching me of my others. Hmm. You should find out. From what I can tell, it may be feeding off heavily from lightning chakra. Pretty strong at that, you no doubt have affinity but you must train it before utilizing lightning nature. Fire is can feed off the environment which creates danger, yes. But there's ways to counter it, train above and around water, and you can just put it out. Lightning is different. It is the most chaotic of the natures, it doesn't have a natural counter. The only counter would be wind style techniques, everything else doesn't affect it. Lightning can create explosions and generate heat which lead to fire, combine fire and lightning, it explodes in less rare circumstances but I won't get into that right now. It spreads through water, and tears through earth. Wind cuts it and takes its power but as I said it must be chakra infused. If you don't train properly, you'll not only harm other but potentially kill yourself as well. Naruto stood trying to absorb every bit of information he learned. He knew the elements and their counters and such, but never considered it this way. He didn't really think about how it worked aside from combat, not ever thinking about how it affects anything else. Now he had to be more considerate of what he does. Maybe he shouldn't just throw fire jutsu around whenever he is upset. At least he and the wherewithal to do it in clearings and in private since he had wanted to be alone and not seen anyways. I understand Nara-sama. You mentioned you were mad. Dot why is that? Shikamaru asked now that his father's lesson was over. Since it involved Naruto he had actually paid attention. He always listened and took note of things but never showed it. This time though, he showed his attention to what Shikaku was saying. Well I just learned some things today. Shikamaru I understand if you'll no longer want to be friends. Nara-sama I can only assume you know what I am about to say. Shikamaru was puzzled but was trying to lease everything he knew together. He looked to his father who had just nodded confirming that he knew what Naruto was about to say. He's always been a weird guy. Isolated. Has some dark side unlike his own normal self. Red chakra when he was angered at Kiba. Birthday. October 10th. QB attack, referred to as, demon brat, could he? Shikaku noticed Shikamaru in thought and smirked. So he's figuring it out now. I'm impressed, he truly is smart, he'll surpass me that's for sure. Until then I'm gonna show him shogi and kick his ass for ages. Shikaku laughed internally and turned back to Naruto who took a deep breath. I am the Jinchuriki to the QB no Yoko, dot and son of Minato Uchiha, the Yandaimi Hokage, dot and Kashina Uzumaki, the previous Jinchuriki. Shikamaru's jaw dropped. I was able to deduce that you had the QB sealed in you but what? Then again. Dot the Yandaimi is said to have been an honorable man, it makes sense in a way, he wouldn't ask someone else to make a sacrifice that he himself wasn't willing to make, perhaps. So you're mad at the Yandaimi. Shikaku was curious as to the root. It made sense but Naruto was always someone that was different at times. No. His suspicion was correct and now he was curious once more. I'm mad that they lied to me my whole life and tried to lie about why they load in the first place. Shikaku smiled slightly but it wasn't obvious. He was happy that the boy wasn't angry with his father. He had been an advisor to Minato and was a friend. He would have hated if the man's son resented him for what he was forced to do. What do you mean? Shikamaru wanted more clarification so that he could understand the full scope and see if it would be the same decision he would make. They always said they didn't know my parents or why I was hated. They lied knowing full well why and who they were then lied to me again saying that it was for my protection. My father had enemies, yes. But me knowing doesn't change anything. You'd be able to prepare and get strong enough to protect yourself. Maybe even be motivated more knowing of their sacrifice and that your parents actually loved you, you're right. That was bogus. Shikaku was impressed in his son's analytical thinking. He had the same thoughts back when Naruto was still a baby but Hiruzen had made his mind and no one could change it, until Naruto of course. Naruto had nodded to what Shikamaru said. 
and the me knowing I had the QB in me could have stopped me from always questioning why I was resented and could have focused more on trying to show I wasn't bad or maybe even learn how to control it rather than be confused on my urges and thoughts sometimes, maybe I wouldn't have had to push everyone away and I could have been a better friend to you. Shikamaru placed a hand on his shoulder and looked him in the eye. Naruto, you've always been a good friend. You're loyal and kind to a fault. You don't openly show it or your emotions but your action is speaks volumes. Especially in regards to Sasuke. She said you had always been there watching over her from the beginning when you two met. Ever since we met you always push me to be better, as troublesome as it is. But no matter what, even if you don't say it, we know you've got our backs to the end. That is something that is rare with people, everyone is out for themselves and someone in your shoes would no doubt seek retribution and vengeance. Yet you remain loyal to the very village that treats you like dirt and to the people that lied to you. So don't doubt your worth as a friend. Naruto didn't know what to say. He was just glad that Shikamaru didn't start to resent him. He also realized that he had a point. Naruto was and has an undying loyalty to the ones he cares for. Even though Hiruzen had hurt him with this secret and lie, he would still remain loyal to him. Shikaku was proud of his son. This was the most effort that Shikamaru had put into something. Naruto had truly been a good influence on him and the two really relied on one another, even if they didn't realize it. After that, everything got quiet and got a little awkward. They didn't know where to go with the conversation now and kind of stood there. So, learn anything new? Naruto asked out of the blue. Man, just that school's been more troublesome without you two. Especially after you demolished Kiba. Yeah, well he talked about Sasuke-chan and I didn't like it. Yeah. Oh and my dad was planning on teaching me a game called Shogi, supposedly it's some sort of strategy thing. Troublesome. Oh wow, we'll have to play when you learn. You know how to play. Shikaku asked. A sort of. Nisan tried showing me, I know the basic rules but outside that I don't know. He wasn't one that took much things seriously in life. Naruto chuckled at the thought. Shisui was a goof and always tried to make a joke of the worst situations. But he was serious when it mattered and he was one hell of a shinobi. Hailed as the strongest Uchiha for a reason. Perhaps I'll have two people to torture on the board. Shikaku was smirking and turned to Shikamaru. We should head back. Your mother will be done with dinner soon, you know how she gets when we're late. Shikamaru shivered at the thought. Troublesome. Yeah, I should probably head home. She's probably worried since Ojasan no doubt went over. Naruto waved them off and then walked to his home. Two hours later, Naruto took his sweet time heading home as he knew he would be lectured. By now he was calmer but something was different. He noticed that his eyes at times went slightly out of focus. He figured that it must have been due to not being used to the eyes and just was fatigued. Got to use these eyes more, must also learn lightning style. Naruto stood in front of his house. He was hesitating because for some reason he felt she'd avoid him. She never was that way and always remained at his side, she would surely beat the hell out of him forever thinking that. Smiling at the thought he went up the steps to the porch. Just as he reached for the door, it flung open and Sasuke was on him hugging him. How do you know? Naru-kun I always know when you're around. About time you finally came home. Are you okay? How about we go inside? Naruto led her in and saw Kakashi. A hint of anger flashed in his eyes but it subsided and he just closed his eyes before opening them up with a sigh. Now he looked passive. He would get his answers before making a decision. Why'd you do it? Sandame Sama made the law, S rank secret punishable by death. Me and Shisui never agreed and wanted to against it but there were orders. We had to follow. Naruto took it and processed his thoughts. He didn't feel that Kakashi was lying. He looked down to Sasuke and he could see that she really wanted to know but wasn't asking. He gripped her tighter then sighed. I don't think you're lying, or you're just very good at it. Which is a very real possibility. However I will believe it for now. I have a request though. What is it? Could you diagnose my chakra natures? Huh, sure. Kakashi took out a chakra paper and told Naruto how it worked. Naruto followed the instructions and was surprised by the results. It spilled in half, one half burned to a crisp while the other crinkled into a tight ball. Shisui was right. What do you mean? Naruto got curious. If Shisui knew something then why didn't he tell him? He suspected you would have three natures. You've got really strong fire and lightning affinity, with good wind affinity. 
Oh wow, could you explain where they originate from? Of course Naruto. Your fire is trademark of the Uchiha blood that runs in your veins. The strength in your lightning comes from your father. Kakashi said with a smile. Happy that he could pass his jutsu down to Naruto. The wind is slightly weaker than the other two but that is because it comes from your mother. Naruto smiled and nodded. Happy to hear that he had something from both his parents. And now his chances at mastering the Mangekyo's ability is a possibility now. Can you teach me how to use lightning? I'd love to. And can you see what Sasuke-chan has so she can learn too? Sasuke smiled at him wanting her to get better. He always thought about her even when everything was focused on him. Sure. Here do as he did and channel chakra into it. She channeled chakra and saw that it crinkled and burned. She's got lightning like you. Along with fire. Thank you Ojasan. Could I take the rest of the night to be with Sasuke-chan? Kakashi held back his giggles but nodded and patted his shoulder before leaving. He waved bye to the two and left them in the doorway. When the door was shut Naruto dropped to his knees hyperventilating as tears came out. He thought he was fine with everything by now but now that he was truly alone he cried. She crouched down to hold him hoping to soothe him. No matter what was done he couldn't stop crying. Why couldn't he? He was literally just fine. It made no sense. He held her and the two remained on the floor against the wall. After a few hours they had fallen asleep together. Naruto woke up and saw they were still on the floor of the living room. He smiled seeing her and he was better now after releasing all his emotion. He carried her to her bed and laid her down. She woke up and he looked to her. I learned who parents were, and why I've been hated. Naru. My mother was Kashina Uzumaki, the previous QB Jinchuriki, my father was Minato Uchiha, the Yandaimi. Oh wow, then that means that you're the... Yes, I am the Jinchuriki. It is also what caused my outbursts. Naruto looked down a little worried but when he felt her lips against his, he knew it would all be okay. One month later, Naruto had trained hard in lightning style and could use it now effectively. He was finally going to be going on a mission outside the village with his Anbu squad. All he'd been doing was patrols, guard duty, and training. He was working on his Mangekyo and realized that he could control storms and harness the thunder. But the weird thing was that his vision felt slightly worse than normal. Fox, you listening. Hi Captain. I understand our orders. Fox take it easy alright. Just relax. It's your first mission and we understand if you're nervous. Thanks Cat but I think I'm alright. Of course you're alright. You're totally stronger than us. Keep it down Hawk. Ever the mood killer. A tiger. They all smiled as they head off in the direction of Iwagakur. They were to do recon and gain as much information as possible. The movements made by Iwa were worrying and they knew war would come eventually. It was no longer a matter of if but now when. Kumogakur still seemed closed off and there was no intel coming from there. They hoped it was a good thing but a worry was that they may ally themselves with Iwa to take down Konoha. If that happened it would be rough. They had far more shinobi than Konoha each, and if combined it could become bloody. Suna was an ally but they would want neutrality as their forces were still weak from the third shinobi war. They would provide support but at the beginning of war, they wouldn't provide any forces. Karigakur was in civil war and probably wouldn't make any active action within the war when it broke out. Hiruzen wasn't pleased, this would be his third war that he'd have to live through. Konoha always came out on top, but over time they've weakened steadily as their forces dropped. Being the winner doesn't mean you come out unscathed. Konoha no longer had the Senju, only two Uchiha remained. Their entire forces are much smaller than the other villages aside from Kiri. War always seemed inevitable, would there ever be such a thing as true peace? Or would war always loom over their heads awaiting return? Whatever the case, Konoha was adamant about not making the first move to initiate war. They'd just spy and gather as much possible intel. Hiruzen figured that it may be time to recall Jiraiya and Tsunade to the village. Naruto looked up and noticed that they had entered the borders of Iwa. Now it was enemy territory and if they were caught, they didn't exist. Konoha would not provide backup and would deny their knowing of this operation. This was how Anbu operated, to the outside world they were a shadow and did not exist. They were no one. Tiger signed to the squad that they would spread out at 30 meter intervals to get a better lay of the land. Rendezvous 10 minutes in a valley. Naruto went off to do his reconnaissance. Call upon some crows he looked them in the eye and a three tomo sharingan manifested in them. Their eyes, were his eyes. They flew off looking around and he mapped it all out. 
gaining land features and potential places to find food. He noticed a roadway made in the dirt and figured that it would lead to either Iwa or some other little village in Earth country. He noticed an Iwa patrol about 10 miles out from one of his crows and he took note. There was 15 shinobi. What an oddly large patrol squad. Especially this close to the border. Naruto went to the rendezvous point and awaited the res of his squad. Something didn't feel right. That was a really large patrol. Normally squads of three were at the borders and be split into certain points. Maybe you get five max if it is a hotspot, but to see 15. There was something going on and he had to notify the rest of his squad. Finally after a few minutes the rest arrived. Their first task seemed to be completed as they got the basic lay of the land and designated places for camps and setting up operational bases here to then further push their presence in earth country. They didn't want to have to occupy the civilian villages but should push come to shove, they'd take control of them. Captain something is wrong. A patrol of 15 was seen 10 miles out from the northwest. Border patrols are never that large. Sir I recommend we either retreat or reposition as soon as possible, something is off. Fox, we have orders. We will remain. Captain Butt. Enough, Fox. You will follow orders. Hi. Naruto grit his teeth, he knew he had orders but something was completely wrong right now. He couldn't put a finger on it but he knew they were about to find out something bad. They weren't familiar with the land as the Iwa Shinobi were, this was their home, their backyard. His squad were mere visitors. They may gain intel and map it, but it isn't the same as living and growing in the area. They pushed further ahead and began to continue looking for any information. They came upon a merchant and hanged into some travelers in hopes to find anything. The merchant never went to Iowa and mainly traveled between the many little villages. He did mention that the shinobi were more tense and aggressive than usual. There was also some sort of excitement and anxiousness within them. They figured that it was in regards to the looming war. If the enemy was excited then perhaps things may not be as good as they'd hoped. This meant that maybe a new alliance was made or there was potentially one in the making. Once the merchant left, Tiger turned to his squad. Well, we got some information. With this we can, Tiger groaned in pain as an arrow went through the back of his shoulder and protruded out the front. Captain. Naruto grabbed him and they all shunshined a distance away. Cat broke the he back of the arrow and pulled it through the rest of the wound. She began to do their basic first aid and cauterized the wound then bandaged it. Damn it, how many are there? Not sure bore, but I knew of the 15, maybe more came from somewhere else, at a minimum we are still outnumbered 3 to 1. Fox can you get eyes on them? Cat asked. Maybe. Dot but if they use their earth camouflage technices, they'll be blind to the crows. They may have a sharingan but it only lets me see what they see, it doesn't see chakra like mine. Hawk, what's the range on your Bayakugan? About 4 miles. Okay at least we'll have a little bubble. How's the captain? He's unconscious, maybe poison. Cat said and now the situation was worse. They were facing an unknown enemy, in both skill and quantity. They only knew there was a minimum of 15, 4 on 15 wouldn't be easy. Especially when they would need to make sure the tiger didn't become a hostage. So that meant one of them would be out of the fight to make sure that doesn't happen. Now it was 3 on 15 or more. With each passing second things got worse. They're closing in. 4 miles out, we have about 5 minutes before 30 Iowa Nins show up. Hinto frowned. They all looked at each other and knew the thoughts. 3 on 30. Dot and maybe potential reinforcements, this was going to be a rough night, if they survived. Naruto had a lot of power and potential but he lacked real combat experience. The rest were all skilled but numbers like that were ridiculous. At this point, each one would have to account for 10 shinobi. If they made a mistake, death is what they faced. Damn it. Here's the plan. Cat you're the best one we have in the medical field, you'll take Tiger away from the fight and stay by his side. Hawk and I will engage them head on to try to take out as many as possible while Boar provides his support, after we take down the front line Boar will charge in with us. Naruto looked around at them as they listened. Surprisingly they were following his plan but then again he didn't really make counters. He just took charge. Should we begin to be overrun? Boar and Hawk are to shunshin to your location. You four will take off to the village and give the intel. Naruto handed his scroll to Cat and they all looked at him. Fox, you can't be serious. You're too young, one of us can. Sorry Cat, but you know that can't be. I'm the only one who could provide a long enough distraction. 
Plus, you guys have more experience and that is more important than my potential, you're more valuable assets. Fox, you are the Jinchuriki, one of the last Uchiha. Which makes me the perfect candidate for this hawk. If we get overrun, I'll use my Suzano to buy you guys time. I can only use it a couple minutes before the strain on my body becomes too much so you'll have to leave quickly. Fox what are you eager to die? No cat. I don't want to die. Dot but this is the reality of the situation. We gathered enough intel to conclude that some alliance is being formed or is formed. That's enough to begin making more moves on the board given the pieces. What is your plan if you can survive? Boar knew the odds were low but if anyone could do it it was Naruto. If that's the case, I'll become too weak to shunshin and to retreat back to fire. I've designated a ravine 30 miles northeast. I'll head there and rest before continuing the mission. I'll send a message if that happens. You're going to go deeper into enemy territory when injured, tired and alone. Yes cat. That is my duty, this mission went to hell the moment we remained in our position. Now we have to do this so that we return to the village with at least some intel. Damn fox. Dot you realize that in your plan, we are going to be overrun, it's not if but when. I know hawk. Numerically it will happen within 2.5 minutes, just juke in as many as you can until then, okay. They all nodded and prepared themselves for what was to come. Training ground 7. So how do you think Naru's doing on his first mission outside the village? Kakashi looked solemnly for a bit. He knew his mission would be in enemy territory and the risks involved. He hoped Naruto would be okay. Naruto told Sasuke he was just going to the border villages and stuff like that. He was at border villages, just not friendly ones. He knew Naruto didn't want her to worry so, he lied to her for Naruto. I'm sure he's doing well. Sharingan and his unmatched speed allows him to travel quick and notice things at the border. Yeah, you're right. He'll be back in a week and promise to have a souvenir. She smiled at thought of him being able to see different villages where no one knew him so he wouldn't be hated. Perhaps even get to talk to interesting people and smile even. Kakashi didn't have the heart to tell her that Naruto could be in extreme danger so he just hoped for the best. When she smiled and thought he too smiled as he knew she was thinking well for him about the chances of the border villages. If only it were true. Well your lightning is coming along very well. Want to know a secret? Hmm. What's that? I plan to teach Naruto my prized jutsu. It is one of my own creation. I also want to teach you but I'm going to do it at the same time. Keep it a surprise okay? Sasuke smiled wide and nodded. She knew he'd be excited to learn a new jutsu and if it was truly Kakashi's own creation, then there was real sentimental value in it. She was honestly surprised that Kakashi would teach her too but wouldn't complain. Sensei. I understand you teaching Naru, but why me? Because you are my apprentice. And you're the most important person to him. As such I will gladly teach the person who has stuck by him through everything. Sasuke nodded and smiled again. She blushed at being the most important to Naruto but kept her composure. Did you know that I actually got the inspiration for my jutsu based on a jutsu that Naruto's father made? What? No. How did that happen? Well you see, the jutsu wasn't complete since the sensei wanted to add change in nature to it. I wanted to try putting my lightning chakra and it didn't work for me but I created my own jutsu out of it. Oh wow. So will you teach him his father's jutsu? Kakashi looked down a bit. He'd like to but Jiraiya was going to do that. He hated how Jiraiya was absent all this time and never came to see Naruto once. He could have at least ridden the boy. Putting that aside he looked back to her. No. Someone else is going to do that. Why's that? Because his godfather wanted to be the one to teach it. Naru has a godfather. Where's he been all this time? Sasuke was shocked then began to get mad as the one who should he taking care of Naruto after the death of his parents was never around. It's complicated and even I hate his decisions. Regardless it is what he wishes, so I'll teach my jutsu and help in any way when Hiruzen lets him see a jutsu that is Naruto's birthright. What is that? His father's famous technique. Sasuke's eyes widened at the realization. If he could learn and master the jutsu, then he would become nearly unbeatable in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Earth country. 50 miles from border. A light rain had began to fall and the area was becoming muddy. They looked around at one another one last time. Everyone knew that what was going to happen was necessary. It was the only way to get away and maintain the intel. If they tried to all run, they'd get caught since the Iwa Nins knew the land better and traversed better. 
they needed a distraction. Naruto was the only one capable of buying enough time thanks to his Mangekio. If he hadn't awakened it then things would be harder. He'd have the ability to buy some time but that wouldn't be as much. His lack of experience would cause a mistake and he'd be killed. The only way he was buying time was that three people gave Yugao enough time to get a head start towards the border with Tenzo, then Naruto would let the other two leave. They would have two and a half minutes to travel as fast and as far as possible before Naruto's Suzano deactivated and he'd either be able to have the strength to kill whoever remained, or died. Those 2.5 minutes was far more than anyone could give, since for those 2.5 minutes Naruto was untouchable. Then he'd still be attacking afterwards so there was more time that they'd have. Those couple minutes were what no other could give. None of them had a jutsu that made them untouchable. Alright cat, it's time. Fox. Let her know for me, okay. Yugao hugged Naruto for potentially her last time and said goodbye. She shunshined with Tenzo still unconscious and the three remained. Who knew this mission would become such a bust? Haha <laughs> yeah, what a first mission out of the village, a eh, hawk. You're surprisingly calm given the situation Fox. I never thought an 11 year old could be so relaxed in this situation. Yeah boar. I didn't think so either. But my life isn't the only one at stake. I guess now I know why my parents and everyone else who ever made the ultimate sacrifice did now. And why is that? Hinto looked at Naruto with saddened eyes. His new best friend was about to stand on the thin line between life and death. Naruto looked at them. There is no greater love, than to give one's life for one's friend. The two looked at him and placed a hand on his shoulder. They didn't realize how much he actually cared for them since he never said it. He was always a man of action. And as he said, there really was no greater way to show your love than to die for the ones you care for. The QB opened his eyes when Naruto said that. For so long he saw humans as pathetic, power-hungry savages. Dot yet this boy, despite everything, despite him trying to manipulate the boy's emotions has remained a good person and stayed in the light. There was still a great darkness within but he always persevered and didn't quit. Maybe this kid was truly different. I'm glad to have been your friend, and got to know you for this short time. Hinto was trying to be strong. You're an enigma fox, but I too am happy to have known you. Your father would be proud of you have grown to be. Thank you guys. I wish there was more time. They looked around one last time then readied themselves. They made sure their weapons pouches were prepped and that they had what they needed. Remember, after the first wave, you guys go. Hawk said that six would come first. I'm guessing that they want to estimate our strength in numbers. Once they die or send some signal, you guys flee. Am I the only one that realized that an 11 year old just became captain? Naruto and Bor laughed lightly. You would be a great captain, Fox. You were able to diagnose the situation faster than us and did not hesitate when forming a decision and plan. You put the lives of others before yourself and have shown great leadership in this short time. Thanks, Bor. Hawk. Dot how long till they're upon us? 90 seconds. More have shown up in the background with the others. How many? Bor asked quickly. 100 total. They got real quiet and sat in the mud taking in what they just heard. 100 shinobi. What the hell? This was a setup from the beginning. Bor take note, someone leaked intel on our op. Keep this to only the squad, commander, and Hokage-sama. There's a traitor in our ranks, or elders. Fox there has to be some other way. It's too late now, Bor. There's no other option. This changes everything and it's clear now. No wonder there was an abnormally large patrol. Listen, it might be a spy, or someone is actually a traitor. If it's a spy look into the med wing, intel slips easily there. Keep it on lockdown. Do not tell any other of this news. Now leave. What? Fox we were to help you. Sorry Hawk, everything is different now. With these factors, you must quickly get the hell out of here. They may try blocking the border, Cat will need assistance if that's the case. I'll buy you time so you're not caught from the rear, just hurry. Once you enter fire country they won't pursue that'll be an act of war. Neither side is ready just yet. There should be a patrol in 20 minutes, maybe you can rendezvous with them, otherwise you run and don't stop until you reach Konoha. Understood. Hi, they both chorused and with one last look, Naruto nodded at them. They shunshined to catch up to Kat and left their friend behind. 10 miles from border. Kat is everything okay? Yeah, what are you two already doing here Hawk? Fox made a change of plans. The hell do you mean boar? We saw that more shinobi came. 
0.100 in total. Hawk said softly as he looked down. He couldn't meet her eyes as he knew she was close to him. Then, he also figured out that someone leaked our op, there's a traitor or spy. That's why he sent us early. Our escape route might have been compromised and he sent us to back you up. Bohr looked her in the eye as the situation became more and more dire. What about his backup? He gave an order. So what Hawk, he isn't the captain. No, but no one else took charge when Tiger went down. He did not hesitate even knowing the odds. 100 to 1 is something that no one just decides to jump into. He made the choice unflinchingly and without delay, knowing every second counted. He is a true leader. I don't care Bor he's an Anbu who's doing his duty. This ensures we make it back to Konoha with intel, we know there's an alliance possibility that is even greater now, and that there is a traitor as well as potential bases of operation and landmarks to use as checkpoints or camps. If we stay we lose all that, he had to do this. She didn't say anything and only nodded. They all left and head straight for Konoha. For the most part it was silent all the way to the border. There was no danger in those last 10 miles and now Hawk and Bohr felt that they could have stayed a while. Dot but there was no guarantee it would have been this clear. What's the plan when he cross? Cat looked to the other two for an answer. Bohr was carrying Tiger over his shoulder since he was the strongest of the three and so they could switch between people so they maintained energy. Fox said that we could either rendezvous with a patrol which we should run into in about five minutes if we go west, or straight to the village. Hawk said as they jumped to through trees. They paused to think for a bit while they ran. Let's go straight to the village so we can get Tiger medical attention and ensure that the intel is taken to Hokage-sama. Kat finally said as the other two nodded and proceeded on. Do you guys think that? Hawk was sad but tried to stay up. He knew this was a part of the job but to potentially lose someone so young and a friend so quick hurt a lot. I hope so, he's powerful no doubt. Dot but if he does make it out of this, he will not return. He plans to continue the mission and when he does return, I believe he is captain material. Bor. Dot you speak like you know he will win. Kat said. Fox is a tough bastard. If anyone can do it, it would be him. He's not going down easily, he has no experience but his speed and visual prowess will help him adapt quickly. They nodded in agreement. Whatever the case, the moment they crossed the border, the mission was over for them. They wouldn't be allowed to return to provide backup and support if Naruto survived. He would be left to do the mission on his own and he'd be in enemy territory longer now. It was supposed to be a week but after tonight, he'd need rest if he lived so now another few days would be added to the mission's length. So much for some basic recon. The biggest question was, who was the traitor? Hopefully they could find out quickly because if the traitor was able to know about this op then what more did they have access to? One hour later. Hokage office. Sandame Sama. Huh. What's going on? Why are you three here? Sandame Sama put up security and silence seals. Hiruzen nodded to Kat and signaled the other Anbu away. He put the seals up and prepared for the news. What's the issue? Sandame Sama, we were in Earth Country and had been gathering our intel. Naruto felt off based on a patrol he saw but Tenzo shut it down saying we would continue. Eventually we were ambushed. Tenzo got poisoned and we retreated to a crater 50 miles from the border. There Naruto devised a plan to ensure our return with intel, he sent me early since I would carry Tenzo. After she left, we prepared. Hinto used his Byakugan and saw that more arrived. Rather than just 30 there was now 100. Naruto deduced in an instant that it was a setup and there was a traitor in our ranks or within the elders. He sent. Ian Hinto away to ensure Yugao made it out with the captain and that we returned with the intel. He was going to buy us as much time. If he lived he said he would be too weakened to retreat, instead he marked a ravine on this map about 30 miles northeast of where we were. He would send a message and continue the mission alone. These were his orders. Bor finished the debriefing. Who put him in charge? Hiruzen was upset. Naruto was facing death and was alone, he was always alone. Dot the last thing between he and Naruto was when Hiruzen broke Naruto's heart. He held so much guilt and didn't want to lose him. The three looked to each other before Hinto spike up. Well, he did Sandame Sama. What? We all fell silent when Captain went down. It was him who made the decisions precisely and unflinchingly. There was zero hesitation in his actions and he devised plans that ensured we returned with intel and safety. We didn't want for this to happen but Naruto understood the situation and was faster at acting than us. 
he also realized he was the only one capable of slowing the enemy long enough due to his Sharingan and Suzano. Bohr added. Hiruzen felt proud of Naruto's ability to understand and plan in the tough situation as well as his ability to remain calm. He put the mission and the lives of his comrades ahead of himself. Hokage-sama, if I may, I believe Naruto is captain material. He may lack experience but he showed that he had what it takes, if he makes it out alive, I recommend that you and Commander Wolf take it into consideration. Bohr said. I will take it into consideration. Commander Wold appeared out of nowhere. He heard everything and now believed he made the right choice in Naruto. He was a true operative and lacked hesitation in his actions. Commander Wolf. Hinto said. You guys did well. Rest up and await word from Naruto. How do you know he'll send a message? Yugao asked with hope. Just a hunch. Training Ground 7. Sasuke panted heavily. She was exhausted after a long day of training. Kakashi was proud of her progress. She was developing quick and if it wasn't for Naruto, she'd be the best of her age group. She was a prodigy and learned quick. The only thing halting her was her energy and stamina. He was trying to build her physical stamina because she had real good chakra reserves for her age, she just needed more stamina. You're doing well. Keep it up and I'm sure your Sharingan will awaken. Hi, Sensei. She panted and went for some water. Do you know why I have yet to awaken it? Um, could be a few different reasons. It's different for everyone. Some get it from intense training, others in situations where they feel really strong emotion. Then why have I yet to? Sometimes it only manifests in life or death situations. That's how Naruto's awakened at four. Shinobi had broken into his house on his birthday and attacked him. Shisui saved him just in time but because of that, Naruto's Sharingan awakened. Oh. I see. She looked down a bit. She wanted the eyes so she could be a true Uchiha and so that she can be like Naruto. She didn't resent him for possessing the eyes while she didn't but she was envious. The eyes were the pride and joy of the clan, they held great power, and she yearned for the eyes. Just you wait. Once you awaken them, you'll be unbeatable amongst your peers. She nodded and sat down under a tree. The sun was down and she looked to the moon. She knew that Naruto could see the same moon and it made her smile. Let's get you home Sasuke. Hi. Earth country a few hours earlier. Naruto stood at the base of the crater. He just watched his last two squad mates leave. His shoulders sunk and the confidence he had shown to them faded. A frown graced his face as he grabbed onto the necklace he wore. I'm sorry Sasuke-chan. Forgive me. Brat. What is it? Why did you make this choice knowing full well you'll die? Hmm, well I care for these people. I care for my village. I care for Sasuke-chan. So you throw it all away. No. I'm hoping that I leave it a better place than when I was there. Are you that naive? Maybe. Maybe not. Look QB, this world is in constant war. If there is a way to reach peace, I'd like to find it so that those I care about can be safe. So that they can be happy. So the world can understand one another. You're an interesting human. Try not to die, maybe we'll talk. Hi. Naruto opened his eyes and rest his Tonto's blade on his shoulder as he held the handle. His eyes morphed into the Sharingan and in front of him was six Iwa Shinobi. I am sorry but you guys won't be signaling your comrades, nor know of our numbers. Naruto tried to bluff about there being more with him. He didn't want them to instantly know he was alone otherwise they may just rush him. Naruto's eyes glowed and he muttered, bringer of darkness, simultaneously all of them became blind. All around them was darkness and they felt they were in a void. They were filled with fear as they heard a sound and one by one all of them fell to the ground dead. Kanai in their heads. He wanted to conserve energy at the moment so he used Kanai rather than his sword so his stamina remained intact. Damn, that genjutsu took more chakra than I thought it would. Then again it's meant to be done one at a time, not in a wide area of effect. Naruto still had an insane amount of chakra but he didn't want to waste any of it. There were an insurmountable amount of enemies to fight. 94 to go. He waited a few minutes and 12 more appeared. They waited on the signal but it never came. They found the bodies and saw the person standing in front of them. It was just a kid. Was it you brat? Maybe. Maybe not. Naruto inhaled and said. Dragon flame bomb. Three fired dragons left his mouth and they arched around. One went left the other went right re last went up into the center. The two went to the outside and hit the outermost shinobi and moved towards the center. The one in the center hit the center three shinobi. All the dragons converged and seven iwa nins were dead. 
five remained and he charged them. They prepared for his attack until he blurred from sight. Naruto appeared behind one and stabbed him through the back and died. Naruto blurred and slit the throat of two more. The last two looked at him wary. His speed was ridiculous. They never saw someone so fast. They threw Kanai at him and he was hit. They saw him falling and when he hit the ground he dispered into crows. What the? Was the last thing said by a woman when she had her head cut off and the last one was stabbed through the ribs puncturing his lung and heart. Naruto took a few breaths. He used a lot of speed in quick spurts as well as that fire jutsu took a little bit from him. He was trying to come to terms with what he was doing. Killing seemed so easy to him. Was it really this easy to take a life? At least they're coming in waves, it would be rough if they all came. Twenty more came in the all-prepared jutsu. False surroundings. The air around them changed and Naruto disappeared. Realizing it was a genjutsu they dispelled it by charging chakra. It took a lot of effort because Naruto's genjutsu was strong. When they saw the normal world, Naruto was twirling in mid-air and held five kanai in each hand as he spun, threw them all at ten shinobi who were hit in the center of the forehead. They had been the ones to take longer to dispel the genjutsu and were the ten chosen to die. Naruto landed gracefully with a flip, and looked to the remaining ones. They slammed their hands into the ground and it started shaking. From his front, spikes flew at him, while on his left and right, the earth rose into walls that started coming together to crush him. Interesting. Can't dodge through conventional means. Naruto spoke to himself and smirked. He let the attacks get really close and the moment they thought they'd won, he was surrounded by a black aura and a ribcage surrounded him. The jutsus crumbled as they couldn't do anything to his Suzano. An arm manifested and as he stood there with a slight smirk, it swiped at them and crushed the shinobi who looked on in awe. Once they were dead he deactivated his Suzano and kept the Mangekio active. He had a feeling he would need it. Nice, it evolved. Still, hurts like hell but progress is progress. Don't get cocky brat. I'm not. There's still 62 and my body hurts from that last attack. I wasn't expecting to use Suzano so soon. Even though it was a few seconds. The pain is all the same. You know. Maybe I'll lend you some of my power at the end. This fight has been entertaining and I don't plan on dying. Wouldn't you reform anyways? Yes. But it would be 10 years, and I'd be in a weakened state. The damned humans would reseal me easier, besides your entertaining and the strongest one I've been sealed into. HN. Very well then. Will you tell me your name? No. Alright then. Let's go QB. Naruto opened his eyes and he saw all the remaining 62 shinobi. He looked around and they were in a semi-circle around him. Oh. Naruto muttered, as he looked around. No more were the waves coming. They all came at once. He gripped the necklace, I will not die here. I'll come home to you. Naruto looked up to the moon through the rain and smiled. He looked back to the enemies in front of him and his mangekyo glowed. Kaminari. Naruto spoke and instantly the rain came down heavier and it started storming. He smirked, he could finally control it. His lightning capabilities felt like they increased tenfold. Lightning flashed all around his body and he raised his hands, the thunders and lightning gathered, lowering his hands, lightning launched from the clouds and down to the shinobi. Lightning stormed through them and was tearing them apart. Screams were emanating from all around him as they were being electrocuted and blown up from the bolts, others were burning from the heat. So, I can command the storms and thunder. My lightning chakra feels more powerful when in this state. Naruto was taken from his thoughts when his eyes burned in an intense pain. Naruto cupped his eyes with his hands and stumbled a bit. He lost concentration so the storm subsided and the lightning stopped crashing into the shinobi. Most were injured but 12 were killed. Only 29 remained in fighting shape. They took advantage of Naruto's falter and charged him. One kicked him in the chest and he was sent flying into a tree coughing up blood. Naruto looked around and his vision felt worse. He looked to his hands and they were blurry a bit. He blinked a few times and the vision got clearer. He stood up but was forced to dodge. His vision wasn't completely clear, so he was late. A sword stabbed through his shoulder. Naruto grunted in pain before staring into the attacker's eyes. Demonic illusion. Hell's release. She was sucked into a world and it was so hot that her skin was burning. She breathed in and it was so cold that her lungs burned. How can it be so hot and cold at the same time? She said in labored breaths. This was a technique my cousin was developing. You've lost your chance to escape. Naruto spoke coldly. The environment intensified and she screamed. The heat burned and caused her skin to char. 
The air was so cold to breathe in that her lungs were burning and being cut from the inside. With each exhale blood spat out of her mouth. With each passing second the genjutsu got stronger. Now to finish it. Naruto jumped back a bit as he stared at her with cold eyes peering into her soul. She looked up when she heard a rumbling and saw a giant meteor coming towards her. She screamed as she lowered to the ground on her knees. Then she was crushed. Back in the real world, Naruto saw her spit out blood as the life in her eyes faded. Not even a second had passed since he trapped her in that genjutsu. She was killed instantly. My genjutsu grows more powerful as each second passes. You only have 5 seconds within the illusion to break it, otherwise you die. You're tricked through every bodily sense, which is what makes it impossible to break after the 5 seconds and is what kills you. If your mind believes you're dead, then you're dead. Naruto spoke quietly as she was dying in front of him. She tried desperately to cling to life, in the end she died. Naruto removed the sword from his shoulder and winced in pain. He started panting as that genjutsu took a third of his chakra all at once. He looked to see the last 28 that could fight. H he just killed her, by just L looking at her. How is T that possible? You all underestimate genjutsu so much, it is the quickest, quietest, one of the easiest ways to kill someone. There are a few requirements that must be met, but once you're a master, it is rather simple to meet. Naruto spoke, honestly he was trying to buy time to rest a bit and recuperate. After a while of them just standing there, the Iwa Nins got together and tried launching boulders as well as a hail of kanai and shuriken. Naruto looked up at all that was being rained onto him. Damn, I really had to use these eyes so much, they consume so much chakra in my body and eyes hurt so much. I have to end this fast. Naruto looked up at the hail and was panting heavily. He calmed his breathing as he tried to focus on his actions. He was really feeling fatigued. Suzano. Naruto grunted in pain and had his right hand cover his right eye. The Suzano protected him and deflected everything. His Suzano changed and the upper half of a skeleton was seen. The eyes were flames, and the skeleton was black. An arm went to the mouth of the Suzano and it breathed out a large wall of fire. They were completely surprised by this, they never fought a Suzano and also didn't know that the flames could be this wide in effect. Half of them were incinerated and now on 14 remained. Naruto was breathing heavily. He was tired. His eyes and body were in excruciating pain. Just. A little. More. Naruto was on a knee panting. Blood was still coming from his shoulder as it hadn't completely healed just yet. His eyes began bleeding. He poured more strength into him and his Suzano so that he could remain standing. His eyes burned more and his body was on fire. He screamed out in excruciating unending pain. He couldn't stop the pain. The Suzano evolved more and now flesh formed over the skeleton forming muscle fibers. He continued to attack and from hands shot lightning as the mouth breathed fire. Explosions formed where the two met and at the end he dropped to his knees. He used his hands to keep upright as he coughed up blood and his eyes bled freely. His Suzano disappeared and his eyes went back to normal. He didn't have enough chakra to sustain his Sharingan. Those last shinobi died. There were still the injured ones but he lacked the energy to kill them. Either they'll die to their wounds and exposure, or be saved. Either way they couldn't affect him. His eyesight was worse and now no matter what, they were blurry. He groaned in pain and tried to stand but collapsed. I. Have to go, before more come. Naruto panted and he was on the verge of passing out. Here, let me give you a hand kit. Naruto smiled and thanked the QB. Naruto felt the chakra flow through him and heal his injuries. It refilled his chakra but he still was tired and in pain from the Suzano and Mangekio. Naruto blinked as he looked around. He woke up in a cave within the ravine he'd marked on the map. He didn't remember getting there exactly. He remembered being exhausted from the fight and the QB giving him chakra. I had to take control after you passed out. Oh. I see. Dot how long was I out? Two days. Are you not worried that I took control? No. If you planned something bad, I'd be dead already. Either way, thank you. Sure. You put up an entertaining show. Naruto nodded and looked around again. His vision was pretty bad one but he could see. He placed a hand over his eyes and shook his head. You've overused your eyes, this is the result. The more you use them, the worse your vision will become until they go dark. Why are you advising me now? I've merely told you the inevitable. This isn't advising human. Perhaps, what did you want to talk about? Do you mean what you said? About peace. The QB nodded, yes. 
100%, I hope to find a way to create peace. I don't trust, nor like you yet. But I'll assist your endeavor. When you're in dire situations, I'll allow you to use my power. When you gain my trust, you'll have full access to my powers. Over time, I'll let them be used by you. If I find you unworthy, you'll be stripped of all my power and I will kill you. I understand. It will take time, peace won't happen overnight but I promise, I'll find a way. Naruto called forth a crow and attached a small message onto it. He hoped his squad mates were doing okay. Hopefully they didn't run into too much trouble trying to get back to the village. He got up and began to prepare himself. He noticed his injuries were healed and looked over his gear. He was low on his kanai, he had a lot of shuriken though. His armor was cracked, especially his forearm protection. He discarded and burned the chest plates and arm plates. He was left in the sleeveless black compression shirt and the compression sleeves. It was hot so it felt better, but sacrificed protection. With his vision being about 60% he could easily mess up and take damage now much easier than before since his armor was gone. He'd have to hope to maintain cover for the duration of his reconnaissance assignment. Looking at the map he found his next target and began to head out. Hokage office. A crow flew in through the window and both Hiruzen and Commander Wolf stood up as it landed on the desk. They'd been awaiting word for two days. They knew that if Naruto lived, he'd be out for a day but when day two passed, they were worried, Hiruzen more so than Wolf. Wolf had a feeling Naruto would overcome the odds and as such maintained his calm. Hiruzen was already filled with guilt from before so this was only worse. When the crow came in they knew instantly that Naruto was alright. I have defeated the 100 Iwa Nins, woke up 0900 this morning. We'll continue reconnaissance and report back in 8 days, Hiruzen passed the note to Wolf and they nodded. He was impressed with Naruto and knew he'd do it. He was proud that he chose to continue the mission solo. He made a great choice indeed, to recruit Naruto. I wonder how much he was forced to use his eyes. Maybe it'll be time to do the transplant soon. Wolf looked to Hiruzen and both had the same thought. They knew Naruto was training the eyes and this fight would have forced him to use them a lot. Should we notify his squad? That's your call Sandame Sama. Summon them. They deserve to know that their squad mate survived and is continuing. However they will not re-enter Earth Country. The mission is over for them. Understood Sandame Sama. A few minutes later and squad RO was present aside from Naruto. Sad eyes graced Yugao, Hinto, and Zoro. Tenzo just looked disappointed, he had been warned by Naruto and ignored it. Then he was rendered unconscious and poisoned early in the mission. I'm sure you're wondering why you've been summoned. Wolf began, Anbu Operative Fox was left behind enemy lines and faced the 100 adversaries. Did he make it? Yugao asked quietly as she didn't want to hear otherwise. 30 minutes ago, we received word from his crow that he woke up 0900 this morning after the fight, he will continue on with the mission. Did he leave a location on where he was headed? Maybe we, Hinto didn't get to finish. You will not go back. There will be no reinforcements. Naruto knew of this and still chose to send you guys back and then continue on the mission. Commander, he's only 11. Tenzo protested. Yes, and if you had listened to his warning and reposition, you wouldn't have been incapacitated he wouldn't have been forced to take charge and lead to what has occurred. You're all dismissed. Wolf was aggravated by Tenzo. He should have been more cautious. That was a little harsh for you. Hiruzen commented when they left. He could have avoided having to force Naruto into being a decoy. He was stubborn. Naruto's house. Sasuke sat in the dojo meditating. Naruto was gone a few days and should be returning in just three days. She smiled at the possible new foods he got to try along the border villages. She got up and grabbed her katana and wanted to try using lightning. Naruto taught her the, Uchiha style, dance of the sun halo, which harnessed her fire chakra, she wanted to try it using lightning chakra. It could be an ace that allows her to one-up Naruto in a fight. At the moment Naruto had no counter to lightning style but neither did she. Her issue came when trying to control it, unlike fire it wasn't steady, lightning was chaotic and would flow in any direction it so chose. It seemed that at the moment she couldn't be absolutely precise and maintain the lightning around her blade. Perhaps over time she could. She was so distracted that she didn't notice Kakashi arrive. She did a spinning slash and the motion ended just mere inches away from Kakashi. Oh. I'm so sorry. I didn't. It's okay. How's the technique coming? It's slow, sensei. It's hard to control the lightning on the blade. 
hem, rather than form manipulation, try to just do chakra manipulation. What do you mean? You're doing change in form, making the lightning bolts, you'll never have full control on the blade since there's too much area, it'll work on Kanai since it's smaller and controlling a smaller size of lightning is easier. Try to just manipulate your lightning chakra to surround the blade, just like tree walking. So coat the blade in chakra then change the nature without forming the bolts of lightning. Yes. It will have a humming sound when it turns blue. Thanks. Sasuke got straight to work and was having having better results in her efforts. It wasn't exactly what she thought but it was a bit of a stretch to assume that it would work the exact same way as with fire. She continued training as Kakashi watched and gave advice here and there until Yugao and some blue-haired person appeared. Yugao. Aren't you guys supposed to be on a mission for a few more days? Kakashi was confused as they were present and Naruto wasn't. Sasuke picked up on the worry and got nervous. She didn't want something bad to have happened. They were just at some border villages, what could have happened? Naruto, is fine, we got a message from him this morning. Hinto said. Who are you? Sasuke asked. My bad, my name is Hinto, Naruto is a close friend. What happened? If you got a message and you're here but he's not. Sasuke's voice showed her desperation even though she tried hiding it. If they got a message, it at least meant that Naruto was alive. Something happened in our mission. He tried to warn the captain that something wasn't right, that we should reposition or fall back. The captain denied the request. We got ambushed, captain went down to poison and was unconscious. Naruto took command as he diagnosed the situation and made a plan within seconds. We fell back to a crater 50 miles from the border. We were to make a stand to buy Yugao time to get to the border with the captain. Then things got worse, 100 nin showed up and Naruto knew it was a setup, he ordered me and Zoro to retreat to aid Yugao. He stayed behind to buy us time. What? No. Tell me you're lying. Sasuke began to have tears in her eyes. He did it because it was the only chance right, with his Suzano and Mangekio, he would be granted 2.5 minutes of near invincibility, and with his skills added to that, he was the only one capable to buy enough time. Kakashi added in as he analyzed the situation based on what he heard. He wasn't told of all the factors but this was enough. He did it with zero hesitation and came up with a plan every step of the way. The moment Captain went down, he knew the odds of a 100 to 1 fight and didn't hesitate anyways. Because of him we made it back with intel that we needed. Now that we got a message from him saying he survived, he said he would proceed on the mission. Yugao finished what Hinto was saying. Then go back, assist him. You can't just leave him alone. Sasuke was crying and furious that he was alone now and apparently he lied about the mission. We can't. When we left for the mission we knew there would be no backup. Dot the moment he sent us back here, it effectively ended the mission for us. He knew this. Yugao said sadly. She didn't like having left Naruto nor, the fact he'd remain alone. Sasuke got pissed and tried to attack but was caught by Kakashi. She glared at him before turning back to Yugao. Where were you guys then? For real, obviously wasn't some border village. Sorry. Can't tell you. Hinto said for Yugao who understood how Sasuke felt. Naruto talked about her to him when they drank together. He knew the bond the two shared, and he too really was close to Naruto. Sasuke was getting angrier by the second and was being saddened at the same time. The one who was always at her side, watched over her, and the one she now knew she truly loved was all alone and in danger. Already dodging death. How many more times will he have to, before he comes back? To everyone's surprise, her one Tomo Sharingan awakened. She glared at them with the blood red eyes, and threatened them that if he didn't return, she'd kill them. She stormed off and didn't realize she had the Sharingan and went to Naruto's room. Kakashi looked to Yugao after Sasuke left. You said there was 100 nin. Yes, he apparently killed them all and managed to get to safety before passing out for two days from exhaustion. He won't be back for eight days to make up for the lost time. Yugao said as she couldn't entirely believe it. If he could do that, at 11, what will be capable of with experience and in 10 years? Kakashi said shocked as this was something never done before. Number 11 year old kid can cause such a feat in a head on battle. Even Itachi had surprise on his side. The clan didn't see him coming and most were sleeping. The others nodded, Naruto was a powerhouse and his potential was limitless it felt like. Add a few jutsu and he would become a cage-level opponent when he gained the experience. You should teach him the shadow clones. 
he has the crow and earth clone, he has the chakra, with the shadow clones his growth will increase exponentially. Yugao said to Kakashi who nodded. Perhaps he'd teach him that so he can master the Chidori faster. Then the Reikiri afterwards. Sasuke, was looking at the photos on Naruto's dresser and saw one of the two of them together and she smiled a sad smile. She didn't want anything to happen to him. You better come back. She held the photo close as she curled up in his bed. Earth Country. Naruto was trailing a patrol to see their pattern and rotation. If you had the root of their patrol, you had the root of all the others. They all did more or less the same thing. The borders were mainly for knowing who came to the country and they'd send word to the village. This wasn't like the patrols that surrounded the shinobi village or neighboring villages that were more sporadic so that you couldn't exactly easily infiltrate. Given enough time however, you could always find a weakness. Just like jutsu, there is no true perfection and there is a flaw, no matter how small, there's a flaw to be exploited. He practiced these types of situations a lot since Anbu were all spies. His vision was a major problem but it was still enough. The Sharingan was still giving photographic memory of where he was and he could put it to the map later. The vision was something he needed to find an answer to and fast. After the battle, his vision deteriorated so bad that he could no longer deny that using the eyes was damaging his vision. No longer could he be ignorant. The question was if there was even a way to solve it to begin with. Shisui wasn't around to provide guidance, nor was Itachi, Kakashi never used his as far as he knew, so he didn't even know if Kakashi would know of the deterioration. Also, who had the ability to leak their mission? As far as he knew, only his squad, Hiruzen, and Commander Wolf knew the full scope of the mission. None of his squad could be the traitor, and the other two were guaranteed to not be. No spy should have been able to get the intel. If the Uchiha were still around, then there could be chance at a Sharingan Genjutsu. But there were none. Itachi saw to that, leaving only him and Sasuke. Why? He would never guess. This would have to wait as he had a mission to complete. Currently the patrol was slowly making its way back to Iwagakur. A decision would need to be made. Would he pursue to the village? Or peel back and scout more land? Nine days later, Naruto arrived back into the village. He checked in at the gate and went straight to the Hokage's office. He had sent a crow earlier notifying that he'd arrive shortly. It was nice to be back. Although his vision was now at 40% and saw double constantly, he was glad to be back. It was a rough mission and he just wanted to rest and share a drink with Hinto. Sasuke was a top priority but by now he figured that she knew and probably would be angry with him, potentially rightfully so but then again the choices he made were forced. He couldn't tell her the exact scope of the mission, and then she had sternly shouted to never be a sacrifice, well he did that but managed to come out on top, this time. The mission was forced to be extended as he was unconscious for two days. Just about in every way that it could go wrong, it did. He was heading there when he noticed Sasuke and Kakashi in the distance. Wanting to avoid her at the moment he shunshined before she could see him. Kakashi noticed and smiled as Naruto was back and safe. He understood that he wasn't prepared to see Sasuke and as such kept it to himself. He knew that no doubt they'd talk that night. Whether Naruto was ready or not. Naruto stepped into the office and kneeled before Hiruzen with his head bowed. Commander Wolf was already present and they remained quiet. Naruto awaited for either them to say something, or he was requested to speak. Fox, what can you report? Wolf asked as he seemed to be the one ready between Hiruzen and he. I have the route and timing on their border patrol. It's marked on this map. I also have their patrols and strongholds marked in red as you approach Iwagakur. I managed to get a basic idea of their village's security however they caught onto me and I was forced to retreat to a hideout before they found me. Very well, Fox. You've done well. Thank you, Commander. Naruto-kun, are you okay? Naruto hesitated for a brief second, but it was caught by the trained eyes of the Hokage and Anbu Commander. Hi. The two looked to each other and had ideas. One major one would be his vision. They knew the delay strategy relied heavily on Naruto's Mangekio and putting that strain must have affected his sight. How much? They didn't know yet. Another was of how he felt personally. Killing so many people and being so close to death isn't something that one just instantly walks away from like nothing. These types of things took time. Hell, even just killing one shinobi led to some being so shuck enough that they never did return from it. Their shinobi careers effectively ended after the first kill. And Naruto killed 100, well really it was slightly less but for the most part that's what he faced. 
Naruto-kun. Were you faced against any other adversaries? Not really. I took out a few patrols using primarily lightning-enhanced attacks to potentially cause a rift between them and Kumogakur, as they are likely to form a potential alliance given their hatred of Konoha. So the rookie becomes one of espionage A. Eh? Nice work, Fox. Your resourcefulness and lack of hesitation when forced with tough circumstances makes you captain material, however you will not be promoted yet. I want you to gain experience, as such, you'll be taking on missions more frequently and be trained in the role of captain. Understood. Wolf looked at Naruto but already knew the answer. This was a goal of Naruto's ever since being recruited. On top of that, he already had the skills and qualities, just needed more experience. In a way, experience outranks everything. In some cases it isn't so, but for the most part, whoever has the most experience will generally come out on top. That isn't just in combat, but life. As you go on through life, you face new challenges, meet new situations and form relationships. Sometimes things fail or are lost, but in every obstacle, relationship, and day, you learn. As you learn that helps you build to what you wish. Through those experiences you can make the best decisions on what to do. If you lack it, you tend to go back and forth and hesitate. In life that's fine, in combat, that could mean death. Not just for you but of your squad as well. Naruto demonstrated his leadership ability, now he just needed more time in the field so that he had a feel for how things worked. How he could use it to better his squad and ensure that everyone can come home. Hi, Commander. I won't let you down. Wolf nodded to Naruto and Hiruzen didn't know what to say. He just looked at Naruto not knowing where their relationship stood. Nah. It's okay Gigi. I am still hurt, but that doesn't change all that you've done for me. Thank you, Naruto-kun. May I go? I'd like to see my squad. Yes, you're dismissed. Naruto shunshined leaving a smiling Hiruzen and pleased commander. Naruto was really becoming something else. Anbu squad RO lockers. Naruto stood outside the door, then opened to go inside. He was without his armor as he had burned it during the mission. Everyone had stopped what they were doing when the door opened. When Naruto stood there, mask stained with blood, and clothing that had seen better days, they didn't know what to say. Glad you guys made it. Naruto finally spoke, they broke out of their stupor and walked to him. Naruto, I should have. It's okay captain. You did what you thought was right. Yo Naruto. How are you? Better now, Hinto. Me and you gotta hit a bar though. Done. However I still don't get how you can out drink practically everybody. Yeah, maybe one day we'll know. Naruto, you fool. Don't make decisions like that again. Yugao hugged Naruto and although she knew he made the right choice, it wasn't something she could accept. I'm sorry, but it was the only option to protect everyone and make sure we got back with intel. Always the mission, eh Naruto? Always. So Zoro. Spar later. You bet. Naruto, take a few days to rest up. Hi, Captain. Naruto walked throughout the village and took it all in, as much as his vision allowed. Everything really did seem so peaceful. As if there wasn't a war looming. He knew now just how much the villagers didn't know about the state of the shinobi villages. How do they act when the shinobi are in war? Did they always seem this peaceful? Is this how every other village was? If so, then how come war even was a thing? Couldn't everyone just try to live happily in the peace-filled village? If it was all an illusion of, ignorance is bliss, then it seemed nice. To not worry of war, or having to risk losing those you love. Seeing this makes you wonder why someone would invade another's peace. If both sides lived happily within their villages, what was the point to starting conflict? So many questions, yet so little answers. Maybe one day, he could have an answer to them all. Then again, as long as Sasuke was safe, he could in a way care less. Selfish. Maybe, but she's all that matters to him. Without her, he has no hope. Thinking that, he realized that he would go to war with anyone and everyone who dare threatened her safety. Perhaps that's what led to war. QB. You've been around for a long time right? Yes. Has peace ever really lasted? It's always been temporary. Greed and vengeance tends to lead to another war. No side truly wins. Everybody loses those they love, do they see that? I'm not sure, you humans are stupid. Perhaps. Perhaps what? Hem. Naruto turned around when he heard a feminine voice behind him but saw no one. What the? He looked around and there was no one in his immediate vicinity so who said that? Maybe I'm going crazy, well time to stop delaying. Time to go home. 
After 20 minutes he arrived to the house. It was evening and there were no lights on. That was strange but he didn't think much of it. He went inside and there seemed to be no one there. It seemed empty. There was no place she'd be at this time, maybe she was with her friends. She hadn't really been with them ever since he and her graduated early. It would make sense. She had been cooped up in the house and training all this time, it would be good for her to wind down a bit. He walked throughout the house and it became apparent that no one used any of the main areas for a few days. Dot the kitchen had no sign of having had meals or use, the living room was flawless as no cushion or object seemed out of place. The dojo had every weapon and whatnot perfectly placed away. The grounds were all untouched for a few days as well. What had gone on? Maybe she just moved her training to ground 7 permanently since that's where Kakashi had for the team. Since she was currently the only member, she'd have free reign unless Kakashi wanted something specific. Still, she did normally train here as well, so that was odd. He went to her room and gently knocked, there was no answer. He thought maybe she was sleeping and just wanted to know she was okay. He slowly opened the door and saw that her bed was made and she wasn't there. Now he was worried, there were no signs that someone had been throughout the house for a few days and she wasn't there. Where the hell could she be? He hoped she was with her friends and decided to just shower and go to bed. He'd see her in the morning. Naruto went to his room and opened the door a little forcefully. He was upset as he had wanted to see her but was just hoping she was okay. He stepped in but his room was really dark and normally he'd be fine seeing however with his vision deteriorated, he couldn't. He shut the door and sat on his bed to think. He felt someone in the bed and jumped with a kanai out. The said person also had jolted up but relaxed far faster than he. Naru-kun. Sasuke said which made Naruto relax finally. Sasuke-chan. Naruto went to her and enveloped her in a tight hug. He was happy because during the mission, he could have potentially never saw her again. I thought you were gone, it seemed like no one had been here for a few days. I haven't left this room since. Since when? Since Yugao and Hinto came by. So you know. Naruto couldn't meet her eyes, she probably was angered at him and he felt bad. He didn't want to worry her and never wanted to hurt her. She nodded to his remark and then punched him in the gut before hugging him again. You're a moron. I had no choice. I know, you're a moron for thinking I was angry and would despise you for your actions. How did you? We've been together a long time Naru, and living together a few years now. You think I don't know how you feel or what you think. Well I mean, it's not like you can read minds. No but I can tell what you feel, you don't really express yourself so I've always been forced to figure it out. I'm relieved that you're okay, I was worried beyond belief but I'm happy you've come home. Me too. Naruto kissed her forehead and then hugged her. Let me rest a few hours, then we will go spar. She nodded and allowed him to get some sleep which was only about two hours. He changed his clothes into a new set of Anbu attire, just without the armor. Oddly enough, she had adamantly requested that they go to training ground 7. Naruto was puzzled on why she'd want to go there so bad but just shrugged and agreed. In the end, he just wanted to see how far she's come along since their last spar. It had been a while. While he was doing his Anbu duties and training, he knew she would have been improving and learning new skills. He also didn't know that she awakened her Sharingan, then again she also hadn't realized it. Especially since she hadn't left his room after the news. When they got to the training ground, he realized why she wanted to go here. In the clearing stood a crowd. All her friends had gathered. Kakashi, Yugao, Hiruzen also had shown up. Since Kakashi came, a green spandex-wearing dude was here and was preaching of youth. There were a few other people he hadn't met but they seemed very much interested. What is the meaning of this? Well, we hadn't sparred in a while, hadn't seen my friends in a while. Word spread and well here we are. Sasuke was smiling as her friends waved and the face Naruto was making made her laugh. He didn't like the attention much and he may have secluded himself due to the hate but she also knew that he just wasn't a very sociable person. He wasn't shy, but he wasn't a big people person. Naruto gave in and just nodded before placing an arm around her neck and pulled her closer. Go all out. If the others start saying anything, don't worry. Just go all out and do your best. Okay. Use your Sharingan. Are you sure? Yes. All right then. Kakashi stood between the two and smiled. He raised an arm and looked to both who nodded. Once his arm lowered he jumped back as fast as possible since Sasuke had quickly charged Naruto. 
Naruto looked at her and was glad to have the Sharingan. His blurred vision got slightly better with it activated and but he still had issues. She went for a punch to his face which he sidestepped and used her momentum to throw her. She flipped to land on her feet and tried to kick him. He ducked and lunged to try to take her down. She jumped over him, landing a kick to his back, which made him hit the ground hard. He bounced back up and prepared for another onslaught. She had landed the first blow and he wanted to smile and congratulate her but this was far from over. He didn't notice but his Anbu squad showed up amongst the spectators. Even Commander Wolf made an appearance. They wanted to see how Naruto would do after everything that happened. Hiruzen's and Wolf's motives were based on how Naruto's vision was. Hiruzen so far deduced that Naruto wasn't reacting to things as he usually would, there was slight hesitation that he could notice that no one else had, he figured that Naruto was seeing skewed images and as such took slightly longer to figure out the attack. Naruto looked at Sasuke and could see that she was pleased with landing the first blow and her confidence was rising. He was still being defensive since he wanted to figure her out first. She seemed to gladly be on the offensive as she again charged doing a spinning heel kick. Naruto brought in his right arm up to block, then wrapped his arm around her leg, he slammed her to the ground and went to stomp on her stomach when she rolled away. What? No offense today, Naru. She taunted but was mostly confused. Thus far, he had been reactive, normally Naruto would have been doing something to overwhelm her by now. HN. Let's take it up a notch, shall we? Naruto grabbed three shuriken, and threw them at her, she blocked and charged with her kunai. Naruto waited and as she got ready to attack, he smirked. He knew she wouldn't expect what he was about to do. He acted as if he were trying to block but had been too slow, she stabbed him in the chest. For a second everything stopped. The audience gasped and she froze. Then Naruto smiled and she got even more confused. Next thing she and everyone knew, he dispersed into crows. Crowd. D did she just stab him? Sakura said as she watched. No way. Ino turned away and couldn't believe it. Hiruzen smirked as well as Wolf but they both were wondering why he had used the method. It was like he didn't want to be fighting for some reason. Naruto vs Sasuke. And Naru. Her eyes widened when her blade went straight through him. Seeing him smile had her confused then it happened. He dispersed into crows and they reformed 10 feet away from her. Everyone that hadn't figured it out sighed in relief. Sasuke had forgotten that he utilized crow clones since he hadn't used them in a while. How long? What do you mean? How long was I fighting your clone? Sasuke sounded annoyed and frustrated that potentially for a long time, the fight wasn't even with him. The moment you kicked me to the ground, I switched with my crow clone. Naruto spoke from behind her as she turned around. He seemed to just fade into existence. Genjutsu, should have known. There are many ways to initiate Genjutsu. You made it easy when you kicked me. Now, let's kick it up some more. Shall we? Naruto took a stance and this time he attacked. He shunshined in front of her, kicking her stomach which sent her flying. He proceeded to shunshin behind her kicking again. This time she recovered and landed only to have Naruto appear in front of her doing a spinning backhand. She barely blocked his left, he followed by trying to elbow her jaw with his right when she jumped back to avoid it. She grabbed five shuriken and threw them doing hand signs. Shuriken shadow clone jutsu, she muttered and the five became twenty. Interesting. Naruto saw fifteen and moved into what seemed to be the safe zone. The other five ended up slicing his arms and puncture to his left leg. He groaned as they made contact with him and he reached down, removing the shuriken from his leg. How do you not see that? It was clear as day, he should have had no issue seeing those five. Naruto gave a weak smile and shrugged. A, must have been overconfident. Naruto lied. Crowd. Good hit. Ino cheered. Hmm, that shouldn't have happened. Kakashi saw and was concerned when he noticed that Naruto actually never saw those shuriken. Naruto vs Sasuke. She charged at him with her sword and he responded by taking a kunai out and using an ice pick grip. She charged lightning chakra into the blade and slashed downward. Naruto went to block it but his eyes widened when the kunai shattered and she cut his forearm. I couldn't see the chakra. Dot has it really gotten that bad. Naruto dropped the broken kunai as blood dripped from his arm. He winced slightly as he realized it was lightning chakra and his hand went numb. Hiruzen and Wolf both knew now that Naruto really needed the transplant soon as he had missed the fact that she was putting chakra into the sword. Kakashi was proud of Sasuke being able to utilize her lightning in the blade. 
She couldn't maintain it long but it was long enough. Naruto charged Chakra and shot a fireball at her. She countered with her own, only to notice that Naruto appeared next to her, kicking her. His excitement for battle was increasing and he got more and more aggressive. Normally the calm and tactical fighter was becoming more and more aggressive and uncalculated. He started to get a red aura around him. When he realized what was going on, he shook his head and the aura faded. He went back to being calm and no longer aggressive. She was confused on the sudden changes. It was like he was bipolar. The crowd also watched in confusion when he switched up. Phoenix Sage Flower Jutsu, Sasuke muttered and threw 10 shuriken which she had fireballs in case. The fireball, shuriken combination went straight to Naruto who blocked most but missed two. One grazed his stomach and the other impacted his shoulder. Quickly he removed the shuriken and extinguished the fire. Now Hiruzen, Kakashi, and Wolf all together looked at each other. That last attack made it clear that Naruto's vision really has deteriorated and there was no hiding it. He should have been able to stop that. Sasuke looked at him in confusion and worry. Never has he seemed to defenseless as it seemed that something always got through. She knew she got better but this was different. There was a different factor at play. Naruto sheathed his tanto and smirked. Saying a technique that she could never beat. No matter how much she focused or tried, she couldn't ever come out on top. Teleportation Jutsu. Crowd. Teleportation Jutsu. What's he playing at? I don't know Sakura. Just watch. Ino said annoyed. So he's finally going to end it. Kakashi said to no one but Guy looked at him confused. What do you mean? He's been getting beaten for the most part. Come on Guy, for someone so versed in taijutsu, you can't tell that he's sort of held back. Or been handicapped in some way. Guy focused more and thought about it. There were instances where Naruto slipped up but he figured the kid just may have made mistakes or something. But then again it was repeatedly, exploited. Is it his vision? But isn't the Sharingan supposed to let you predict attacks? Yes. Something's wrong. Kakashi was serious and he knew what was causing it as he too had the Mangekio. He just never uses it. It takes too much chakra out of him and it would cost him a lot in a fight. Hmm, I wonder how far he's progressed the technique. Hiruzen pondered out loud. You have no idea. Question is, how far he'll take it? Wolf said to Hiruzen's curiosity. Naruto versus Sasuke. Damn, here we go, if I can manage to last three minutes, his technique will die down as it is physically demanding. Sasuke said to herself as she prepared. Naruto began running in a circle around her for dramatic effect, mainly to be amused by the reactions of the spectators. At first they were unpleased until he started to multiply. Soon enough there were 12 Naruto's running around her. They each stopped and held out their tanto. Swiping their left hand on the back side of the blade which made the whole blade catch on fire. Uchiha style, dance of the sun halo, Naruto muttered and each clone made a slash which caused an arc of fire to be sent to Sasuke. She didn't panic but she wasn't too happy. This was going to suck. She focused as hard as she could, as she dodged she tried to find the real Naruto. Attacking a clone would be pointless as she would just phase through, however the clone can damage her. A pretty messed up predicament because at least elemental clones will be destroyed after taking damage. Naruto told her ways to counter him but it would be much easier with the Sharingan. Without it, damn near anyone would be destroyed by the technique. His biggest issue with it, is the toll on his body as he can get tired. It'll end battles fast but it has a cost. He's working on being able to extend it but at the moment he can only 3 minutes at top speed before slowing down. As he was doing his slashes, she looked and couldn't find him. Her instincts kicked in and she flared her chakra breaking a genjutsu in time to dodge kanai that were flung at her. This is getting dangerous. He's using more genjutsu on top of this. Dot how do I best this? She was trying as hard as possible but slowly started receiving damage from the fire. In pure desperation she had accidentally activated her sharingan. This caused Naruto to pause a second as he noticed. He couldn't help but smile. She noticed that things got clearer and seemed to slow a bit. When she saw Naruto pause and smile at her, she realized what happened. She'd finally activated her Sharingan. She didn't get to celebrate much as they were in the middle of a fight. She found him now and launched a fireball at him. To her surprise it went straight through. What the? It's called the, teleportation jutsu, for a reason. Naruto chopped the back of her neck making her collapse. Before she hit the ground he caught her and smiled at her unconscious form. 
he brushed her hair out of the way and sat down with her on resting on his lap like a pillow. He was tired from the advanced shunshan and noticed that ever since his vision got so bad, that his eyes got fatigued when using the sharingan as well. It aggravated him but there was nothing he could do about it, at least that's what he thought. The wounds healed but were sore. Everyone came to him and for the most part were in awe at the fight. Hiruzen, Kakashi, and Wolf all looked at him as they knew he had issues. He sighed as he requested to be alone. Naruto nodded to the three and they remained. So when were you going to tell us of your depleting vision? Kakashi asked first. You know of my eyes. Kakashi just lift his headband and let it morph to his mangekyo. Yeah, I know of our eyes. Naruto just looked down ashamed. He thought he was the only one and forgot that Kakashi had lived through hell. Having watched his best friend die, killing his other best friend and having to see everyone he ever loved die. Naruto-kun be honest right now. How's your sight? I have about 50% of my vision. So that's how you missed so many of the attacks and reacted so slow. You couldn't see a thing until it was too late. Naruto just nodded. I haven't found a way to fix my eyesight. I don't think there is a way. Ha 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 for once you're wrong Naruto-kun. Consider it Shisui's final gift to you. What? Just come by the office tomorrow afternoon. Hi. With that they left him alone with the unconscious Sasuke. She would be upset when she woke up but he knew she would forget about it when he started training her Sharingan with her. A smile spread on his face at that. She finally attained the eyes she longed for and now they were the same, well as close as he wanted her. He didn't want her to attain the eyes that are a symbol of loss and pain. The next thing was, what about Shisui's final gift? What could it be? He loved his brother figure of a cousin so much and he had always planned ahead. Perhaps Shisui knew this would happen and had the answer Naruto was searching for. Finally after sitting there for 10 minutes and recuperating he picked her up bridal style and began walking to their house. She began to wake up about halfway back and looked at him. I'm guessing you want to ask two things right? Yes. First, what's wrong with you? Most of my shuriken jutsu should never have touched you. Um, well you see, my vision is deteriorating due to use of a power. What kind of power does that to you? I've learned more now than before that there is a cost, a flaw to every jutsu or technique, nothing is perfect. Not even these eyes. Naruto looked down to meet her eyes when his eyes went the Sharingan. The Tomo started spinning and turned into the Mangekyo. Her eyes widened. She never knew there was another level to the Sharingan. She thought it was only the three levels, signified by the number of Tomo. Then she remembered that his vision was going away. Naru. Dot how bad is it? I can't make out your face. I haven't been able to see you smile at all. Naruto frowned at the end as her smile lit up his world. She placed her hand on his cheek and guided him down for a kiss. We'll find a way to make things better Naru-kun. Apparently Nisan has one final gift for me, as what Gigi said. He made it sound like that will fix my vision. I want you to come with me, just in case. Of course I'll be there for you, Naru. Even if it doesn't work, we will find a way. Her saying we made him feel better as it was reassurance that he wasn't alone. He wouldn't have to face his challenges alone anymore. He could depend on her just as much as she depends on him. You did great today. And for your second thing, I'll help you train your Sharingan as soon as you'd like. She nodded with excitement. She would now be able to compete more with Naruto and use the eyes that grant limitless potential to a user. The next morning Naruto woke up and felt Sasuke beside him. He really liked being able to wake up and having her there. It was only a few times but he wanted it to be permanent. However asking her felt difficult and as such he never did. Only having it happen either by accident or a rare situation. He rubbed her shoulder which made her start to wake up. She smiled at him, not that he could see it but she did nonetheless. After you help me train my Sharingan I want to do what we did before you left for boot camp. Hey, are you as sure? You promised. It's been a month. I'm losing my patience Naruto. Yes. Yes. As you wish. She said his full name and knew she was serious and not to mess with. So he agreed. Don't act like you don't want to either. Hey don't do this to me. She giggled as she kissed him and got on him. But before he could go for more, she shunshined to the doorway. That's just cruel. After training Naru-kun. After training. I'm fine. Naruto gave her hell during training. She swore it was because of the tease however he denied saying that it was the best way to progress the eyes. It was true, on both cases. 
he hurled Kanai and Shuriken at her in speeds that only the Sharingan could track. She was forced to move faster than ever, this also helped build her stamina, speed, reflexes, as well as the Sharingan, all in one. After a while he moved into showing her how to use the eyes to copy jutsu, movement and all the copying capabilities of the eye. For the most part, the eyes sort of in a sense were unique to the user. They're all the same and have the same potential but it's based on how it's used. Naruto's genjutsu prowess surpasses even the likes of Shisui, they were both strong in genjutsu, add the Sharingan and the sky's the limit. Sasuke didn't show much talent in genjutsu but with the Sharingan it made her good. The Sharingan Genjutsu capabilities make even the worst users of Genjutsu adequate. Being able to cast Genjutsu with nothing more than eye contact is what made the Uchiha feared aside from the perceptive capabilities. In a fight you're constantly making eye contact. As such an Uchiha could cast Genjutsu no problem. The NJN Jutsu capabilities to the Sharingan gave the user photographic memory and allowed them to copy the hand signs and since they could see chakra, they know how the chakra must be manipulated to form the copied Jutsu. More or less, with the eyes, your potential skyrocketed. If you were already a skilled shinobi, when adding the Sharingan you become near unstoppable. Now remember Sasuke-chan that this is a tool. If you rely too heavily on it, it will become your weakness. Dot the eyes drain chakra and although we Uchiha have a lot, it will take you time before you can have it active all day with no issue. I understand. Now what's next? Well, what would you like to focus on? What did you focus on? Well, despite my fighting ability, I don't particularly like it. I focused on Genjutsu as a means to end conflict without ever really fighting. That's why I am so effective over Genjutsu. Doesn't seem that way. You looked like you were enjoying yourself for a bit. I don't know what happened. I think I might have accidentally drawn on a power I am not yet able to control. Hmm. Well, let's see. Genjutsu isn't really my style but I don't know what what exactly will help me. Well Sasuke-chan, you're in luck because I've mastered it all. I will help you do the same. Okay. She nodded happily. As she engulfed him in a hug. They were interrupted however when a hawk flew down and landed beside them. It had a message on it and when Naruto opened it, he got a little nervous. What is it? They said it's time for me to go meet at the office. She grabbed his hand and smiled gently at him. Still he couldn't see the smile but he smiled back regardless. Reassuring him that she'd be at his side, he shunshined them to the office. Ah Naruto-kun, Sasuke. Good to see you. Hey Gigi. Sasuke smiled knowing that Naruto now didn't seem to be furious anymore at the Hokage. The hurt was still there no doubt but the anger wasn't. She and Hiruzen bot noticed the nervousness. Naruto, what do you know of the Mangekyo? Kakashi asked as Naruto looked at him. Well, I didn't know much as I realized that I awakened them the night you all came to tell me Nisan was dead, however I couldn't activate them. Not until the night that made Sasuke-chan stay with me, that night I reactivated them. He didn't tell them about the vow or they make him feel differently at times but did tell them that he's noticed the decreasing vision but at first thought it was fatigue from never using them. That was until the mission when it got drastically worse. Now they had their timeline and understood how it all went down. They were surprised by the ability he had with the Mangekyo, to be a stormbringer and controller of lightning was interesting to say the least. Sadly with the base Mangekyo you'd never truly master that technique. Base Mangekyo. What do you mean Ojasan? You'll need to read this. Hiruzen tossed a scroll to Naruto. On it had the Uchiha crest stamped on in Shisui's signature. He slowly opened it and began to read. Dear Naruto. If you're reading this, it means for one, I'm dead, that sucks. Hopefully it wasn't too soon. I have so many things I want to do with you. Is this how uncle felt that night? And well, the second is because you've awakened the Mangekyo, on top of that your vision is getting weaker and weaker. I hoped you never had to awaken these eyes but I guess you did. You know your birthday's coming up. Can't believe you're about to be six. I remember the day you were born, your father and was so excited. I want you to know you were loved Naruto. I hope by now you'll have learned their identities as Minato Uchiha, Yandaimi Hokage and Kashina Uzumaki, Jinchuriki before you. Oh. Dot in your Jinchuriki status, whoops. Sorry Naruto I'm getting off topic, I don't know why I'm writing this now, I just feel it is necessary for some reason. Look these eyes we possess, they grant us the power to never lose a loved one again. Dot but they have a limit. Overuse them and you never see again. Thankfully I have a way to solve your vision little brother. 
I give to you, my final gift. The eternal Mangekio Sharingan. If I die soon, my eyes will be given to Itachi. He is the only one I trust, he'd be holding onto them for you. For this specific moment, you will go through an eye transplant and new power will be bequeathed onto you. Your vision will be once again perfect, you will never go blind from use of the eyes. Well little brother, I have a mission to do tonight before your birthday, I have a bad feeling about everything. I am finishing this letter now but take care, find love to fill the emptiness I know you hold. That love will save you from darkness. I love you. Naruto looked up and cried. He couldn't believe it, Shisui really planned for everything. On top of that there was a clear timeline on the letter. At first it was only leading to the fateful night but was finally completed the night he died. He was going to keep it to himself at the moment. He read thought that Itachi would have the eyes, so what now? Naruto-kun are you okay? Naruto lifted his and a crow appeared, he gave the scroll to it and the crow dispersed into feathers. Yes, let's do this. Naruto didn't hesitate. In a way he seemed to be in a rush. After four hours Naruto woke up in a hospital bed with bandages over his eyes. He began unraveling it and when he opened his eyes he could see clear as day again. He saw Sasuke sitting beside him and Kakashi, Hiruzen and Wolf all in front of him. Naruto activated his eternal Mangekio and the triangles that were present were smaller, they all pointed to the four blades shuriken that Shisui had in his Mangekio. Naruto shunshined at Hiruzen and slammed him to the wall. What mission did you have him do that cost his life? Naruto screamed in a dark voice that unnerved everyone in the room. Hiruzen couldn't believe that he could not track Naruto. Normally they all could as they were highly skilled but Naruto's shunshin speed went ridiculous. The M's, visual prowess increased the amount of speed he can use as he can now see far better through the speed. What do you mean? Don't play games. You've all lied to me enough. He said he was leaving to mission that night. There was no suicide. Who did it? Naru, don't do this. This isn't you. Sasuke was the only one that wasn't frozen to Naruto's actions. He had directed all his intent and darkness at the other three leaving her to not feel it. Naruto turned to her and she saw nothing but pure hatred in his eyes. His pain, emptiness, anger, hatred all or what were mirrored through the eyes of his and she dropped to her knees. She couldn't believe how much he held within him. It was insurmountable and felt never-ending. He looked back to Hiruzen who now saw what she saw. He was deeply saddened and the commander and Kakashi both didn't know what was going to happen. They wanted to do something but Hiruzen told them before Naruto woke up that should anything happen, he would handle it. Now they wondered if he could. Naruto was no moron, he knew that even with his visual prowess, that alone wouldn't beat the old Hokage. You aren't named the god of shinobi if visual prowess alone could be your downfall. He just wanted answers. You all do nothing but lie, am I nothing to any of you? Naruto's voice made their hearts sink. Naruto was finally releasing all his emotions and sadly, they were nothing positive. You are to me. Sasuke stood back up and tried to walk to him. Quickly he turned to her and hesitated. His power fluctuated and for a moment they thought it would end, but he quickly looked away and his power rose again. Kakashi knew that if Naruto had a weakness, it truly was Sasuke. But right now there was nothing he could do. It was sort of up to her or for Naruto to calm himself. Wolf although was worried of the situation but found himself more curious than anything. He wanted to see what Naruto would do but at the same time he didn't want the kid to do something he'd regret. He knew all too well that one decision can be one that you regret for life. Making a small signal that no one else noticed, aside a certain bird. What did you do? Talk. Naruto was livid. The old man just stood quiet looking at him as he was only that little kid that admired him. Fine, if you won't do it of your own free will. Naruto don't. That genjutsu is something you use only on an enemy. Kakashi shouted knowing Naruto might use Shisui's ultimate genjutsu. He didn't know if it was possible since there was no information he found on the eternal Mangekio Sharingan but didn't want to find out. If Naruto had that ability to use it now then there was nothing they could do. They'd never know if he controlled them. That was something Shisui had to live with, although he never used it on a comrade, people were weary of him. The look Naruto gave him, made him realize that right now, Naruto saw Hiruzen as an enemy. That didn't sit well with Kakashi as at the moment, Naruto was going deeper and deeper into hatred. If he went through with what he planned then there may be no turning back. Last chance. Hiruzen just smiled weakly at the boy and accepted his fate.
there was a lot he regretted and the biggest was the handling of Naruto. Perhaps this way he could atone for it all. Hirazan, Kakashi and Sasuke didn't notice a crow at the window. It watched the entire thing. It flew to Hirazan's shoulder and Naruto looked at it. In an instant the eyes changed red and a Mangekio appeared in the shape of a three-sided shuriken. Naruto's eyes went wide as his whole world changed. Tsukuyomi. Everything was black and the skies red. He looked around and saw nothing. Suddenly Itachi appeared in front of him. Itachi, what have you done? Hello there, Naruto-kun. Been a while. How are you here? Itachi never even flinched. He remained calm and passive. He looked at the now 11-year-old that stood in front of him. A small smile graced his lips but wasn't noticeable to Naruto. There's a lot you don't know. Enough of the games. Talk. Why do you kill your clan? Do you know the pain you caused Sasuke-chan? Naruto went to normal as he spoke and Itachi got relieved but didn't show it. Naruto-kun there are things you can't know. I am happy that you care so deeply for my sister. I'm glad to know that you have been her light. But Naruto-kun you are being slowly swallowed into darkness. Shut up. I don't understand. You're a traitor, killed your family and friends. Dot how can you be this way? They made you out as insane. Said you killed Nisan. I knew it wasn't true. Dot the letter from him proves it as such. What do you know? He started writing it some time before my sixth birthday. Mentioned he had a feeling that stuff was going to turn out with him dying. In his last few bits he mentioned that it was the night he died, that he was to head to a mission soon. Well you know a lot more than you're meant to. Guess we didn't plan on you awakening the eyes so soon. He always was optimistic of others. Itachi, please, tell me what they won't. Naruto-kun I would. But Shisui told me not to. All I can say is that he did commit suicide but that was because he was already dying. He gave me his eyes and made me make a promise. After that, he took his life for me to awaken my Mangekio, entrusting me with his final wishes. What was the promise? The wish. That is between he and I Naruto-kun. I love you guys as my brothers and I'm sorry that you've been stuck with a seemingly endless pit of emptiness. Even in your happiness I could see that it was present. Take it easy on Sandame-sama, okay? H-O-W. I don't have the answer Naruto-kun. All I can say is that despite it all, he really loves you as if you were his grandchild. Itachi, where are you? I cannot tell you. But you also cannot tell anyone of our conversation. When you go back, it'll only have been three seconds. I needed to calm you before something happened. Sasuke almost did it but she hesitated and as such didn't work. I had to step in. Naruto looked ashamed at himself. He really had no control over his emotions. He thought he did but apparently not. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt her or anyone. I just am in a lot of pain. You want answers but you'll never get the full story. What I've told you is as much as you'll ever be told. Naruto-kun I have a request. What is it? Take care of my sister. Naruto had tears drop from his eyes as he went and hugged Itachi. I will. Back in the hospital. The crew dispersed into feathers and Naruto punched the wall beside Hirazan's head. He panted heavily before looking back at Hirazan. He backed away and sat on his bed. They all don't know what happened. Naruto was just on the verge of forcefully gaining what he wanted to know. There were no signs of him ever casting what he was planning to do. Hirazan even looked a little puzzled and they realized it must have had to be due to the crow. Naruto seemed calmer although the anger was still visible. Go away. Naruto, Kakashi didn't get a chance to continue. Go away. Everyone flinched and complied. Sasuke however remained. Naru. Naruto remained silent. He didn't look at her and just sat there. She didn't know what to do but she knew something happened. Figured it was best to leave it be as there was no point on lingering with it. Naru, want to go home. She grabbed onto his hand and still he didn't respond. She decided to just shunshun the two of them to the house and he just instantly went to his room. Whatever stopped him must have made him really feel strongly in some way as she watched him leave silently. Naruto never was that way but then again, this involved the only family he had. She was determined to be there for him just he always was for her though. She went into his room and laid beside him in bed and just hugged him until she fell asleep. Naruto just laid looking off into space. His life was always a secret and never getting to have a truth it felt like. Everything was a lie after a lie. The only truth he felt was the desire he held for Sasuke. He realized now that the feelings he had were of love. That was the one truth of his life it seemed. His love to her is all he could depend on. 
he looked to her sleeping and finally returned the hug she still had been holding him in. This isn't home. Dot you are. Naruto closed his eyes and finally fell asleep. That ends the part 2 of the story. Like, share and subscribe. Facts about Naruto. Naruto is the fourth highest selling manga series of all time, beaten only by